You were originally the hero destined to save the world. However, you voluntarily surrendered to the goblin monsters. Not only did you become a traitor to your own kind, killing your own people, but you also actively helped the goblins capture the saint, in exchange for wealth and glory. Even in the end, the elven princess couldn't escape from your clutches. And the reason you did all this was actually to save the world. It's all because you obtained a simulation system. All the actions mentioned at the beginning were actually simulated by this system. When simulating, you can not only make various choices but also see different outcomes in the future. Even after the simulation is completed, you will receive points based on the system's evaluation. These points can be used to enhance skills and unlock abilities, thereby strengthening yourself in reality. At this moment, you were surrounded by a group of goblins as soon as you arrived in the parallel world. So, without hesitation, you initiated the first simulation. You looked at the options, a total of three. Option 1, to rise up and resist. Option 2, to feign submission and secretly work for the goblins. Option 3, to escape by sneaking away. Since it was a simulation, you decided to play some tricks and chose the second option without hesitation. You voluntarily surrendered to the goblins, becoming a complete human spy. You were quickly brought before the goblin leader, who was surprised by your fluency in the goblin language and became interested in you. He then brought a villager in front of you, demanding that you execute the person on the spot to prove your loyalty. You didn't hesitate and went straight for the kill. The goblin leader Null is very pleased with you and has assigned you a task. Find the priestess hiding in the village, after receiving the task. You began to interrogate the village chief without hesitation. Unable to withstand the pressure, the village chief reveals the hiding place of the priestess. When Null moves away from the dried well, he sees you, dressed in a priest's robe. At the same time, you also notice a barrel of explosives next to Null, and at this point, the system presents three options. 1. Detonate the explosive barrel. 2. Brave the odds and jump in to ambush Null, capture the priestess. 3. Make her run for it. Since you've chosen to embrace the dark path, you naturally decide to go all in, so you choose option 2. The priestess can only feel despair. In the evening, the goblins held a grand bonfire party, and the goblin leader Null sees you as very valuable. So he rewards you with three young and beautiful human girls, but to be on the safe side, he locks all of you inside a tent and warns that anyone who goes outside will die. The revelry continues into the late night, the goblins are sprawled out drunk all around, even the leader Null is sound asleep in the tent. At this point, another set of options appear, 1. Continue to bide your time, 2. Play and have fun with the three girls, which will make the goblins completely relax their guard. 3. Escape alone at night. With a cautious attitude towards safety, you decisively chose the second one, reaching out to three girls with your evil intentions. Seeing how terrified they were, one of them took the opportunity while you were busy, kicked and broke your leg, snatched your sword, and turned the tables on you. Simulation complete. The evaluation this time is that you fell into darkness for the sake of survival, truly a complete scoundrel. Comprehensive score, 18. Obtained simulation experience, 18. After this round, you allocated all the points to basic swordsmanship, raising this skill to level 2. Additionally, the system rewarded you with a basic healing spell. Back in reality once again, your own strength has also improved, relying on the advantage of your level. Successfully defeated the goblin squad surrounding you. This time, you didn't rush into simulation. It might be better to find the priestess first. With your improved strength, you went straight to the dried up well. As you moved the boulder, the priestess girl saw you, and a look of horror flashed across her eyes. A magical light shimmered on the staff. Seeing this, you didn't waste any time and initiated the simulation. Option 1, violently interrogate. Option 2, grab the girl and hand her over to the goblins. Option 3, use healing magic to gain her trust. After some thought, you chose option 3. The same holy light made the girl relax her guard. Seeing this, you tried to chat with her and learn from her. The girl's name is Barbara. Originally, she was a priestess in a remote town, but not long ago, she was chosen by the goddess to become one of her successors as a saint. She was originally secretly sent to the holy city. But then, they were ambushed by a goblin army on the way, all the guards were killed, and she hid in the village. After saying this, Barbara's eyes looked a bit desolate, but then she expressed her desire to take the initiative to end this disaster and asked you to report the situation to the nearest church. After speaking, the system popped up again. Choose and accept Barbara's request, but persuade her to surrender to the goblins. You might also be saved because of this. 2. Let Barbara continue to hide. 3. Persuade Barbara to escape with you. Perhaps you will receive a handsome reward for this. Since she is a witch, of course, she will try to leave the village. So, you chose 3. 
and then both of you came to the edge of the village, where there weren't many goblins outside. With your proficiency in goblin language, you successfully led the goblin reinforcements into the cave and had Barbara act as bait to lure them, seeing the opportunity to attack. The goblins immediately became excited, greatly reducing their alertness, giving you the chance to attack and easily take care of them, causing a breach in the goblins' defense line. You and Barbara successfully escaped, and now you are faced with three choices. One separate from her, end this simulation. Two escort her to the sanctuary, three ambush her, and take her belongings. If it were you during the simulation, you have three seconds to choose. 321 I know you've all chosen three teams. Since you want to pursue excitement, you have to see it through. You've ambushed Barbara. She never dreamed that as a chosen disciple of the holy light, you would do this. After you subdued the girl, you took away her magic wand and a ring. That ring represents her childhood sweetheart and the commitment of a lifetime. Barbara begs you to return the ring to her. She can overlook everything you've done to her. At this point, three options pop up again. 1. You suggest bringing joy to others, making this saint no longer pure. Lose the qualification to become a candidate for sainthood. This way, you can be with your childhood sweetheart. 2. Maintain your bottom line and return the ring to her. 3. Kill Barbara, eradicate the roots. Alright, alright, new options have come up. Pause for another 3 seconds. Which one would you choose? 321 alright, I know you all will choose. Let's see the impact. After all, witches don't affect reality. I'm a hero, it's normal to bring joy to others, right? So, with a smirk, you pounce on the girl. As for the next plot, I know you don't like to watch. I've watched it for you. In short, amazing. Those who want to see can go read the original text themselves. Afterward, the girl, unable to bear the humiliation, cuts off your limb while you're fast asleep. She then commits suicide. After waking up from severe injuries, you use healing magic to stop the bleeding, but you can't regrow your limb. Overwhelmed with grief, you become lost in the wilderness. The bloody smell on your body attracted a group of monsters, and you died on the spot. The simulation ends. At this moment, you are still immersed in the comfort and sorrow from earlier. The system's critical evaluation brings you back to reality. You underestimated Barbara's determination. As a scum, your death is well deserved. Overall score, 30 points. Gain 30 points of simulation experience and 30 points of simulation credits. Although you died in the simulation this time, you have gained a lot of points. Look at the three rewards on the system. Please select the rewards to be exchanged into the real world, a basic swordsmanship level increase of 13. 2 and a primary healing spell LV15. 3. Project Staff. You exchanged all 10 points into reality at once. The next second, as you moved with your mind, that project staff appeared in your hand. You couldn't help but marvel at the ability to bring items back to reality. Without hesitation, you used healing magic on the girl and at the same time shouted to Barbara, Come with me, this is the will of the goddess. The girl was initially surprised. But seeing your overwhelming advantage and knowing her name, she decided without hesitation to go with you, benefiting from the simulation just now. You successfully ambushed the goblins in the cabin in the woods, rescued and managed to escape from the goblin encirclement. But as someone who crossed over, you can't just resign to fate and have to ask Barbara next to you for the situation. Barbara is a priest from a town near Seven Star Village, so she is naturally familiar with the surrounding routes. She tells you that if you take the main road, you will quickly arrive at the town of Rockstead. But there might be goblin pursuers on the road. It would be relatively safer to take a detour, but it will take two days to get there. I see. So, does Pancher Town have the strength to resist the goblin army's attack? Barbara nodded confidently, no problem. Pancher Town is near the Geola Forest and has quite a good military strength. After listening to the girl's account, you also don't want to, but you don't want to take a detour for two days. He started the simulator again. System, start simulation. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial abilities. Looking at the options provided by the system, Chu Chen's eyes lit up. 1. Basic Archery LV1, 5 points, 2. Cross slash LV1, 5 points, 3. Detect Evil LV1, 5 points. The initial options in the previous three simulations were somewhat similar, but this time the three options were different, which meant that Chu Chen would have more choices in the future. Although Archery in the options allows for long range attacks, Chu Chen currently does not have a bow and arrow and cannot use it temporarily so he exchanged for the other two options. Exchange successful, points minus 10, congratulations, you have acquired cross slash LV1 and detect evil LV1, simulation begins, you and Barbara escape from Cheetah Village, but the goblins are prepared this time and have likely blocked other roads, there may be goblins blocking the way to the north, and the east route is long and dangerous. 
You decide. 1. Separate from Barbara and secretly follow Anlin to the north. 2. Separate from Barbara and head east. 3. Stay with Barbara and head north together. Barbara plans to secretly head north, and Xu Chen also doesn't want to spend too much time on unknown roads. After all, he has been killed by a magic wolf before. Choose 3. You decide to continue traveling with Barbara. After reaching the vicinity of the official road, you and Barbara take turns using the Detect Evil Divine spell and quickly discover a group of goblins hiding in the bushes, there are about 10 of them. You and Barbara decide to take a detour, while taking the detour, Barbara accidentally steps on a goblin's trap, and her cleanliness obsession causes her to scream, attracting the attention of nearby goblins, you attempt to deceive the goblins in their language, but three goblins come to investigate. You decide. 1. Kill them and quickly escape the scene. 2. Hide and pretend nothing happened. 3. Let Barbara attract their attention and take the opportunity to escape. There are only three goblins, and it shouldn't be difficult to deal with them after killing them. You want to level up, so you cooperate with Barbara to kill the three goblins together. The screams of the dying goblin attract the attention of the other seven goblins. You ambush them in the bushes and launch a surprise attack, you get hit three times, and Barbara gets stabbed in the abdomen, but luckily both of you know healing spells, so you treat each other and there are no major injuries, you obtain a rusty short sword and 18 copper coins, you and Barbara continue forward, and soon you encounter another goblin squad, this time consisting of 20 people, you choose to take a detour and successfully avoid them. The rest of the journey is smooth, and before the sun rises, you arrive at the entrance of Pancher Town. Seeing this, Chuchin couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. After all, goblins are just goblins, and their defense on other routes is not tight, as Barbara's priest robe and church medal indicate her identity. The guards do not give her a hard time but stop you, wanting to take you to the interrogation room to verify your identity. Your identity is very suspicious, and you have no way to explain. You decide. 1. Ask Barbara to vouch for you and let the guard let you into the town. 2. Obey the guard's arrangement, truthfully confess your origins, and recount the story of helping Barbara escape from the monster siege. 3. Bribe the guard with copper coins, these pests won't really be that responsible, although Barbara can vouch for herself, the guards may not believe her. After thinking for a moment, Xu Chun chose the third option. You quietly handed 10 copper coins to the guard, who looked around nervously. Luckily, no one else noticed the situation here. You and Barbara entered the town of Pancher together, and now you are temporarily safe. You choose. 1. Separate from Barbara and end this simulation. 2. Follow Barbara to the church, where you might receive some rewards, but be aware that the leak of Barbara's whereabouts might be due to a spy in the church. 3. Persuade Barbara to go find the mayor first and inform him about the situation in Cheetah Village and the Goblin Army. Not many people know about Barbara becoming a candidate for Saintus, so it is suspicious that mere goblins would try to ambush her. You persuade Barbara to inform the mayor about the situation, but she refuses your proposal and is eager to return to the embrace of the holy light. Xu Chen is somewhat surprised, as this is the first time he hasn't followed the chosen option. Angry at the unsuccessful persuasion, you decide to ignore Barbara. You wander around Pancher Town and use the remaining copper coins to stay in a hotel and rest. When you wake up and have a meal, you hear news about the church in Pancher Town. Barbara died tragically in the church, and the town's priest mysteriously disappeared, but it has nothing to do with you. Shortly after, the soldier who accepted your bribe finds you with a patrol team. Unable to resist, you are captured as a suspicious person and taken to an interrogation room. The interrogator subjects you to merciless torture, and although you tell the truth, no one believes you. The mayor brings in a mental mage to cast a spell on you. You tell the truth again but due to the side effects of the spell, you become a vegetable. The mage takes you away and conducts various experiments on your body. Three months later, you die completely. Simulation ends. The secret to living a long life is to mind your own business, but sometimes disasters are hard to avoid. Overall score, 17 points. You gain 17 simulation experience points and 17 simulation points. Please choose the rewards you want to exchange for in the real world. 1. Holy Light Priest Medal, 5 points. 2. Cross slash LV1, 5 points. 3. Detect evil LV1, 5 points. Chu Chin exchanges all three rewards to the real world. With the Holy Light Priest Medal, no one will stop him from entering Pancher Town. Holy Light Priest Medal Rank, Black Iron Level Effect, slightly increases mental recovery speed description, represents the medal of a Holy Light Priest. Although this simulation failed, Chu Chen has found a way to stay out of trouble. As long as he doesn't enter the city with Barbara, he shouldn't be suspected by others.
Furthermore, knowing that there is a problem with the town's priest, he can inform Barbara in the name of the goddess and let her bypass Panchur town and head to the next destination. Chu Chen, where should we go now? Barbara looked at Chu Chen, who was lost in thought, and asked. Chu Chen smiled and said, let's go north, but Panchur town is not safe. The priest there has betrayed the holy light and joined the demonic forces. We need to reach Panchur town and seek the mayor's help, then capture the priest first. Ah, how could that be? Priest Hook has always been the most devout follower under the goddess's crown. The goddess revealed it to me in a dream. You should understand who saved you. Don't you believe me? Who knows about your whereabouts? Priest Hook is one of them, right? Barbara remained silent for a long time. Just as Chu Chin said, Hook knew her route and was responsible for receiving her midway. Then let's try. If it's a misunderstanding, then we can apologize to Priest Hook. No, the goddess's crown cannot be wrong. That damn Hook. This time, Barbara chose to believe Chu Chen and follow his arrangements. Based on the experience from the simulation, Chu Chen discovered the goblins lying in ambush in the bushes ahead of time. They not only had weapons but also copper coins. Instead of avoiding the goblins, he used the goblin language to lure and kill the 10-member goblin squad. Healing Spell Barbara released a healing spell to help Chu Chen treat his injuries, but she herself was unable to save her own wounds due to their location. Unlike the previous stab wound to her abdomen, this time Barbara was cut on her buttocks. Let me help you, Chu Chen said seriously. No, it's okay, I'm fine, Barbara blushed and refused. I can't walk with you like this, your injuries are quite serious. If not treated in time, it will leave ugly scars, and the blood will attract monsters. Patients should not avoid doctors, don't you understand that as a priest? Chu Chen reproached. Barbara was so anxious that she almost cried, but what Chu Chen said made sense, and she couldn't argue. Chu Chen, thank you for your help, Barbara turned around and closed her eyes, facing away from Chu Chen. Chu Chen approached and cleaned her wound a little before casting a healing spell. As the wound healed and the pain subsided, Barbara quickly took off her priest robe and used it as an apron. The two of them remained silent for much of the journey, with Barbara always avoiding Chu Chen's gaze. With their experience from the simulation, they safely arrived outside the town of Panchur. Chu Chen, aren't you coming with me to enter Panchur town? Barbara looked at Chu Chun, who remained indifferent, and asked in confusion. Chu Chen shook his head, the goddess entrusted me with the task of rescuing you from Cheetah village and escorting you to Panchur town. This is my personal help to you, I have other things to do. All right, thank you, Chu Chen. Barbara bit her lip and after a moment of thought, she took out something from her pocket and handed it to Chu Chen. She knew that without Chu Chen, she would not have been able to come here. Chu Chen, this is for you. If one day you reach the holy city, you can find a silver-ranked paladin named Leotes and give him the ring. He will give you more help. Chu Chen accepted the unexpected item handed to him by Barbara. It was the ring she had refused to let go of before. Barbara was chosen as a candidate for the saintess, and whether she could become the saintess or not, she was destined to be unable to be with her lover. The journey to the holy city was long and full of dangers, and she was unsure if she could reach the holy city. Chu Chen's swordsmanship was good, and he also mastered divine magic, so he was likely to become a holy knight in the future. Being able to receive help and guidance from a silver-ranked holy knight was something that many iron-ranked holy knights dreamed of, and he would probably help bring the ring to her lover. Chu Chen did not refuse, as the ring itself was a good piece of equipment, equivalent to a three-level upgrade for him now. Ring of Promise, Rank, Bronze Effect, Dexterity plus 2, Charm plus 1 Description, The Promised Day will never come, and the Promised Person will never appear. Watching Chu Chen put on the ring directly, Barbara's expression became complicated. She turned around and walked towards Panchur Town. Similar to before, the guards saw the priest emblem and let Barbara into the city. Chu Chen waited outside the city for about an hour until a merchant caravan entered the town, and then he followed behind and entered the town together. With the priest emblem he exchanged from the simulator, Chu Chen was not in trouble this time. There were actually many sects on this continent, and the Holy Light Church has always held a high position due to its mastery of healing divine magic. Moreover, it was not a time of war now, so the control over entering and leaving the town was not strict. Otherwise, when Chu Chen bribed the soldiers, he might have been caught and interrogated. Chu Chen entered Panchur town and found a tavern near the Holy Light Church to enjoy a meal while listening to relevant news. Have you heard? Hook, the priest of the Holy Light Church in Panchur Town, is actually a servant of the demons. Spreading rumors will be taken for trial, don't talk nonsense. What nonsense am I talking about? I saw it with my own eyes just now. The mayor took people to arrest Hook, and after a priestess released the detection of evil skill, he revealed his true form. No wonder priest Hook hasn't been helping people with healing recently. 
It turns out he had already been corrupted into a puppet of the demons. In fact, we can't blame Pastor Hook. A succubus was also found in the church. That figure, TSK TSK, who can resist it? Really? Was the succubus caught? Will she be sent to the red light district to sell herself and atone for her sins? I don't know about that. I heard that succubi are even more powerful than dark elves. Is that so? Tell me more, this meal is on me. The following conversation is not suitable for children. Chu Chen was quite satisfied with the outcome. After enjoying the perfect meal, he found a hotel to stay in. It took a lot of energy to travel all the way, and healing and detection spells consumed mental power. Coupled with the weakness from just crossing over, he went straight to sleep after washing up. When he woke up, it was already dusk, and there were still six hours left until the next simulation plus one. Chu Chen now only had one simulation left, and he didn't plan to leave Pancher Town until his simulation count was fully restored. Even after it was restored, he wanted to stay in Pancher Town and use the simulator to upgrade and improve his strength. At least promote to bronze, otherwise it's dangerous outside. Chu Chen set a small goal for himself. Chu Chen looked at the 10 copper coins left in his pocket and knew he had to find a way to make money if he wanted to stay in Pancher Town. After inquiring about the locations of the Mercenary Guild and the Adventurer Guild from the shopkeeper, Chu Chen arrived at the Closer Adventurer Guild. The Mercenary Guild's tasks were more focused on escorting and guarding, while the Adventurer Guild's tasks leaned more towards wilderness hunting and exploration. The latter had a higher chance of getting injured, and Chu Chen's target was these injured adventurers. Compared to taking on tasks and getting rewards, healing spells made money faster, even faster than selling one's own looks. In the Holy Light Church, there were actually two apprentice priests who knew minor healing spells, but the effect of minor healing spells was not as good. Coupled with the recent increase in the number of adventurers injured by restless monsters, many wounded could only seek water mages or physicians for treatment. Xu Chen took out the Holy Light Priest's badge and hung it on his chest as he approached the Adventurer Guild. He then said to the crowd, limited time discount on basic healing spells. The first customer only needs three silver coins, the next two customers need five silver coins. Only three treatments available today. One gold coin equals ten silver coins equals one thousand copper coins. With three healing spells, Xu Chen could earn thirteen silver coins, which was equivalent to one thousand three hundred copper coins. This price seemed expensive but it was based on the Holy Light Church's fee standards. In the current situation, let alone 5 silver coins, there would be people willing to pay even 10 silver coins. However, the price limit for basic healing spells was set by the church, and Chu Chen didn't want to cause too much trouble, so he didn't ask for a higher price. Upon hearing Chu Chen's call, the crowd immediately became restless, and soon a short-haired man in leather armor approached anxiously. Reverend, please save my companion. Chu Chen reminded him, I only provide treatment here. You need to bring the person over. Okay, no problem. Please wait. The man respectfully handed over three silver coins, afraid that Chu Chen wouldn't accept them. The man's teammate was a middle-aged bronze-level warrior. His shoulder was bitten by a monster, and the foul smell made Chu Chen realize that this money wasn't earned so easily. Actually, real priests would have assistants to help clean the wounds and then cast healing spells. Chu Chen didn't have an assistant, so he had to do it himself. As a medical graduate, he was more familiar with this than those assistant professionals. Lend me a sharp dagger and some high-intensity alcohol. Xu Chen said to the short-haired man. The man quickly took out his own dagger from his waist and had another companion bring a jug of alcohol. Xu Chen sniffed it, thinking that if he used this for disinfection in an operating room, he would probably be scolded to death. But the conditions here were limited, and the main reliance was on healing spells, so it wasn't a big problem. Xu Chen used the strong alcohol for simple disinfection, and then went to the side of the middle-aged warrior. In the fearful gazes of the crowd, he directly used the dagger to remove the rotten flesh. The middle-aged warrior's forehead was covered in cold sweat, but with so many people watching, he gritted his teeth and remained silent. In fact, he could have directly used healing magic, but the effect would have been much worse. A lot of the energy from the healing magic would have been wasted on eliminating the rotten flesh. It would be better to use the energy to regenerate the flesh directly. Chu Chen's speed of handling was fast. He took out his wand and pretended to chant before finally releasing the healing magic. Barbara needed to chant during spellcasting, which would be dangerous and slow down the pace of the battle. However, Chu Chen's skill could be released without chanting. Healing magic. The wand quickly healed under the gaze of everyone, and the newly grown flesh was even whiter and more tender, forming a sharp contrast with his dark skin. The newly grown flesh is more delicate. Rest well during this period, Chu Chen reminded. Previously, he had attempted to use healing magic to regenerate the missing limbs but failed. 
This time, the injuries were not too severe, so the wounds were successfully healed. Such pure healing magic, as if it is not tainted with any impurities in the holy light. Some knowledgeable adventurers noticed the difference between Chu Chen's healing magic and the healing magic they usually saw. With this effect, if it were Hook casting it, I'm afraid he would have to cast it twice in a row. What a profit! It only cost 3 silver coins to achieve the effect of 10 silver coins, and there are no scars. The remaining 2 slots were quickly bought by onlookers. One of the two injured was lightly wounded, with a wound on the face that was very deadly for a lady, while the other had a broken foot bone. Treating the wound on the face was more complicated, but with Chu Chen's exquisite technique, he quickly healed the other person by recutting the facial skin. The doctor had already helped fix the support for the foot bone, and with Chu Chen's healing magic, the patient would be able to get out of bed after resting for half a day. Chu Chen's mental power was only 5 points, and after 3 releases of healing magic, he felt a bit tired. No matter how everyone pleaded or raised the price, he remained unmoved. Chu Chen entered the Adventurer's Guild, where its functions were not limited to commission handovers. There were many books related to monsters and the customs of the continent that could be borrowed here. Chu Chen paid three silver coins as a deposit and borrowed a large number of books from the Adventurer's Guild before moving to a more upscale and secure hotel. Like Chu Chen, the simulator absorbed information and grew during the simulation process. If he could use these books to obtain more information, then the options in the subsequent simulations would be more accurate and reasonable. In the next few days, Chu Chen immersed himself in books. Every day, apart from the fixed time to earn money and borrow books from the Adventurer's Guild, he stayed low-key and avoided trouble as much as possible. During this time, Panchur town was not peaceful. After the succubus's plan was disrupted, she began to attack the townspeople frantically. Every day, he would wake up to news of innocent townspeople being sucked dry and dying happily. On the fifth morning, Chu Chen's simulation count finally recovered to five-fifths, but he only had 20 silver coins left in his hand. In fact, he earned more silver coins than this, but he spent a lot of money buying a steel short sword and leather armor for himself. It's about time to start the simulation and continue to improve my strength. Chu Chen didn't directly start the simulation in his room but went to the streets to find a more suitable opportunity. In the events related to Barbara, when he started the simulation, the initial options included healing magic and detecting evil. If he wanted to simulate, finding a suitable template for simulation would yield greater benefits. The incident at the Holy Light Church gradually subsided, and the Goblin Army had been repelled back to the southern wilderness. However, due to the infiltration of the demon race, Barbara was still waiting in the town for her escort from the church's night order. Today was the day the night order was supposed to arrive, and Barbara was waiting at the church entrance in her brand new priest robe. She had a faint expectation in her heart that her knight would personally come to escort her after hearing the news of her attack. Unfortunately, she was destined to be disappointed. The holy city was too far away, and Leotes was not among the escort team. The one responsible for escorting her was Nora a bronze-level paladin of the Holy Light Church in the nearby city of Kara. Nora's squadron consisted of 33 members wearing armor, including two vice-captains with bronze-level strength, although they were not paladins but ordinary knights. Chu Chen also saw the squadron of knights walking towards the church on the way, but they didn't pay attention to him as he had put away his priest badge at the time. Chu Chen also considered his own career path. He wanted to become a mage, but mages seemed too fragile and unsafe. Paladins were skilled in both martial and magical arts, focusing on physical training and relying on faith for divine magic, which ordinary people found difficult to practice. However, for Chu Chen, who used a skill system, it was not a problem. Even without believing in any gods, he could freely release divine magic. System, start simulation. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial ability. 1. Basic Body Forging LV1, 5 points, 2. Holy Light Shield LV1, 10 points, 3. Double simulation points for this simulation, 10 points, Chu Chen only had 4 points left, so he couldn't choose anything. However, he could exchange later after the simulation ended. Simulation begins, while wandering in the city, you encountered Nora's squadron of knights who were planning to escort Barbara and escort Priest Hook to Kara City, you secretly released Detect Evil and found no evil presence in the team, which made you feel a little relieved, with nothing else to do, you followed the knight squad to the Holy Light Church in Pancher Town. Barbara, dressed in holy attire, caught your attention for a moment, seemingly noticing your gaze, Barbara discovered your presence, but she didn't have time to greet you as Nora had already arrived by her side, Barbara and Nora completed the handover of the criminal hook, and then followed Nora to leave. You decide. 1. Step forward and reveal your identity and relationship with Barbara, and go to Kara City together. 2. Watch them leave. 
You don't want to leave Panchur town yet. 3. Inform them that a succubus is still lurking in the town and ask them to stay and solve the succubus problem together. After a few days of reading, Xu Chen learned about the situation in Kara City. There were few monsters near Kara City, which was not suitable for him to improve his strength. He still planned to execute his initial plan and raise his strength to the bronze level in Panchur town. Therefore, he chose the third option this time. You put on the priest badge and stop the team, publicly stating the situation of the succubus plaguing Panchur town, Nora didn't want to get involved, but if she refused in public, it would undoubtedly disappoint the people and believers, Barbara also didn't want to cause more casualties because of her own reasons, so she persuaded the night squad to stay and solve the succubus problem first, Nora was a little angry, but still followed the advice of the substitute saint and decided to. Stay for one night and leave tomorrow morning, Nora asked about your situation, but you were already familiar with the geography of the continent. You fabricated your identity and successfully gained her trust by using divine magic, divine magic can only be released by devout believers, and no one can question your priest identity when you use divine magic to prove it. Based on the location and time of the deceased's death, you deduced that the succubus is active in the slums at midnight. At night, you and Nora and Barbara split up to investigate, but unfortunately, it seems that the succubus already knew about your grand plan. The night order didn't find anything that night, and no townspeople were killed as a result. The next morning, Nora ignored Barbara's request and left with her team, leaving Barbara with no choice but to leave as well. You wanted to leave with them, but Nora refused, and you ended up staying behind. At night, a human beauty came to your room, and you vaguely realized that the situation was not good, but your mental power was not enough to resist the succubus's illusions. The next morning, you were found hanging from the hotel window, and the whole town witnessed your astonishing size, but unfortunately, you were already dead. Simulation ends. You placed your hope in the wrong person, but fortunately, you remembered the appearance of the succubus disguised as a human. Overall score, 13 points received 13 simulation experience points and 13 simulation points. Please select the reward you want to exchange for in the real world. 1. Basic Body Forging LV1, 5.2. Holy Light Shield LV1, 10.3. Cross Slash Level Plus 1, 5 points. Chu Chen has 17 points remaining, and he only exchanged for basic body forging this time. He wants to simulate again and choose double points. Points dash 5. Congratulations, you have mastered basic body forging LV1. Physique plus 1 basic body forging only costs 5 points and gives 1 point of physique attribute, which is more cost effective than leveling up. Chu Chen couldn't wait to start the second simulation. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial ability. 1. Body Forging Level Plus 1, 5 points 2. Holy Light Shield LV1, 10 points 3. Double points for this simulation. 10 points Chu Chen shows double points, confident that he can break even this time and earn more points. Points dash 10 simulation begins. You return from death, remembering the succubus that killed you and savoring the unforgettable process. You successfully persuade the paladin to stay and inform them about the appearance of the succubus after they return to the church. Although detecting evil magic is useful under normal circumstances, it consumes mental power and cannot be used on a large scale. Therefore, the night order rests during the day and only acts at night during the first simulation. The paladin doesn't understand the source of your information, but you swear in the name of the goddess, which makes them believe you without doubt. Nora requests the mayor's assistance, and the mayor sends soldiers to block Fongyue Street. This is one of the valuable pieces of information you discovered during your investigation with the succubus. The women in Fongyue Street are gathered together, and Barbara repeatedly casts evil detection spells on them, but to no avail. You notice the familiar woman wearing a ring. You choose. 1. Ambush and kill, seriously injure, the woman, then explain to everyone too. Secretly tell Nora about the woman and the ring, and let her deal with the succubus 3. Disperse the crowd pretending to have found nothing, then launch a coordinated attack on the succubus to minimize innocent casualties the succubus's strength lies mainly in its charm ability. Chu Chen is confident that he can kill it. After all, it's only a bronze level succubus, which can provide him with a large amount of experience points. You pretend to observe this group of suspicious targets, and the succubus is a bit nervous, but you don't directly expose their identity. You come to a row behind the succubus and pretend to observe. When you reach behind the succubus, you suddenly wave the newly bought steel short sword and stab it towards the succubus. The succubus is stabbed in the back, and the disguise spell dissipates. Without you explaining, everyone understands everything. The succubus lets out a scream before dying, and your head explodes in the astonished gaze of the crowd. Your level increases to LV4, but at the same time, you are killed. Simulation ends. Your sacrifice is lamentable, perhaps you should be more cautious.
Overall score, 19 points. You gain 19 simulation experience points and 19 by 2 simulation points. Congratulations, your simulator level has increased to LV2, 5 slash 200. Simulation limit plus 1, rewards can be exchanged twice upon simulation completion, guaranteed point reward plus 2. More simulation options unlocked. Please select the rewards to be exchanged to the real world, each option can be exchanged up to 2 times. 1. Body Forging Art Level plus 1, 5 points. 2. Holy Light Shield LV1, 10 points. 3. Player Level plus 1, 10 points. The increase in simulator level raises the simulation limit from 5 times to 6 times, allowing Chu Chen to accumulate more simulation attempts to deal with crises. In addition, multiple exchanges can now be made upon simulation completion, making Chu Chen's power enhancement more convenient. Chu Chen now has a total of 40 points, and he is excited looking at the rewards and the options. Chu Chen directly exchanges Body Forging Art and Holy Light Shield twice, leaving 10 points to increase his level. Congratulations, your level has increased to LV3-10, and you gain one free attribute point. Congratulations, your basic Body Forging Art level has increased to LV3-5, and your physique increases by 3. Congratulations, you have mastered the skill Holy Light Shield LV2-6. Chu Chun increases his attribute points in spirit, which can increase resistance to succubus spells and strengthen his own spell power. With the support of body forging art and the previous level up, his physique reaches 9 points, almost double what it was before. The surging power makes him feel a burst of heat, and the muscles on his body tremble for a while before quickly calming down. Xu Chen has already found a way to deal with the succubus, so repeating this simulation will yield fewer rewards. Seeing Nora about to leave with Barbara, Xu Chen puts on the priest badge and stops him again. Nora, please wait. I have something very important to discuss with you, Chu Chen says with a smile. It concerns Barbara's safety. What does this have to do with the Holy Princess? In the church, after Nora listens to Chu Chen's explanation about the succubus, he feels like he has been deceived. Of course it's related. The succubus must have learned about your action plan in the city. Next, she is likely to follow you to find an opportunity to continue attacking Barbara. Her charm spell is unbearable even for Priest Hook. Can you guarantee that your subordinates can resist it? If your subordinates are unfortunately charmed and attack Barbara Midway, it will be a tragedy. At that time, as the leader, you will be held responsible. Xu Chen exaggerates, as if these things will happen soon. Then he continues, and if you can kill the succubus, not only will you have made a great achievement, but the reputation damage and loss of believers caused by Hook and Pancher Town can also be compensated. At that time, you will be a great hero and I believe the bishop will not be stingy with his rewards for you. Nora naturally knows that eliminating the hidden monsters in the town is a great achievement, but the succubus is skilled in disguise and difficult to find. His top priority now is to escort Barbara and Priest Hook. Nora is a cautious person, not seeking merit but avoiding mistakes. It seems that Chu Chen has noticed Nora's concerns and was prepared for it. That's why he didn't morally pressure her in front of everyone, but instead came to discuss it after church. I know where the succubus is hiding and what her disguised appearance looks like. I've been secretly searching for her these past few days, but her mental skills are too powerful for me to resist, so that's why I came to ask for your help. Upon hearing Chu Chen's words, Barbara couldn't help but show admiration. Chu Chen, I didn't expect you to do so much for the people of Pancher Town. Barbara continued, this whole thing started because of me, so I'll help you hunt down the succubus. Barbara is not just a simple healing priest, she also has some offensive divine spells. Absolutely not. Let our knight order handle this matter, Nora hurriedly interjected. He didn't want Barbara to take any risks. There's no time to waste. Quickly tell me where the succubus is so she doesn't escape. Chu Chen smiled, shook his head, and then made his request. The succubus has some magical equipment on her. I want to study these items and gather more information about the demon race. From my observations, she wears a ring that can shield detection of evil magic. Chu Chen is not just a do-gooder, one of the main reasons he wants to hunt down the succubus is for the equipment she possesses. Besides the ring, there are other things on the bronze level succubus that he's interested in. Chu Chen provides information and gains equipment, while Nora hunts down the succubus and receives rewards and reputation from the church. It's a win-win outcome. Nora nodded, no problem, you can have the equipment, but I'll bring the body back to the church for purification. The two reached an agreement. Following Chu Chen's proposal, Nora sought the mayor's help to completely seal off Fongiwe Street, just as they did before. Chu Chen initially thought the succubus would be hiding in the slums since she was active there, but during the process of being squeezed dry, he discovered that she was hiding in Fongiwe Street. 
During the second simulation, he had the mayor and the night order seal off Fongiwa Street and discovered the succubus's disguise. The simulation not only improved Chu Chen's strength but also served as an effective means of gathering information. With the mayor's assistance, hundreds of women from Fongiwa Street were first gathered together, and then one by one, they entered the iron cages within the night order's encirclement for inspection. The knights were equipped with powerful crossbows, and once they received instructions from Chu Chen and Nora, the succubus would be shot to pieces. As the inspection progressed, Chu Chen quickly discovered the succubus hidden among the crowd. Just like before, she was confident in her disguise and didn't think that a mere bronze-level holy knight could see through her. Chu Chen whispered to Nora's ear, keep your eyes on the women in the cages and don't look around. I'll tell you which one is the succubus. Nora nodded slightly and focused her gaze on the woman in the cage who had a displeased expression. According to the order of the queue, she's the tenth one, the woman with conservative attire and red hair accessories, Nora pretended not to know and approached the woman in the cage, carefully inspecting her before letting her leave. As each woman was inspected, it was finally the succubus's turn. The succubus's acting skills were outstanding, and if it weren't for Chu Chen's reminder, she would have appeared no different from the other women. At least Nora couldn't see any abnormalities. After the succubus entered the iron cage, Nora locked the cage door just like before and quickly retreated to the back. Attack! She's the succubus! Upon hearing the command, the members of the Knight Order immediately shot their crossbow arrows. PSH! 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 From such a close distance, the crossbows almost pierced through the succubus's body. She looked at Nora in disbelief, letting out a scream of agony. Nora was well prepared, and the holy light shield blocked some of the attack power. In addition, the distance was pulled apart, so she didn't suffer much damage, just a slight dizziness. Looking at the woman who had transformed into a succubus after removing her disguise, everyone was shocked. Captain Nora is amazing, how did he recognize the succubus? Ah, great, she's finally been killed. I haven't dared to go out at night these past few days. Forget it, you're too old, the succubus wouldn't be interested in you. Ah, it's such a pity that she's so beautiful. If we put a banishing necklace on her and throw her into Fongiwa Street, we could make a lot of money. Yes, even if she's drained, I'm willing. Killing the succubus so smoothly made Nora very satisfied, and she also felt a sense of gratitude towards Chu Chen. It was like a free contribution. He opened the cage door and looked at the succubus with disdain as a member of the demon race. After confirming that she was dead, he said to Chu Chen, take whatever you want, come and get it yourself. Chu Chen didn't hesitate and went forward, violently taking off the succubus's ring. Information about the equipment appeared before his eyes. Nightshade Sanctuary, Rank, Bronze Effect, Wearing it can conceal one's aura and isolate detection and monster tracking. Description, Consumes one point of mental power per hour. Then Chu Chen took out a short sword and, in front of everyone, pried open her skull and dug out the demon core from her mind. The demon core was something that had a certain chance of condensing in the head of a bronze-level monster, which Chu Chen had learned from books in recent days. Monster Crystal, Rank, Bronze Effect, a mysterious crystal containing energy. Description, the demon core can be used not only as a forging material for weapon equipment but also for refining potions. In addition to the ring and the demon core, Chu Chen also felt around her face for a while. Who is that guy? Why is he so perverted, not even letting go of the corpse? Oh my, the feel must be good. He seems to be Chu Chen, the priest. I saw him at the entrance of the Adventurer's Guild before. Chu Chen, what are you doing? Barbara, who was protected at the back of the team, couldn't help but step forward to stop Chu Chen's actions, afraid that his behavior would tarnish the reputation of the church. Stop it. Even if it's a demon's corpse, you can't do this. Ignoring Barbara's words, Chu Chen directly tore off the succubus's face and the horrified gaze of everyone. The torn off face emitted arcane fluctuations and then turned into a mask, while the succubus's face still retained its exquisite features. Succubi can use charm and illusion to create illusions in individuals, but it's not easy to charm a group of people and it's easy to expose themselves. Her true reliance is this mask equipment. Nightshade disguise, rank, bronze effect. When worn and touched to the target's face, it can take away the other person's appearance, consuming one point of mental power per hour. Description, the person who has been deprived of their appearance will lose face. This equipment is somewhat horrifying, as it directly integrates the skin after peeling it off, which is very much in line with the temperament of the demon race. Seeing the equipment in Chu Chen's hand, Barbara immediately understood the reason and couldn't help but feel sorry for her misunderstanding. Chu Chen not only saved her but also escorted her to Pancher Town and killed the succubus who came to Pancher Town because of her. And she mistook him for a pervert. Chu Chen, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. Chu Chen didn't pay attention to Barbara and put on the mask, 
then touched the succubus's face again. As the mask's ability was activated, the succubus's face was absorbed by the mask, and Chu Chen's appearance changed into that of the succubus. With a thought, Chu Chen took off the mask and returned to his original appearance. After storing it, Chu Chen would be able to disguise himself as a succubus next time. Barbara frowned, Chu Chen, this is a demon's equipment. It's best to destroy it, right? The scene just now made her feel uncomfortable. Chu Chen said firmly, with the help of this equipment, perhaps we can disguise ourselves as demons and infiltrate their ranks to gather intelligence. Equipment itself is neither good nor evil, it is the human heart that distinguishes between good and evil. Even the self-proclaimed righteous priest, Hook, did not have a firm will and fell into darkness. And among the demons, there are people like the Dark Ranger Triss, who have a bright heart. Chu Chen's examples were very persuasive. After several days of interrogation, it was clear that Hook was not bewitched but willingly became a lackey of the demons. And Triss, the Dark Ranger, had abandoned darkness and made significant contributions to the continent during the last demon invasion. I was shallow, Barbara apologized for her words again. Chu Chen, do you want to come with me to Mira City? The bishop will also reward you for your contributions. Barbara hoped to walk with Chu Chen, as everything seemed to go smoothly when she was with him. Chu Chen shook his head, the holy light guides me, and I still have an unfinished mission in Pancher City. All right, you are favored by the holy light. May the goddess protect you, Barbara made a blessing gesture and bid farewell to Chu Chen. After resolving the succubus threat, Nora's night squadron set off again. To prevent any accidents along the way, the mayor of Pancher Town warmly dispatched 30 cavalrymen to escort them. As he watched the knights leave, Chu Chen was preparing to continue borrowing books when the butler, who had been following the mayor, approached him. Lord Chu Chen, do you have a moment? The master invites you to his mansion as a guest to thank you for your contributions to Pancher Town. The butler's attitude was very sincere. Both the mayor and the butler knew the truth and understood that Chu Chen had exposed the succubus, and Nora was merely taking credit. In fact, if Chu Chen had not approached Nora, as a priest, he could have directly approached the mayor, and the mayor might have cooperated. However, Chu Chen mainly wanted to brush up on his skills with Nora, and there was no need to change personnel after simulating a reliable outcome. Mayor Road was still accompanying the night squadron out of town, and Chu Chen did not refuse his invitation. After boarding the mayor's exclusive carriage, he followed the butler to the mayor's mansion. The mayor's mansion was exquisite, and the butler led him to the backyard and served him delicious coffee. Shortly after, Mayor Road hurriedly arrived in the garden and smiled when he saw Chu Chen. He approached Chu Chen and chatted for a while before asking the butler to present a gift. Just a small token of appreciation. Chu Chen opened the box, and inside was another bronze-level demon core. Mayor Road, you're too kind. Punishing evil and promoting justice is my duty, Chu Chen said with a smile as he accepted the gift. Seeing Chu Chen accept the gift, Road breathed a sigh of relief. He was afraid that Chu Chen was the type of priest who was unyielding. To be honest, besides thanking you for everything you have done for Pancher Town, I also have something to ask for your help. Oh, the continent where Chu Chen was located was called the Divine Demon Continent. Pancher Town was not a noble territory but a town directly under the jurisdiction of the royal family of the New Moon Kingdom. Pancher Town was a lively town, and the nearby Jula Forest not only provided low-level demons for mercenaries and adventurers to hunt but also had beautiful scenery making it a summer resort. Members of the royal family would come to Jula Forest for a vacation every year while inspecting the town's operations. Recently, due to the restlessness of the demons, the predicted demon invasion was about to erupt, and this year might be the last year the royal family would come for a summer vacation. Rode wanted to seize this opportunity to transfer himself from Pancher Town, which was one of the quasi-frontline towns. Otherwise, it would be dangerous when the demon army arrived. Here's the thing, Princess Catherine will arrive in Pancher Town in three days for a vacation and to visit Jula Forest. Under normal circumstances, the priests of the Holy Light Church would accompany us every year, but as you know, the current situation. In addition to the absence of the town priest, Barbara, the town belonging to the city of Kara was also missing the priest, Hook. Filling these two vacancies would require the church's deliberation, which would take at least a week, and there simply wasn't enough time. Although the princess surely carried healing scrolls and other items with her, it would be more reliable to have a professional priest handle any injuries in case of an accident. Rode had heard about the healing services provided by the Adventurers Guild, and with the current restlessness of monsters, it would be safer to have a priest accompany them. I need to think about this, Chu Chen hesitated, wanting to explore the situation through the simulator before making a decision. The mayor, sensing Chu Chen's reluctance, quickly took out a bag of gold coins from his pocket and said, These ten gold coins are a deposit, and you will receive the other half after the matter is finished. 
20 gold coins were equivalent to 200 silver coins, which any other priest would have accepted long ago. The princess's escort team could guarantee their safety, and traveling and socializing with the beautiful princess was something many people dreamed of. If it weren't for the presence of the demons, Chu Chen would have agreed without hesitation. System, begin simulation. Simulation is about to start. Please choose your initial ability. 1. Beginner healing magic level plus 1, 5 points, 2. Fireball LV1, 5 points, 3. Monster taming LV1, 10 points, 4. Free simulation, immerse yourself in the simulated world and experience it in real time, 20 points. Chu Chen currently had 0 points and couldn't exchange for anything. Moreover, if the initial exchange couldn't help him improve his score, then it wouldn't be a permanent gain, and these abilities would only have temporary significance. It would be better to wait until after the simulation to make the exchange. Perhaps due to an upgrade in the simulator, the initial options had unexpectedly become four. Free simulation would allow Chu Chen to observe more details and gain a real experience. If he had used free simulation when dealing with Barbara, it wouldn't have been just a VR movie mode, but a more realistic experience. Simulation begins, Mayor Road requests that you accompany the princess when she arrives. You are concerned about this, but the other party has offered a considerable amount, and you also want to use this opportunity to meet influential people. Considering that the princess's escort team should be strong, you choose. 1. Agree to the mayor's request and become the princess's accompanying priest. 2. Refuse the mayor's request, as the demons might target the princess. 3. Consider further and give an answer after the princess arrives in Pancher Town. Xu Chen wanted to simulate the situation during the journey, so there was no need to wait, as it would only decrease the mayor's favorability. You accept the gold coins and choose to help the mayor. The mayor is very pleased and invites you to stay in his mansion. You stay in the mayor's house and go to the library to borrow books for reading. The mayor's daughter, Anna, is also there, and she seems very interested in you. She walks over and starts chatting with you. You choose. 1. Treat her coldly, as women only waste time. Continuing to read books may yield more knowledge. 2. Engage in a friendly conversation, as she is the mayor's daughter and also a beautiful woman. 3. Make suggestive remarks, as it is said that noble women are very open-minded. Anna had long red hair and a delicate face. Her black-framed glasses, contrasting with her imposing figure, made her look very alluring. A barely noticeable smile appears on your lips. After engaging in a friendly conversation with her for a while, you start steering the conversation towards more intimate topics. Anna's face shows a hint of shyness in the scene, but she doesn't refuse or avoid Chu Chen's teasing. You found a novel called Gallant Night in the corner of the bookshelf, and you asked Anna to read it to you. As the reading continued, Anna finally realized your plan and blushed as she ran away with the book in her hands. Late at night, someone knocked on your door. Anna has finished reading the novel and has many questions she wants to find answers to from you. You choose. 1. Open the door and have a deep conversation with Anna about life. 2. Refuse to open the door and have a conversation with Anna through the door. 3. Leave the mansion and have a conversation with Anna in the garden. Chu Chen's simulation seemed to deviate from his original intention with his first choice, but he didn't mind. He just wanted to see what kind of person Anna really was. You open the door, and Anna confessed to you using cheesy lines from the novel. She sees you as the ideal lover both in terms of your handsome appearance and your priest identity. You closed the door and told her that you have dedicated your life to the goddess and cannot give her a bright future. Upon learning that you have received dreams from the goddess, Anna, as a devout follower of the goddess, couldn't contain her joy. You and Anna bathed in the moonlight together, and Anna awkwardly learned various techniques from the night novel and practiced them with you. Suddenly, the door was kicked open, and the mayor looked at you with uncontrollable anger. Before you could defend yourself, the mayor rushed forward and killed you, defenseless. Your body was fed to the dogs by the mayor after you died. Simulation ends. Once again, you died because of a woman, but you discovered an easily controlled wealthy woman, which can be considered a gain. Overall score, 13 points received 13 points of simulation experience and 13 plus 2 simulation points please choose the reward you want to exchange for in the real world one. Level up in basic healing magic, 5 points 2. Fireball magic LV1, 5 points 3. Monster Taming Magic LV1, 10 points Chu Chen's current combat methods are a bit monotonous, and Fireball Magic and Monster Taming Magic are both good choices. He currently has 15 points. Considering future tasks, he chooses to improve basic healing magic twice in a row and then learn Fireball Magic. Exchange successful, points 15 congratulations, basic healing magic level increased to LV3 slash 5 congratulations, learn skill, 
Fireball Magic LV1 slash 5 Chu Chun has two more simulation attempts left, and after thinking it over, he starts another simulation. The initial options are the same as before, and Chu Chen still starts with zero points and accepts the mayor's commission again. You stay at the mayor's house and go to the library to borrow books to read. The mayor's daughter, Anna, is also there, and she seems very interested in you. She walks over and chats with you. You choose. This time, Chu Chun chooses the second option for a relatively harmonious development. Based on the memories of death, you know that Anna is interested in you, but you don't want to be killed and fed to the dogs again. You maintain a reasonable distance and become friends with her. In the following days, Anna keeps coming to find you. You know you can push her down at any time, but you choose not to do so. A few days later, Princess Catherine arrived in the town of Pancher, and surprisingly, there were people you know among the escorts. The captain of the escorts is Leotes, Barbara's childhood friend. He is the youngest silver knight in the kingdom and is the white horse prince in the hearts of countless girls in the capital. You didn't give Barbara's ring to him, but his admiration for Princess Catherine was hard to hide. Unfortunately, Catherine doesn't seem interested in him. Mayor Rod introduced you to Catherine, but she didn't pay much attention to you. Instead, she was very enthusiastic about Anna. From Anna, you learned that Catherine has been inviting her to go to the Juela Forest for vacation in Pancher Town in recent years, and their relationship is good. The next morning, Catherine and Anna rode in the same carriage, while you, who couldn't ride a horse, got on the carriage carrying supplies. Under the escort of Leotes, the journey was very peaceful, and any monsters that appeared along the way were killed by the escorts in advance, and you didn't even have a chance to see them. Everyone arrived at the lakeside villa in the Juela Forest. The villa is always well maintained, and there is a magic barrier around it to drive away monsters. Catherine wanted to swim in the lake with Anna, but Leotes refused the proposal on the grounds that there might be monsters in the lake. Catherine was very angry about this, and you decided. 1. Volunteer to use the evil detection skill to investigate the lake water to ensure safety. 2. Propose that Leotes swim in the lake together, so even if there is danger, it can be resolved immediately. 3. Persuade Catherine not to take risks, pretend to release the evil detection and inform her that monsters have been detected. Chu Chen didn't want to let Leotes off easily, so he chose the first option. The lake is not big, and your proposal was approved by Catherine. You took a boat to investigate the situation in the lake and ensure safety. Catherine ordered Leotes and others to patrol in the distance, but at Anna's suggestion, she left you behind to continue the investigation. Leotes looked at you with hostility. You enjoyed the beautiful scenery without any accidents. At night, the Juela forest was covered in thick fog, and a scream woke you up from your sleep. Undead creatures surrounded you, and if you couldn't find the undead mage hidden in the darkness, you would face endless attacks. Leotes suggested escorting the princess back to Pancher Town, but you opposed it. The forest is currently shrouded in heavy fog, and leaving rashly would play into the enemy's hands. Catherine listened to your advice and refused to leave. In order to locate the undead mage, she asked Leotes to protect you and get close to the enemy to release the evil detection skill. You decided. 1. Follow the order and go with Leotes to find the undead mage. 2. Refuse the order. Your task is to heal, not to risk your life on the front line. 3. Make a suggestion for everyone to take a boat and hide in the lake to avoid undead attacks. Xu Chen wanted to see the strength of the undead mage, and since it was a simulation, he chose the first option. The undead mage was hiding in the distance, and you couldn't detect him. Leotes suggested continuing forward. You had no choice but to brave the obstacles under Leotes's protection, and soon you found the undead mage's location. Leotes rushed towards him, and you were surrounded by the undead army. With various skills, you killed many undead and leveled up to LV4. Outnumbered, you were eventually overwhelmed by the undead. Although Leotes killed the undead mage, he lost an arm in the process. After the fog cleared, Catherine and the others left the Juela forest. The simulation ended. Your sacrifice gave everyone a chance to survive, and you became a hero in Anna's eyes. Overall score, 18 points. You gain 18 points of simulation experience and 18 plus 2 simulation points. Please choose the reward you want to exchange for in the real world. 1. Level up primary healing magic by 1, 5 points. 2. Detect evil level plus 1, 5 points. 3. Player level plus 1, 10 points. The rewards after this simulation have changed, probably due to the simulation process. Xu Chen once again used up his points, upgrading his basic healing spell to maximum level and raising his evil detection to LV3 greatly increasing his detection range. The range of LV1 evil detection is a radius of 30 meters, but after upgrading to LV3, the range increases to 100 meters, making it easier to find the location of the necromancer. 
You have mastered the basic healing spell and gained the attribute bonus spirit plus one Chu Chin is very satisfied with the additional reward after mastering the skill and wishes to max out all his skills immediately. I can kill the necromancer Leo and accompany the princess without any danger. There shouldn't be any problems simulating it later. Chu Chen made his decision. He looked at Rode, took the coins and said, I'll pay the 20 gold coins in one go. I need to buy some equipment to prepare for protecting the princess. Upon hearing Chu Chen accepting his commission, Rode couldn't help but be overjoyed. Without hesitation, he immediately gave all the gold coins to Chu Chen. This is his territory, and the other party is a holy light priest. It would be impolite to pay in installments as he had done before. Chu Chen, if you don't mind, why not stay in the guest room for a few days and let me take care of you? Rode proposed with a smile on his face. His daughter has a good relationship with Princess Catherine, so as long as they don't make any mistakes, he can have his daughter serve the princess well. Then, when the princess leaves and requests a transfer, the other party should not refuse. The butler arranged a luxurious guest room for Chu Chen. This time, Chu Chen didn't rush to the library to read books, but instead took the coins and went to the commercial street. He had too few equipment on him. Although he had a few pieces of bronze-level magic equipment, they were all auxiliary and not suitable for combat. From the perspective of attribute points, Chu Chen's overall attributes were already infinite after being enhanced by equipment, after all, they were bronze level. But he had to face the undead army and necromancers who were only slightly weaker than Leo. Chu Chen had to make multiple preparations. He went to the mage guild, and the mages in the guild looked at the person wearing the Holy Light Church Priest badge with some confusion in their eyes. In the power system of this world, priests rely on devout prayers and faith to obtain divine blessings and perform divine arts. Mages, on the other hand, rely on the exploration of truth and the study of magical elements to release arcane magic. There is a big difference between the two. The mages in the mage guild generally look down on the priests in various churches, and the priests also disdain the arrogance of the mages. Although their casting methods are slightly different, they ultimately converge. After all, aren't the mages also generally believing in the goddess of magic? The staff in charge of reception didn't dare to disrespect the priests like the mages did. She showed a professional smile and approached enthusiastically. May I help you, respected priest? I would like to purchase some magic scrolls. Where can I find them? Chu Chen's friendly attitude made the girl in charge of reception feel at ease. Compared to those eccentric mages, the priests of the church are indeed more amiable. It's not easy to receive a respected priest. Maybe there's a chance to switch to work in the church. The professional smile on the girl's face appeared more natural at this moment. Please follow me. The guild's trading area is on the second floor. The mage guild has three floors, and in principle, the guild shops only allow internal personnel to trade. However, with this rule, it is difficult for goods to circulate. This led to many mages preferring to sell items to the outside world for a higher price. Later, the mage guild compromised and opened up some trading privileges. As a priest, Chu Chen is not liked by the mages, but he is also on the list of open personnel. Access to the second floor trading area requires a voucher, and the receptionist's voucher is a bead that can only be used during the day. After the magic beads were activated, the barrier at the entrance briefly closed, and Chu Chen followed the receptionist into the trading area. The Mage Guild's trading area not only sells goods but also allows individuals to consign their own equipment for sale, although items of low value are not allowed to be consigned. Each item here is displayed separately on a stand, with detailed written explanations next to them, allowing customers to have a comprehensive understanding of the goods. Magical equipment is not cheap. Shuchin only had a total of 22 gold coins, which wouldn't buy him much useful equipment unless he was willing to sell the equipment he obtained from the succubus to get more gold coins. However, his goal this time was not these magical equipment, but magic scrolls. Compared to magical equipment that can be used for a long time, magic scrolls, as consumables, are much cheaper. Chuchin selected a scroll called Earth Prison that combines offense and defense, costing 6 gold coins, and then purchased a range attack scroll called Resistance Fire Ring for 5 gold coins. He then spent 7 gold coins to buy 5 bottles of basic health potions and 2 bottles of basic antidote. The undead creatures are more or less contaminated with toxins, and Chuchin doesn't know how to dispel toxins, so it is necessary to have antidotes. Although healing spells also have healing effects, sometimes the mental power may not be sufficient. Earth Prison is a spell that can turn the surrounding land into a wall to wrap oneself or enemies, providing effective defense against siege attacks. If he has these two scrolls during the simulation, he can hold on until Leo kills the undead mage. Next time, Shuchin doesn't plan to take too many risks. Princess Catherine must also carry a large number of life-saving scrolls, so a mere undead mage shouldn't be able to kill her. 
In the next few days, Xu Chen continued to search for information in the library, just like in the simulation, but this time he was looking for information about the undead mage. Anna still had a great fondness for Xu Chen, and their relationship was developing rapidly. Rode saw everything. He was very satisfied with the talented and promising Chu Chen, but he hoped that Chu Chen could marry into his family, rather than his only daughter being abducted. Chu Chen was an orphan, so he might not resist such a thing too much. He could try to fight for it after everything was over. Princess Catherine's team entered the town of Pancher, and Chu Chen's simulation count was now restored to 4 out of 6, which means he would have 5 simulation opportunities when entering the Julison Forest tomorrow. Five simulations would be enough for Chuchin to safely deal with the threat of the undead mage. Rode welcomed Princess Catherine into the mayor's mansion next to the king's palace, and then ordered people to hold a banquet to welcome the princess. At the banquet, Mayor Rode brought Chuchin to Catherine's side. Your Highness, this is Priest Chuchin from the Church of Holy Light. Tomorrow, he will serve as the team's priest and accompany you into the Julison Forest. Catherine glanced at Chuchin and saw no fanaticism or desire in his eyes like other men, which made her feel a slight fondness for him. Thank you. Catherine nodded politely. Leo, who was standing aside, looked at Chuchin's handsome face, which was even more handsome than his own, and said somewhat dissatisfied, which region of the church are you from? With me here, there's no need for a team priest. Due to the restlessness of the monsters, the king specifically requested the church to send Leo to protect the princess. On the one hand, it was to matchmake them. Leo had a promising future, and no one could predict his achievements. On the other hand, it was also for safety reasons. As a paladin, Leo not only mastered powerful knight combat skills but also had some knowledge of divine magic such as healing spells. The divine magic that paladins can learn is somewhat random, mainly based on the preferences of the goddess to bestow them with divine magic. Leo, although you know healing spells, you haven't mastered the skill of detecting monsters, Catherine said somewhat displeased with Leo's interruption. Your Highness, the members of the Knight Order will thoroughly investigate everything and ensure that no monsters disturb you, Leo confidently declared. Chu Chen sneered and bluntly said, Don't challenge my expertise with your amateur abilities. Although you are a silver holy knight, your healing skills are probably not up to par. Chu Chen had already witnessed Leo's healing skills during simulations, and they were probably at the level of a level 3 basic healing spell, far inferior to his own level 5. Moreover, monsters are skilled at disguising and hiding. The members of the knight order alone may not be able to detect them, and there is even a possibility of infiltration by the undead among the members. You. Do not be disrespectful. I have the final say in this matter. Catherine was delighted to see Leo being put in his place. She was aware of her father's intention to matchmake her with him, but she had no interest in the rural, lucky holy knight favored by the goddess. In comparison, the young and refined priest in front of her was much more pleasing to the eye. Of course, Catherine only found Xu Chen tolerable and didn't dislike him. She was still far from liking him. Xu Chen could tell that Catherine didn't like men and preferred beauties like Anna, just like himself. He also noticed that Catherine, the princess, had slightly pointed ears. It was said that her mother, who was from the elven race, was a half-elf. This little incident didn't affect the mood of the group. As the banquet continued, Catherine invited Anna to dance gracefully. When the banquet ended, Anna did not return home but stayed in the palace to have a private conversation with Catherine. Chu Chin was curious if there would be any further development between the two, but it wasn't worth wasting simulation attempts on such matters. After returning to the mayor's mansion, he quietly found the mayor and engaged in a private conversation with him. Early the next morning, Princess Catherine's team, led by Leo, left Pancher Town. As a silver holy knight, Leo was just as popular as Princess Catherine, and many young men and women in the town reluctantly saw them off at the town gate before they departed. Once the team left, Mayor Rod hurried back to his own house, donned a full set of armor, and gathered his elite subordinates. Not only that, he also spent a considerable amount of money to recruit a silver-ranked professional and three bronze-ranked professionals from the mercenary guild to accompany them. Thinking about what Chu Chen had told him last night, his heart couldn't help but race, and all his preparations seemed insufficient. Although Chu Chen told him that a few days ago he had accidentally encountered a silver-level necromancer in the Jalasin forest, there was no guarantee that the person would still be there. But if the princess were to encounter danger because of this, everything would be ruined. On the other hand, if an accident did occur and he could rescue her in time, not only would he be assigned to another town, but he might even be granted his own territory. And most importantly, his daughter was also in the forest. Even if nothing unexpected happened, the fact that he had secretly hired so many people to protect the princess, after intentional publicity, would prove his loyalty and earn him points. The only sacrifice was some gold coins, and anything that could be solved with gold coins was not a big deal. 
On the other side, Chu Chen did not sit in the luggage cart as before. During this period, he took the time to learn horsemanship. His skills were still quite rusty, but fortunately, the old horse provided by Rod was very docile. After using a level 5 basic healing spell to cure some of its hidden ailments, it became extremely cooperative with Chu Chen. In fact, the effects of a level 5 basic healing spell, when fully leveled up, were even more effective in certain aspects than a lower level intermediate healing spell. The team proceeded in an orderly manner, and along the way, Chu Chen's horsemanship improved with the cooperation of the old horse. Catherine and Anna chatted and laughed in the carriage, occasionally stopping to admire the scenery at certain landmarks. Around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the team arrived at the entrance of the Jula Forest. It would take about an hour to reach the first stop, the Half Moon Lake Villa. The team's pace slowed down, and Chu Chen stopped practicing his riding skills. Detect evil. Chu Chen directly released a divine spell. If the target of the necromancer was Princess Catherine, there was a high chance that they were observing nearby. The divine spell spread out, and in Chu Chen's mind, it was as if a radar had scanned the situation within a radius of 100 meters. Don't waste your effort. My knights have already cleared the way ahead. Leo this said disdainfully. Before the team reached the entrance, the advance team had already cleared all the monsters they encountered along the way. At this time, Catherine also opened the curtain of the luxurious carriage. After all, the Jula Forest was an area inhabited by monsters. Although they were all low-level monsters, she didn't want any accidents to affect her mood. Xu Chen pointed to a tree in the distance and said, there is a black iron-level iron-armored snake there. Then he pointed to the nearby bushes, and there is also an explosive flame rabbit here. Of course, they may not dare to attack the team because of the deterrence of the knights, but they are still monsters, so it's better to clear them. Chu Chen's calm words made Leothus's face change drastically. He glanced at the knight beside him, and the knight frowned and approached the bushes. Sure enough, a trembling explosive flame rabbit was looking at them in fear. The iron-armored snake on the tree in the distance was also startled and fled to another place with the arrows shot by the knights. In fact, this was normal. Monsters were dynamic creatures, and it was not strange for new monsters to appear after a period of time after being cleared. Even if these monsters ambush us, they will be killed immediately. There's no need to waste time on them. Leothus's face couldn't hold up, and he explained forcefully. His words just now were indeed too full, too eager to show off in front of Princess Catherine. He wanted to use Chu Chen as a stepping stone to make Catherine look highly upon him. As a silver saint knight from a commoner background, although he was often called a genius, he knew that compared to those nobles, he was just a dog that could fight. Whether in the noble circle or in the church, he was often ostracized because of his background and talent. He didn't want to be a solitary saint knight. The prosperity of the holy city had already made him lost, and his strength had not improved for a long time, which made him very anxious. In order to advance from silver to gold saint knight, besides talent, various resources and guidance from experts were also very important. In any case, he wanted to pursue Princess Catherine and become the kingdom's husband. Leo this, let Chu Chen assist you. I don't want any accidents to happen. Catherine said to Leo this with some dissatisfaction. This made Leo this resent Chu Chen even more. Why, why did a mere black iron level priest have a higher position in Catherine's heart than himself? Chu Chen didn't have a good impression of Leo this to begin with. Although it hadn't happened in reality yet, he was sure that if given the chance, Leo this would not hesitate to harm him. Chu Chen didn't mind offending him, and if possible, he wouldn't mind letting him sacrifice heroically in a battle against the necromancer. This was very difficult, and Chu Chen would have to simulate it several times to have a chance of achieving it. As the team entered the Jula Forest, the atmosphere became somewhat solemn. Chu Chen performed evil detection in suspicious areas and easily ambushed positions. Unfortunately, the necromancer was still not found. The necromancer's spells would be amplified in the high concentration of dark elements at night, so the opponent was probably afraid of Leothus's strength and wanted to wait until night to act. Everyone safely arrived at the Half Moon Lake Villa and looked at the clear and beautiful lake that resembled a mirror. Catherine couldn't help but feel in a good mood. Leo this, take your men to the forest and wait. No one is allowed to appear without my command. The grass around Half Moon Lake grows very lush, and once you enter the woods, your view will be obscured. Although it can protect Catherine's privacy, it also means that she may not be able to detect danger immediately. Princess, this doesn't seem right. What if there are monsters attacking? Chuchin, stay behind and detect the monsters. Catherine impatiently glared at Leotes. Well, all right. Along the way, Xu Chen had already proven with his own abilities that he was better at detecting monsters than the knights. With Xu Chen around, there was no reason for him to stay here. Just the thought of his future wife swimming and playing in front of others made Leotes feel uncomfortable, as if his heart was being squeezed, 
making it hard for him to breathe. After all, the princess was still a princess, and Leotis couldn't go against her reasonable request. He could only reluctantly lead the knights to guard the outskirts of the woods. However, to prevent any accidents, he left one-third of the female knights by the lake. When Catherine and Anna came out of the villa, wearing beautiful swimsuits, Chuchin had already used a boat to thoroughly investigate the nearby areas. Half Moon Lake was not very large, and a few days ago, Road had already hired mercenaries to clear it once. The monsters in the lake had been confirmed to be killed in the simulation. But in order to be loyal and responsible, Chuchin continued to meditate and release evil detection spells on the boat to ensure their safety. It's truly a deadly weapon. Chuchin admired the beautiful scenery and couldn't help but sigh. In the simulation, it was just like watching a simple movie clip with commentary. How could it compare to the real world? Chuchin couldn't help but look forward to the free simulation that required 20 points to activate. Lost in thought, Chuchin started the simulation again. They were now in the Jula Forest, and everyone had already settled down. They would leave for the next scenic spot tomorrow morning. If he couldn't simulate a relatively reliable outcome, Chuchin would have to prepare for his own safety or retreat in advance. System, start the simulation. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial ability. 1. Evil detection level plus 1, 5 points. 2. Fireball spell level plus 1, 5 points. 3. Master diving ability, 5 points. 4. Free simulation, 20 points. Shuchin still didn't have any points to exchange, but from the options, it seemed there were some differences, with an additional option for diving expertise. Catherine orders Leotis and the others to patrol in the distance and actively asks you to stay behind. Leotis looks at you with hostility. Knowing that Half Moon Lake is very safe, you, 1. Do it perfunctorily, casually explore a bit, or enjoy watching the beautiful women swim, 2. Seriously investigate, perhaps there are areas that were previously overlooked, 3. Use the excuse of needing to explore the lake bottom and go underwater to enjoy the beautiful scenery. The simulator collects a lot of information during the simulation and combines it with the extensive information Chuchin has read about the necromancer in the Jula Forest, allowing him to speculate on the options. The description in the second option caught Chuchin's attention a bit. With a major enemy at hand, he became a bit more serious. Choose the second one. You look around, expanding the detection range, no longer limited to the area where Catherine is on the shore. Seeing that you are actually far away from the two beautiful women, Catherine's favorability towards you increases, but she starts to suspect your sexual orientation. Unfortunately, even until Catherine and Anna come ashore, you still haven't found anything suspicious. You choose. 1. Dive into the lake to continue investigating, perhaps the answer is at the bottom of the lake. 2. Go ashore together and explore the surroundings starting from Half Moon Lake. 3. Give up the investigation, rest well to prepare for the night battle. Chuchin's detection relied on evil detection spells, but some things might not be evil. He chose to dive into the lake to continue investigating. The system, now at level 2, seemed more user-friendly. The system will remind itself again, it is likely that it has discovered something but cannot directly tell itself, and there are also diving specialties in the initial options. You want to dive to the bottom of the lake to investigate the situation, but by this time it has already become dark, so you return without success, late at night, you, who have already rested well, Come outside to check the situation according to the time point in your memory. Suddenly, there is a noise of battle coming from a distance, that is the direction the team came from, and the knights also noticed the sound. You speculate that it is possible that Rhodes' reinforcements encountered the undead legion in advance, and you decide. 1. Tell Catherine the truth and mobilize a large number of knights to cooperate with Rhodes in killing the necromancer. 2. Don't tell Catherine, persuade Leo to lead a small number of knights to investigate. 3. Go alone to investigate which may be very dangerous, the undead legion will definitely advance towards this site only after summoning enough numbers in advance, and Rode has been following everyone from a distance, so it is normal to encounter the undead legion in advance. It's just that I didn't expect that the necromancer would still choose to attack when encountering a new strong enemy. Xu Chen's primary goal in this simulation is to find a safe solution to the crisis, and the option to kill Leo is secondary. Leo has a deep hatred for himself, and the second option may not be successful. Xu Chen has had the experience of option failure before, so this time he chose the safer first option to see how powerful the undead legion really is. You wake up Catherine, who is sleeping with Anna, and briefly inform her of the general situation. Catherine is dissatisfied that you and Rode did not inform her in advance about the necromancer, but now is not the time to investigate responsibility. Under Anna's plea, Catherine allows Leo to lead half of the knights to hunt down the necromancer, with the strength of the silver paladin, Leo, together with Rode. 
surrounds and disperses the undead legion, which has not yet reached a large scale, and finds the necromancer, Leo still loses his hand, but with the help of Rode and others, he successfully captures the necromancer, Catherine has a change of heart towards Leo and orders you to help Leo reattach his severed arm, and then interrogate the necromancer, it turns out that this is all a misunderstanding. The necromancer's target is not to kill the princess, but to think that the princess wants to destroy the treasure he has long been eyeing at the bottom of the lake, the treasure at the bottom of the lake is a holy sword that has a great restraining effect on monsters. The holy sword is inserted into an ancient stone slab, and only those recognized can pull it out. The necromancer originally planned to dig up the lake bottom stone slab together with the holy sword and offer the holy sword to the demon king in the future in exchange for power. The demon king may not be able to use the holy sword, but destroying it can reduce the losses for the demon clan in the future. Unfortunately, a few days ago, his plan was interrupted by the mercenaries sent by Rode to exterminate the lake monsters. When he saw the princess's team, he thought that the secret of the holy sword had been discovered, so he launched an attack, after confirming the authenticity of each other's information, the team dispatched knights overnight to transport the stone slab and an ordinary looking holy sword ashore, the stone slab and the holy sword are covered by underwater grass, and it is difficult to find them without the necromancer pointing out the location, Catherine takes the lead in trying to pull out the sword, but she is not recognized by the holy sword, and you are somewhat tempted. 1. Ask Catherine to let you try as well. 2. Wait for others to try first before trying. 3. Observe the information on the stone slab, perhaps some useful intelligence can be found. Chuchin doesn't think that as a transmigrator, he will be recognized by the local holy sword. If he wants to try, he is not in a hurry. While everyone took turns trying to pull out the sword, you observe the information on the slate. It was engraved with mysterious characters that you didn't recognize. You asked the knowledgeable Anna to study it together. Anna's expression gradually turned grim. The characters on the slate seemed to be the language of the demon race. Although they couldn't be deciphered, it was clear that the sword was very dangerous. She was about to stop everyone from pulling out the sword, but a knight successfully pulled out the holy sword. The knight's power skyrocketed, breaking through from the bronze level to the gold level in a short period of time. He looked astonished, then a wicked smile appeared on his face. He killed everyone except Catherine and Anna, then left with the necromancer. Simulation ends the situation is somewhat bad from the outcome, but you obtained a lot of information and know what to do next. Overall score, 22 points obtained 22 simulation experience points, obtained 22 plus 2 simulation points please select the rewards you want to exchange for in the real world one. Evil detection level plus 1, 5 points 2. Fireball spell level plus 1, 5 points 3. Master Diving Ability, 5 points Chu Chen first exchanged for the Diving Expertise. Expertise is different from skills and cannot be upgraded, similar to his previous Goblin Language proficiency. After the exchange, it is at its maximum level. He then exchanged the remaining points twice for upgrades in Evil Detection skill, leaving him with 9 points. The reason he didn't exchange for an upgrade in Fireball Spell was that, on one hand, Fireball Spell was not very significant against the Undead Army, and on the other hand, he wanted to see the options for the next simulation first. If there were no good choices, he could still exchange for the fireball spell later. You have mastered the evil detection skill and gained the attribute bonus spirit plus one as expected, with the skill at its maximum level, Chu Chen's attribute points increased by one again. Now that he had the diving expertise, he could enter the lake early and store the magic sword in his personal space. Although the personal space was absolutely safe and wouldn't be discovered, if everyone believed the necromancer's words, they might suspect him the only one who had entered the water, of hiding the holy sword in another location in the lake. This would bring unnecessary trouble. Chu Chen started the simulation again, and this time there was a new change in the initial options. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial ability 1. Fireball spell level plus 1, 5 points 2. Fluent in demon language, 5 points 3. Self level plus 1, 10 points 4. Free simulation, 20 points demon language is different from the previous monster language. Demons usually refer to the intelligent races in the demon realm, while monsters are the beasts they control. As the demon realm invaded the divine and demon continent time and time again, the monsters gradually took root and multiplied. The monsters on the continent would still be restless under the influence of the demon realm's aura and would be driven by stronger demons. System, exchange for demon language. Exchange successful, points dash 5 actually, it wasn't cost effective to exchange before the simulation, as another exchange would be needed after the simulation to truly obtain the reward. However, being fluent in demon language could potentially increase the final score of the simulation by more than 5 points, so it made sense to exchange in advance. 
Anna only knew that the characters on the slate were in demon language but didn't understand what was written on it. Xu Chen wanted to know the content in advance. Start simulation Catherine orders Leo and the others to patrol in the distance and voluntarily asks you to stay behind. Leo looks at you with hostility in his eyes. You know the secret at the bottom of Half Moon Lake. You choose. 1. Dive to the bottom of the lake, check the content on the slate, and take the magic sword too. Dive to the bottom of the lake, find the slate, hand it over to Catherine, and tell her it's a magic sword 3. Pretend not to know, wait until the necromancer is captured, and naturally decipher the content on the slate Chu Chen was not satisfied with the result of the previous simulation. Although this time the simulation retained the memories from the previous one, Chu Chen still planned to take the magic sword first to see what would happen. After obtaining Catherine's permission, you jumped into the lake to explore. According to your memory, you found the stone tablet and the magic sword. You, who are proficient in the language of the demon race, deciphered the contents on the stone tablet. The magic sword is named Klein. During the third invasion of the demon realm, there was a powerful goddess named Klein in the human world. Due to her outstanding abilities, she was framed and ultimately subjected to multiple humiliations, being reduced to a human stick and imprisoned in a prison for a long time. After this experience, she became extremely twisted and fell into darkness. Klein's powerful obsession before her death caught the attention of the seven sins which, Tiffif, she infused Klein's twisted soul into the sword, and thus the magic sword Klein was born. The seventh invasion of the demon realm ended in failure, and the magic sword Klein, who had not yet completed its revenge, did not want to follow Tiffif back. Tiffif also hoped that Klein would complete the revenge to enhance the power of the magic sword, so she left it behind. Klein's revenge failed, and due to Tiffif's power, the magic sword was difficult to destroy. The great sage sealed it in the celestial stone tablet and buried it at the bottom of the lake. By pulling out the magic sword, one can obtain great power. Sacrificing the magic sword to the witch Tiffif will receive the witch's blessing. The energy leaked from the magic sword cannot be engraved on the celestial stone tablet. These pieces of information are adhered to the stone tablet after the impurities in the lake water condense. The reason for using the language of the demon race is mainly because the kingdom where she originally belonged has been destroyed, and there was no common writing and language on the continent at that time. Compared to the writing of a destroyed kingdom, the language of the demon race is easier to be deciphered by people. After understanding the origin of the magic sword, Chuchin couldn't help but feel a little emotional. The third invasion of the demon realm was already a thousand years ago. The witch Tifif should have also come to the divine demon continent during the subsequent invasions of the demon realm but she still did not find the magic sword. Or perhaps, this magic sword is not that important to the witch? You collected the magic sword along with the stone tablet and then returned to the ship pretending nothing had happened. At night, Rod's elite team was attacked by a necromancer. You decide. 1. Tell Catherine that Rod, who secretly protects her, was attacked and ask the knights to go out and cooperate with Rod to kill the necromancer. 2. Don't tell Catherine, persuade Leo to lead a small number of knights to investigate. Three. Try to pull out the magic sword in the room to see what happens. The options are different. In the first option, you don't tell Catherine the whole truth like in the previous simulation, but only tell her half of it. This way, you can avoid being questioned by Catherine afterwards, but it will also make her underestimate the situation. In the previous simulation, Xu Chen didn't have a chance to draw the sword, but now he can try. However, considering that his goal in this simulation is to kill both Leo and the necromancer at the same time, he chose the second option. You found Leo, and his subordinates have already reported the abnormal sound in the distance. You took the opportunity to tell Leo that there is a necromantic aura over there. At this time, Catherine may have already fallen asleep, so you persuade Leo to go and check it out himself. Leo did not accept your suggestion and stayed in the camp to protect the princess, only sending a small team of knights to investigate. The knight team has not returned for a long time, and the distance gradually becomes quiet. Then a large group of undead creatures surrounded the camp, including the night team and Rod. If you cannot find the necromancer hidden in the darkness, you will face endless attacks. Leo proposed to break through and escort the princess back to the town of Pancher, but you objected. Currently, the forest is shrouded in heavy fog, and leaving rashly would play into the enemy's hands. Catherine listened to your advice and refused to leave. In order to find the necromancer's location, she asked Leo to protect you and let you get close to the enemy to release the evil detection skill. You decide. 1. Follow the order and go with Leo to find the necromancer. 2. Refuse the order and inform Catherine about the matter of the magic sword. Pretend to comply and then hand over the magic sword to the necromancer, cooperating with him to kill Leotes and others. Chu Chen prepared two scrolls for this battle. 
In the previous simulation, Catherine and the holder of the magic sword displayed many powerful scrolls. Defeating the necromancer is not difficult, but killing Leotes is what Chu Chen wants to do. You obey Catherine's order and rush towards the undead army with Leotes. Your high-level reconnaissance quickly locates the necromancer's position. Instead of attacking Leotes immediately, you first deplete his strength and inform him when he wants to retreat. Leotes abandons you again and rushes towards the necromancer on his own. You activate the resistance fire ring to repel nearby undead creatures, then quickly escape to the camp. The undead are controlled by the necromancer, with their main target being Leotes, but you still fail to rush back to the camp in time. You activate the earth prison to protect yourself. Catherine, who is far away, throws a scroll of fire rain to help you. You successfully return to the relatively safe camp. Leotes fights fiercely with the necromancer and manages to kill him after using all his divine power, but he also loses his left leg and third leg in the battle. This necromancer's death cut skill is truly terrifying. Leotes' shield is completely unable to withstand it. Chu Chen carefully watches the battle this time and is somewhat intrigued by this skill. Catherine asks you to help reattach Leotes' two legs, but the wounds have already been corrupted by dark energy. You cut off the corrupted flesh and bone and manage to reattach his shortened left leg, but you express your inability to do anything about the third leg. Leotes, with a limp, believes that you are intentionally retaliating against him. He hates you to the core and will definitely kill you given any chance. Mayor Rhodes' death deeply saddens Anna, and Leotes is eager to return to the holy city to seek treatment from the archbishop. Princess Catherine's vacation ends prematurely. You travel through the night and safely return to the town of Pancher. Princess Catherine's team returns early the next morning. Before leaving, Princess Catherine wants to take the grieving Anna with her, but Anna insists on staying to hold a funeral for her father. Princess Catherine appoints Anna as the new mayor of Pancher. After the funeral, as a friend, you console the grieving Anna. Now is the weakest moment for Anna, and you decide. 1. Take advantage of the opportunity to confess to Anna and completely possess her before studying the magic sword together. 2. Ignore her and find a place to try to pull out the magic sword. 3. Tell Anna about the matter of the magic sword and study it together with her. Shuchin failed to kill Leotis completely, and now he wants to know the secret of the magic sword and whether he can pull it out without being affected. Anna is well read, so it's better to find a helper than to study alone. When Anna was sad and helpless, you expressed your admiration to her, and Anna couldn't help but embrace you and cry. That night, she gave herself to you. The next day, you told her about the magic sword, and Anna was somewhat displeased with your act of stealing the sword, but as she was already your woman, she quickly forgave you. In the following days, Anna found relevant records in an ancient book, and you gained a new understanding of the powerful force of the magic sword. Anna persuaded you to surrender the sword to the Holy Light Church, but you refused her advice as you wanted to obtain the power and secretly tried to draw the sword to become its owner. The magic sword doesn't have high requirements for its owner, but it will choose a suitable candidate when there are enough candidates and actively reject being drawn out. Now there is only one candidate, and it has no other choice. Your consciousness enters the internal space of the magic sword, and a beautiful goddess wearing a black priest robe appears before you. Her enemies have died in the passage of a thousand years, and her master has long abandoned her. She cannot devour the soul of the sword bearer, but she can indirectly influence the emotions of the bearer, inducing and triggering their evil thoughts. The knight from before was induced by his evil thoughts, coveting the two beauties, Princess Catherine and Anna, and being jealous of Leotes, which led him to go on a killing spree and abduct the two women. The magic sword is extremely dangerous, and Chu Chin doesn't believe he can resist its erosion, but that doesn't stop him from possessing it. He would never dare to use the magic sword in the real world, but he can use it recklessly in the simulator, which can have unexpected effects. If I can figure out Klein's details during the simulation, maybe I can also use her power in the real world. Klein tempts you to become her new owner, and you choose. 1. Accept the request, warn her not to affect your emotions, otherwise, throw the sword into the deep sea. 2. Refuse the request and surrender the magic sword to the Holy Light Church. 3. Ask how to sacrifice and offer the magic sword to Klein's master, the Witch Tizif. In this world, there are ten levels of hierarchy, and the Witch Tizif, one of the seven sins witches, is a powerful existence in the demon world who has reached the eighth level, which is rare. It should be noted that those terrifying demon kings with various titles are only at the seventh level of power. Most demon kings are just subordinates of the seven sins witches, serving as pawns during the invasion of the demon world and as advanced cannon fodder against the gods of the heavenly realm. Shu Chen is very interested in the top power of this world, so this time he chooses the third option. Under the guidance of the magic sword, you secretly set up an altar and bring Anna, who is subdued, to the altar. 
Ignoring Anna's pleas and grief on the altar, you use the magic sword to sacrifice Anna, turning her into a human stick to complete the sacrifice. However, the magic sword deceived you. It couldn't open the passage to the demon world at all. It just wanted Anna to become a more suitable owner for itself. Desperate Anna touches the magic sword at the center of the altar and becomes the true owner of the magic sword, awakening astonishing power. Anna regains her strength with the power of the magic sword. She doesn't kill you but keeps you imprisoned in a dungeon, feeding you like a dog. You try to deceive Anna with sweet words, but you can't deceive Klein. After an unknown period of time, Anna dies in battle, and you are saved. By then, you have already gone mad. You are executed as a heretic, and you die. The simulation ends. You lived for a long time this time, but sometimes life is worse than death. You still can't control the power of the magic sword. Overall score, 34 points. You gain 34 experience points and 34 plus 2 simulation points. Please choose the reward you want to exchange for in the real world. 1. Fireball spell level plus 1, 5 points. 2. Proficiency in the language of the demons, 5 points. 3. Self level plus 1, 10 points. There is not much change in the rewards, and Chu Chen exchanges all the available rewards, leaving 5 points of simulation points. Congratulations on reaching level 5 and gaining 2 free attribute points. Congratulations on mastering the demon language. Congratulations on leveling up your fireball spell to level 3. Both attribute points are added to your spirit, which allows your spiritual power to break through to 10 points. Unfortunately, the enemies you are encountering now are all strong, and even though your true strength is not inferior to that of a newly entered bronze level professional, you cannot exert much influence. After two consecutive simulations, Chu Chen returned to the real world as if he had traveled through time. Looking at the two women playing in the lake, he decided to take the demon sword first. However, he did not want Road to die, as Anna would be too pitiful. After all, she used to be his virtual girlfriend. Chu Chen's approach made Catherine stop playing and she asked with a hint of dissatisfaction, What's the matter? Chu Chen shook his head and said, Princess, I have already investigated the area nearby and there is no danger. I want to explore a little further away. The water there is deeper, and there may be some demons hiding underneath. I may need to go underwater, so I wanted to ask for your opinion. Catherine waved her hand and said, Do as you please, just don't disturb me and Anna. Chu Chen rode towards the distance and arrived at the location of the demon sword. He then dived into the water and quickly stored the stone slab and the demon sword at the bottom of the lake in his personal space. The whole process from entering the water to returning to the surface took only a few minutes. Even if the subsequent necromancer did not die and confessed, Chu Chen would not be too suspicious. The sun gradually set, and Catherine and Anna enjoyed the delicious food prepared by the royal chef on the shore. At night, before the conflict between Rode and the necromancer, Chu Chen left his room early. He released the detection of evil at the entrance of the camp and pretended to be in a hurry as he approached Catherine. Chu Chen was stopped by the knights of the guard, but he didn't bother to explain and shouted, Princess, something big is happening, hurry up. Catherine, who was in the villa preparing to push Anna down tonight, was furious. But she knew that Chu Chen was a sensible person, so there must be a reason for his shout. Catherine went outside. What's wrong? What happened? Chu Chen quickly told Catherine about his discovery. Princess, I just detected the presence of undead creatures, and the forest has started to fog up. These mists contain a trace of dark elements, and I suspect that the demon clan may attack and kidnap you tonight. This world is filled with attributeless ether particles. Under normal circumstances, even at night, these ether particles do not appear in the form of dark elements. The idea that the concentration of dark elements is higher at night is a misconception of non-professionals. The professional explanation is that the nighttime environment makes it easier for ether particles to transform into dark elements. The presence of a trace of dark elements in the mist indicates that someone is casting related spells. Catherine herself is a bronze-level fire attribute mage. She closed her eyes and carefully sensed the magic elements around her. Sure enough, there were dark elements in the mist, although they were scarce, they could still be found. These dark elements are so scarce now that they can't be found without careful searching. How did you discover them? Catherine was somewhat puzzled. The other party's priest badge was a black iron badge. Unless the priest had nothing to do and search like using a magnifying glass to observe bacteria, it would be difficult to detect dark elements under the current conditions of the mist. Your Highness, I am a priest, and I am more sensitive to dark elements. This explanation was relatively reasonable, and Catherine couldn't help but glance at Leotes, who had rushed over here with a confused look after hearing Chu Chen's shout. He seemed to have no idea what was going on. This spell is called Death Mist and it is a silver level spell. In the area where the Death Mist spreads, even if there are only corpses or skeletons, 
they will be resurrected as undead creatures. Chu Chen pointed to the distance, the concentration is highest over there, so the evil necromancer must be nearby. At that moment, the sound of battle could be heard from afar. In the quiet night, it was easy to hear unless one was in a soundproof villa. Chu Chen spoke again, did the patrolling knights run into trouble? Leotes, here, lead 50 knights to investigate personally, and the remaining knights should prepare for battle. Yes, sir. The soldiers and mercenaries of Mayor Rod were severely injured by the necromancer and were on the verge of being killed when Leotes finally arrived. Although both were at the white eye level, the silver mercenaries were no match for the necromancer, while Leotes, who mastered the holy light combat technique, had the power to fight. The necromancer didn't want to fight to the death, so it chose to retreat. Seeing this, Leotes thought the necromancer was afraid of him, which only fueled his determination. If he could kill a silver level necromancer here, not only would his position in the church be elevated, but Princess Catherine would also look at him with admiration. Although more undead creatures emerged from the ground at this time, he didn't care about these small fry at all. He continued to chase after the necromancer with his fellow knights. As long as the necromancer was killed, these small fry would naturally disappear. Mayor Rod and the others were injured and dared not keep up. They used their last bit of strength to escape towards the camp. Father, how did you end up here? Anna hurriedly ran over when she saw her injured father. Mayor Rod had already coordinated his testimony with Chu Chen and smiled bitterly, saying, I received news not long ago that someone discovered a suspected necromancer setting up a magic array in the Jula Forest. I was worried about the safety of Princess Catherine, so I brought the stronger professionals and trusted aides from the town and rushed here in advance at full speed. I didn't expect that something would really happen. Mayor Rod coughed up a mouthful of blood while clutching the bone spur in his abdomen. Chu Chen quickly approached and pulled out the bone spur, then used healing magic to treat Mayor Rod and the injured mercenaries. He then pretended to look exhausted. Under the influence of the mist, more undead creatures gradually appeared on the ground, but fortunately, the people had already noticed in advance, and the defensive formation of the knights made it difficult for the enemy to advance. Catherine also timely activated a magic scroll, clearing out a large area of undead creatures that had gathered together. After about five minutes, all the undead creatures suddenly dispersed and disappeared. Great, Lord Leotes must have killed the necromancer. The knights breathed a sigh of relief. Chu Chin didn't want to treat Leotes, so when the battle ended, he enthusiastically went forward to treat everyone without sparing his mental energy. Seeing Chu Chin almost fainting due to mental exhaustion, everyone was moved. After another five minutes, more than a dozen knights who had followed Leotes in the charge returned, carrying the exhausted Leotes. The battle was extremely fierce, with only a dozen people returning out of the fifty. Leotes, just like last time, had his left leg, including his horse, cut off by the death-severing necromancer. Treat him. Hurry and treat Lord Leotes. Everyone looked at Chu Chun, who was meditating at the moment. Chu Chun slowly opened his eyes and said somewhat awkwardly, Can you wait for me for another ten minutes? Death-severing was a dark magic spell with a strong corrosive effect. In ten minutes, Leotes would probably die. Among the princess's guards, only Leotes knew healing magic. But now, he was unconscious due to exhaustion of his divine power, and without Chu Chen, the official priest, to treat him, everyone could only use healing scrolls. Three scrolls were used in a row, but the wounds showed no signs of improvement. However, it did wake Leotes up. Cut off the wounds, cut off the corroded parts, and then treat them, you fools. Everyone panicked, and in the time wasted, the corrosion had penetrated several centimeters into the bone marrow. Leotes, who originally had long legs, forcibly cut off 10 centimeters of his left leg and barely reattached it. Such a serious disability can only be completely restored by finding the Archbishop of the Holy City, and it will also take some time to recuperate. However, what's even worse is that his third leg has been completely corroded, and even the Archbishop is powerless in the overall absence. In this situation, perhaps only the gods can redeem him. Leo's vision went black, and his future, his dreams, were all destroyed overnight. He would never be able to marry the princess, advance to become a golden saint knight, or seek the archbishop's help in healing. He would have to pay an unbearable price for all of that. His future would be completely controlled by the archbishop, and his ambitions and plans would be shattered. This time, he didn't resent Chu Chen as he did before. He knew it was because he had been too reckless and eager for achievements. He had multiple opportunities to give up chasing and ran. Catherine walked over, looking at the despondent Leo with some compassion. Even though she didn't like Leo, he had been injured because of her. Leo, you were injured because of me after all. I will ask the king to request the archbishop to treat your left leg. As for that worm. With the invasion of the demon realm imminent, if the future goddess chooses a candidate saint from the holy city, as long as you are devout enough, 
there may still be a chance for recovery. Catherine's words brought a glimmer of hope to Leo's eyes. The Holy Light Church is spread throughout the continent, and there are candidate saints in every country. How could the Lady Saint choose someone like me and treat that kind of place? Leo appeared somewhat humble at this moment. Catherine raised an eyebrow and said softly, since the identity of the candidate saint has already been known by the demons, there's no harm in telling you. Her name is Barbara, and she is from the same church as you. You should know her, right? Upon hearing Barbara's name, Leo couldn't help but be shocked. His eyes revealed a hint of panic, followed by ecstasy. Leo had long forgotten the promise he made with Barbara when he left the town, but now that he heard news about her, he finally remembered. What? Is this true? Barbara has become a candidate saint? Catherine nodded, originally, we planned to secretly send her back to the holy city to keep her identity confidential, but it seems that the information has leaked, and she was attacked on the way. Fortunately, there was a mysterious person who helped her, and now she is being escorted by a large army, so she shouldn't be attacked again. Speaking up to this point, Catherine couldn't help but glance at Chu Chen. In fact, she had seen Barbara in Kara City and learned about Chu Chen from her. At first, she didn't pay much attention, but after this incident, Catherine became even more curious about Chu Chen. Although Barbara may not be chosen as the saint, and even if she becomes the saint, she may not have the ability or willingness to treat the root cause of the disaster, it still gave Leo hope. Moreover, judging from the princess's attitude, it seemed that she also intended to win over herself, a rural knight without a background, in the church. Leo's mood suddenly improved, but as he looked at the beautiful Catherine, his sense of loss twisted him once again. Just as Chu Chin was Anna's dream lover in her eyes, Catherine was the woman he wanted to possess no matter what in Leo's eyes. The group cleaned up the battlefield and prepared to return. Chu Chen, on the other hand, meditated while happily looking at the information about the demonic sword. After storing the demonic sword in his personal space, more information was discovered by the system. Demonic Sword Klein, Rank, 7th Rank Star Radiance Effect, 1. Can gain up to plus 15 to all attributes, enhancement. 2. Hitting the target can inflict equal damage to all four limbs, and when the injury is severe, it can cause the target to disintegrate. Explanation, 1. The main body of the demonic sword has reached the seventh rank, but currently, it lacks energy and can only exert fourth rank power. 2. Absorbing demonic cores can replenish the energy inside the demonic sword, and using the demonic sword will consume energy. 3. When the spiritual power reaches 50 points, it can temporarily control the demonic sword's current strength without being affected. Chu Chen's spiritual power is improving rapidly, and with a few more months of effort, he will be able to temporarily use the power of this magic sword. Only at the 7th level? If she had completed her revenge, she might have been able to reach the 8th level. In that case, the witch might have had a harder time retrieving it. The effect of this sword is very good, once it hits the opponent, its destructive power is equivalent to 4 times more. The increase of all attributes by 15 points was the reason for the increase in the strength of the knight and Anna. The specific degree of amplification is probably related to the cooperation between the sword's owner and Klein. With this weapon, Xu Chen will have more choices in the simulated world, and perhaps he can also save his own life in the real world when encountering danger. While pondering, the guards have already cleaned up the scene, mainly the bodies of their companions. Everyone hurried back to Panshir town before the sun rose. This time, Xu Chen made some adjustments to the details based on the simulation. Mayor Luo de survived, although Leo Tiz is still just a crippled eunuch, it is not easy to safely kill him. In several consecutive simulations, the necromancer was killed by Leo Tiz. In addition to the scrolls on the members of the Knight Order and Princess Catherine, the necromancer was at a great disadvantage from the beginning, destined to fail. After returning to Panshir town, Princess Catherine rested for a morning and planned to leave. They were unable to capture the necromancer alive, so they couldn't interrogate his true intentions and thought they were being targeted by the demons. Before leaving, Luo de requested a transfer from Princess Catherine. Princess Catherine is just a princess, and this matter requires an order from her father, the king. Considering his merits in protecting the king, as well as his good relationship with Anna, she didn't want her friend and father to die tragically in the future invasion of the demon realm. All right, I will take Anna back to the holy city first. By then, the king should agree to your transfer. And Anna has good talent for magic, she should receive better education in the holy city. I can have my teacher teach her as well. Princess Catherine said with a smile. Chu Chen noticed that Anna looked a bit uneasy. After multiple simulations, he understood that although Anna had a good relationship with Princess Catherine, it was not a romantic one. Last night, Princess Catherine missed the opportunity to attack, which allowed Anna to escape unharmed. 
but if she followed Princess Catherine back to the holy city, she would have nowhere to escape. Hearing Princess Catherine's words, Luo de couldn't help but be overjoyed. Anna, you should thank Her Royal Highness the Princess. Anna knew that Princess Catherine was not as simple and kind as she appeared. If she refused, not only would her father's transfer be impossible, but she might also face malicious punishment. Last night in the villa, the other party had forced her with a hint of threat. Anna felt helpless and looked to Chu Chun for help. In their previous conversations, she had told Chu Chen that she also wanted to join the church and become a priest. Chu Chen's simulation count had been restored to 4 out of 6 after last night's replenishment. After thinking for a moment, he activated the simulation. Simulation is about to begin, please choose your initial ability, 1. Holy Light Church Apprentice Priest Badge, signed by Anna, 1.2. Monster Taming Technique, 10 points, 3. Self Level Plus 1, 10 points, 4. Free Simulation, 20 points, Chu Chen still had 5 points, and after thinking for a moment, he exchanged for an Apprentice Priest Badge signed by Anna, and then started the simulation. Anna likes you, a handsome man, not Catherine. She doesn't want her life to be controlled by the other party. Faced with Anna's plea for help, what do you choose? 1. Be indifferent, it's better not to offend Princess Catherine. 2. Help Anna, tell Princess Catherine that she is already an apprentice priest of the church. 3. Congratulate Anna and wish her good luck and happiness. Chu Chen had previously exchanged for an official priest badge from the Holy Light Church, and the badge was genuine, even the Archbishop of the Holy City could not question its authenticity. His current forged identity is a free priest of the Holy Light Church of the Caste Empire, and the divine arts of the Holy Light Church prove that no one will doubt his identity. The Caste Empire is far away from the New Moon Kingdom, so there should be no one idle enough to investigate his true identity. You tell Catherine that Anna has been granted the position of an apprentice priest and personally awarded the medal to her, Catherine is somewhat surprised, she doesn't think you are deceiving her, although she is somewhat dissatisfied, she can only accept it, Catherine proposes again, wanting Anna to go to the Holy City Church to study doctrine, Anna says she is Chu Chen's disciple and needs to follow his arrangements, Catherine realizes that Anna is rejecting her, she says the current situation is unstable, it may not be easy to transfer, you choose, 1. Let Anna stay by your side, travel around with you to experience the suffering of the world and understand the doctrine of the Holy Light, 2. Let Anna follow Catherine to the Holy City, receive more systematic and formal teachings, 3. Tell Catherine that you will take Anna to the Holy City in a few days, let her go first, Chu Chen has not exchanged for the doctrine of the Holy Light, choosing to let Anna follow can get rid of Catherine, but she cannot become a priest. Catherine reluctantly accepts this result, you delay Anna for some time, but Anna knows that she cannot help her father relocate unless she compromises, after Catherine leaves for a few days, Anna learns that there has been a group attack by monsters on the border. She decides to go to the Holy City, you travel with Anna and safely arrive in the city of Kara under the escort of soldiers from Panchur Town, the soldiers from Panchur Town return to the town, and you and Anna hire mercenaries to continue to the next city, on the way, you encounter an attack by bandits. The mercenaries successfully kill the bandits, but they assassinate you after the battle ends, and you don't even have time to draw your magic sword, the mercenaries take away all your belongings, and Anna is taken to a secluded place, tortured, and killed, a few days later. The mercenaries report the mission failure to the mercenary guild under the pretext of a bandit attack, and then leave the new moon kingdom. Simulation ends, the innocent suffer for the guilty, you should be more. Cautious when hiring mercenaries, Chu Chen silently remembers the name of that mercenary team, he must avoid them when hiring, and if there is a chance, he will eliminate them. Overall score, 15 points, obtained 15 simulation experience points, obtained 15 plus 2 simulation points, please select the rewards to be exchanged into the real world, the rewards for exchange are the same as the initial options. After exchanging for a medal, Chu Chen also casually exchanged for the skill of taming monsters. Points minus 11, congratulations, you have acquired the skilled monster taming LV1 slash 6, he didn't rush to exchange the remaining 10 points. He would exchange them according to the situation when in danger. The knowledge of monster taming entered his mind. This skill allows Chu Chen to tame some monsters as pets. Although it seems inappropriate for a priest to tame monsters as pets, Many monsters on the continent of gods and demons have already been tamed by humans, and these monsters are influenced by the demonic aura to a very low degree. Chu Chen's plan is to tame a land dragon or a chocobo as a means of transportation. Ordinary horses are useless when encountering monsters. Many horses were frightened and ran wild when surrounded by the undead army before. Chu Chen returns to reality, and this world is more dangerous than he imagined. Faced with Anna's plea again, Chu Chen plans to go to the holy city with Catherine this time. It is possible to encounter monster attacks at any time if he continues to stay in Pancher Town, 
and even if the holy city faces a real invasion from the demon realm, it should be able to hold on for a while. Previously, he wanted to wait until the bronze level before leaving because he was worried about safety on the road, but it would be better to travel with Catherine. After arriving in the holy city, he plans to find a place to continue leveling and skill training using the simulator. He will not leave the city until he reaches the silver level. Princess, in fact, Anna has already devoted herself to the embrace of the goddess. Originally, I had planned to make a grand gesture and award her the medal in the church. She is already an apprentice priest of the Holy Light Church, Chuchin said as he took out the newly exchanged medal and handed it to Anna. Anna received the medal somewhat bewilderedly, surprised to find her name engraved on it. She didn't understand why Chu Chen would have this medal for her. Although she had mentioned wanting to become a priest like him, it was just talk. Catherine's face showed a hint of surprise, but just like Anna's confusion, Catherine could never have imagined that Chu Chen had a way to instantly produce a medal specifically for Anna. It's alright, priests also have a lot of room for growth, as long as you don't become a saint, Catherine continued, since you have become an apprentice priest, come with me to the holy city. When we get to the holy city, I will help you find a powerful bishop to guide your training. Anna was a smart person and had some understanding of the church. She looked at Chu Chen and said, I'm sorry, your highness, but I am now Chu Chen's student. As an apprentice priest, I cannot change my master at will. The most important thing for a priest is to be devout to the gods. If one can change teachers at will, then they might change their beliefs just as easily, which is a taboo within the church. Of course, if one becomes a formal priest, they can choose a bishop as their new teacher in order to further enhance their strength. However, to change teachers, one needs the permission of a high-ranking archbishop. Catherine heard Anna refuse her again and felt a bit dissatisfied. She vaguely guessed that the other party wanted to resist her. The invasion of the demon realm is imminent, and as one of the frontline towns, many people are probably unwilling to stay here. It's also very unsafe here, Catherine said. You should come with me to the holy city, it's for your own good. While speaking, Catherine looked at Rode. Rode's face immediately showed a bitter expression, and he looked at Chu Chun with some blame. Chu Chun smiled and said, Actually, I happen to have something to do in the holy city as well. I don't know if your highness would allow me to accompany Anna. Of course, no problem. Catherine suddenly became happy, and her gaze towards Chu Chen became much kinder. Anna, go pack up, we'll leave soon. Yes, your highness. After Catherine left, Anna separated her father Road and Chu Chen to have a private conversation. Chu Chen. Oh no, I mean, teacher, how did you get this medal? Anna didn't doubt Chu Chen's claim that he had business in the holy city. Although she didn't want to, she could only go to the holy city with him. But with Chu Chen accompanying her, she would be much safer and wouldn't have to worry about being eaten by Catherine along the way. I took you as my disciple, it's the will of the goddess, Chu Chen said. Since you have accepted, you must obey my commands from now on. Priests in the divine and demon continent dare not use the name of the goddess lightly, and Anna wholeheartedly believed Chu Chen's words. Hee hee, that's great. Anna felt secretly delighted and was extremely grateful to the goddess. By the way, Anna, I want to buy a means of transportation. Do you know where I can buy a mount in Pancher Town? It's best to be a demonic mount, one with some combat power, Chu Chen said. I know, as an adventurer town, Pancher Town has a very good merchant. I'll take you there. Teacher Anna seemed to really like this title and playfully called him that again. Chu Chen also found it pleasant to hear. Anna had her maid prepare their luggage and then came with Chu Chen to the mount merchant. Anna usually kept a low profile, but as a prominent merchant in Pancher Town, the shop owner immediately recognized her identity. Miss Anna, may I ask what you need me to assist you with? The owner personally came forward to greet them, with a very friendly attitude. This is my teacher, he wants to buy a mount, Anna introduced Chu Chen to the owner. Ah, Miss Anna, you have also embraced the embrace of the goddess. It's truly a joyous occasion. The boss, who is also a follower of the goddess, continued, respected priest, what type of mount do you need? I need one with endurance and some combat ability, Chu Chen stated his requirements. The boss nodded and said, naturally, the earth dragon is the most suitable, but they have big appetites and are a bit slow. Personally, I recommend the chocobo and the unicorn. If you don't mind, I can take you to the stable to personally choose. Thank you. The boss led them to the stable where the mounts were kept. Along the way, Chu Chen saw many mounts, including two giraffes. These are imported breeds with long necks that provide excellent visibility, allowing you to spot monsters and enemies in advance. Although there are currently only two in the breeding process, we can sell them to you if you're interested. No, thank you. Chu Chen politely declined. Although these mounts could detect enemies in advance, they were also easily noticeable. Such unique mounts would attract attention wherever they went, which didn't align with Chu Chen's low-key and sophisticated character. 
Shu Chen arrived at the Earth Dragon Stable, but the strong smell made him immediately give up on the idea of using it as a mount. Please don't mind, Reverend. We can cover the smell with some special perfume. I can give you a six-month supply for free. If it's only for pulling a cart, the smell will be barely noticeable after spraying. Chu Chen looked at all the mounts and finally chose a very clean red chocobo. Chocobos are omnivorous monsters that, in case of food shortage, can lay eggs for their owners to eat, which are said to taste very good. Reverend has a good eye. This chocobo comes from the Crimson Desert. Although it currently has only the strength of an iron rank, according to the tests, there are signs of a condensed magic core in its head. There is a chance for a bronze rank monster to have a magic core in its head. Monsters with magic cores are usually much stronger than those of the same rank without one, and they usually possess some attack methods corresponding to the magic cores element. You are Miss Anna's teacher and also a church priest, so I can give you a 20% discount. You can buy it for only 80 gold coins. How much did you say? Chu Chen didn't expect monster mounts to be so expensive. But thinking about it, it seemed reasonable. 80 gold coins were equivalent to 80,000 copper coins. On earth, 80,000 pieces can only buy a used car, and an adult horse costs at least half the price. With Anna's identity, the other party would not deceive her. Father priest, how about this, I will give you half a month's worth of jerky. The boss saw that Chu Chen's expression was unusual and hurriedly added. Chu Chen now only has four gold coins on him, but he still has two bronze level monster crystals in his hand. One was given by the mayor before, and the other was dug out from the succubus. Not only is it special in attributes, but it is also of high quality. Selling it would be enough to pay for the mount. Before Chu Chen took out the magic core, Anna, who was beside him, took out a bag of gold coins and handed it to the boss. Father, this is my gift to you as a disciple. You can't refuse. Anna, as the daughter of the mayor of Panchur Town, usually has a lot of pocket money. She doesn't like to spend money, so she has saved a lot of money. Compared to Chu Chen, she is definitely a rich woman. In a certain sense, the healing arts of the Holy Light Church are very conscious in terms of fees. This is also why the Holy Light Church can rise rapidly and why the majority of people welcome the Holy Light Priests. Although priests do not rely heavily on mentorship like mages do, they still need someone to guide them when they start. Anna is nominally an apprentice priest, but she doesn't even know how to pray now. Shu Chen nodded without refusing and went to the Chocobo to prepare to write it directly. The owner of the mount shop realized that Chu Chen might be buying a monster-type mount for the first time, so he hurriedly said, Father Priest, a monster mount is different from a regular mount. If you want to ride it, you need to gain the mount's approval first, otherwise it will be dangerous. We have professional beast tamers in our shop who can help you tame the monster mount. It will definitely succeed in just three days. Ah, three days, then it's too late. Anna usually rides in a carriage and is not familiar with this kind of thing. Now that Chu Chen has decided to go to the holy city with her, it is safer to follow Princess Catherine's team. The other party won't wait that long. No need, the holy light will guide it. Chu Chen first cast a healing spell at the Chocobo. The Chocobo immediately gasped and made a pleasant sound, and its gaze towards Chu Chen softened slightly. Then Chu Chen approached and activated his own monster taming spell. A faint blue light appeared on his hand, and then he touched the Chocobo's head with his hand. You are trying to tame the Chocobo and the chocobo is hesitating, it is making a request to you, hoping to have meat to eat every day, and it doesn't want to carry too heavy loads, it wants someone to help it bathe every day, but it can lower its requirements when in the wild, do you agree to these requests and sign a contract with it? Monster taming is a type of contract magic. After both parties agree on the contract terms, they can sign the contract. If one party violates the contract, the other party can actively terminate the contract. As the master, Chu Chen has more initiative and can use the contract to punish the other party. The other party only has a chance to break free from the contract restrictions if the master repeatedly and seriously violates the contract. But in reality, if the contract is terminated, these monsters tamed by humans usually don't have a good outcome. Unless they encounter extremely terrible masters, they generally won't voluntarily terminate the contract. Chu Chen is not a person who likes to abuse animals. Compared to the people in this world, he is more compassionate towards pets. The two sides chatted happily and quickly reached an agreement. The Chocobo is signing a contract with you. Congratulations, the contract is successful. With the completion of the contract, a spiritual light ball appeared in Chu Chen's mind. Through this halo, he can communicate or punish the Chocobo. With Chu Chen's current mental power, he can only contract one monster, otherwise it will not only lead to an unstable contract, but also possible abnormal states such as split personality and mental disorders. To want to contract a second monster and not be affected, you probably need a mental power of at least 30 points. 
Watching Chu Chen easily tame the Chocobo, the owner of the mount shop couldn't help but whiten his eyes. Indeed, he is a priest. He managed to tame it so quickly and even signed a contract. It's not difficult to tame a monster and make it work for oneself but it's much harder to sign a contract. After all, not all buyers know contract magic, and most of the time, contract scrolls are used for contracts. The regulations on contract scrolls are fixed, but different monsters have different requirements. Unless it's a customized contract, the success rate is not high. Learning monster contract magic is very difficult, and unless you're a professional, no one has the time to learn it. The owner of the mount shop has been in business for many years, but it's the first time he has seen a customer directly tame a monster mount. Chu Chen rode the Chocobo and prepared to return, while Anna watched him eagerly. Since the shop is not far from the mayor's house, they had walked there earlier. Come on, I'll give you a ride, Chu Chen reached out his hand. Anna blushed and held Chu Chen's hand as she climbed onto the bird, gripping his clothes tightly, her heart pounding. The Chocobo's carrying capacity was good, and it didn't affect its running speed even with two people on its back. Compared to its kin who had to carry warriors wearing full body armor all day, it was already very lucky. The two quickly returned to the mayor's mansion, and Anna reluctantly got off the bird. The maid had prepared her belongings, mainly clothes. Valuables were put into her own storage ring. The last time, it was because Anna's storage ring attracted the attention of the mercenary team, which led to the tragedy that followed. Anna bid farewell to her father, Rode, and before leaving, Rode gave her a lot of money. The expenses in the holy city were much higher than in Pancher town. Rode was very surprised by Chuch and suddenly becoming Anna's master, but since it had come to this point, he didn't have time to ask for details. He was more reassured that Anna could go to the holy city with the princess's guard. Shortly after the two returned, the team set off. During this time, Rode found Chu Chen and gave him a hundred gold coins, hoping that Chu Chen could take care of his daughter more in the holy city. Chu Chen didn't feel comfortable accepting it in front of Anna, after all, he had already received a gift earlier. At Anna's reminder, Rode changed it to giving him a carriage. Chu Chen no longer refused, and only then did Rode finally feel at ease. Shortly after the team left Pancher Town, Anna, under the pretext of studying, ran from Princess Catherine's carriage to Chu Chen's carriage. Although Chu Chen was not an official priest, he had a good understanding of the basic knowledge of the teachings of the Holy Light Church and how to pray thanks to his mastery of various divine arts related to the Holy Light Church. Divine arts come from the blessings of the goddess. Compared to spells, they have a simpler construction process for spell models and can be released faster, Chu Chen explained. However, priests need a stronger mental power to cast divine arts. And even a junior healing spell, even if it's cast by a silver-ranked priest or a paladin, may not be stronger than mine. Chu Chen casually cast a healing spell. Anna, bathed in the holy light, felt an incredibly pure power and wholeheartedly believed in Chu Chen's words. Teacher, how can I improve the effectiveness of divine arts? Should I use more mental power? Anna asked curiously. Chu Chen shook his head. For mages, a strong mental power can control more elements, but for priests, mental power is used to communicate with the goddess. The amount of mental power is not important, reaching the minimum standard is enough. Gaining the favor of the goddess and increasing her goodwill towards oneself is the most important. Anna became more puzzled. Then how can I make the goddess favor me? Is it better to be more devout? Although that does have some influence, Anna, you must understand the essence of divine arts. The power of faith is needed under the goddess's crown. The more followers who can directly or indirectly provide faith, the more favored they will be by the goddess. A hundred years ago, there was a king who, although not very devout himself, declared the holy light as the state religion and forced all citizens to worship under the goddess's crown. In the end, his power became even stronger than many fanatical believers. The continent of gods and demons has numerous power systems, and the system of faith is more like a transaction. The beliefs and faith of the people can influence the will of the world, thereby providing power to the gods they believe in, and the gods, within their authority, grant power to their followers. This is a win-win result. Anna was somewhat surprised after listening. It was quite different from what she had learned from books. Your spiritual power is not bad. Now, silently recite the prayer incantation and think about the teachings of the holy light, and try to establish a connection with the goddess's divinity. Chu Chen only had theoretical knowledge and had no idea whether Anna would succeed or not. Anna closed her eyes nervously and devoutly chanted the spell written by Chu Chen in her notebook, constantly picturing scenes of the holy light saving the world in her mind. Unfortunately, she failed. After praying for half an hour in a row, Anna felt no response at all. Anna became anxious. If she couldn't become a priest, she would have to go to the palace to study magic with Catherine's teacher. Chu Chen had also tried praying himself. 
It was basically an instant connection, without any delay. Even the saint couldn't match his connection speed. But this was limited to the connection, he couldn't borrow the power of the goddess or provide faith for her. Chu Chen didn't know how to help her, so he decided to simulate it and leave the problem to the system. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial ability. 1. Mind Amplification Cap, 5 points, 2. Fountain of Light X1, 5 points, 3. Ring of Prayer, 10 points, 4. Free Simulation, 20 points, Chu Chen clicked on the option details. The mind amplification cap enhances the intensity of the thoughts emitted by the believer during prayer and can be used for a long time. The fountain of light is a consumable item that, after bathing, can enhance the affinity for the light element within three days, thereby increasing the favorability of the goddess and assisting in establishing a connection with her divinity during the first prayer. As for the ring of prayer, it is an equipment that allows two people to pray simultaneously. After the fusion of their thoughts, it can reduce the loss during the transmission process. For someone like Anna who has never established a connection before, it is like a kind of cheat. Chu Chen took out many things for Anna and rode. Now he wanted to help Anna successfully pray. Chu Chen first ruled out the fountain of light. This consumable item was a solution for the wealthy and was no different from a temporary relief. The effectiveness of the mind amplification cap was not as good as that of the ring of prayer. As for his special connection with the goddess's divinity, he wanted to see what effect it would have on Anna if they prayed together. Exchange successful, points minus 10, Anna feels frustrated. As for the student's dullness, you choose. 1. Tell Anna that she has no talent and persuade her to give up becoming a priest. 2. Take out the ring of prayer and help Anna complete her first prayer. 3. Take out the ring of prayer, help Anna complete her first prayer, and take the opportunity to test her limits. The system understands me after all. Anyway, it's just a simulation. I don't know how it will develop. You take out the prayer ring and put it on, then hold Anna's hands with your fingers intertwined. After hesitating for a moment, Anna obeys your command. Anna starts praying earnestly, and you quickly connect with the goddess's divine essence. Anna also has a faint sense of enlightenment. You tell Anna that in order to go further, you need to have a closer contact with her. You step forward and embrace the slightly nervous Anna. Under your intentional control, Anna's perception of the divine essence becomes clearer, and you further take away Anna's first kiss. Anna's mind is in chaos, and she forcefully ends the prayer. She looks at you with unease and questions your behavior. You choose. Anna's attitude towards Chu Chun changes as their master-disciple relationship is established. Previously, it was easier to pursue her during simulations, but now, with this relationship, the difficulty has increased. 1. Threaten Anna, telling her that if she doesn't obey, she will completely lose the chance to become a priest. 2. Sincerely apologize and express love to Anna. Three. Pretend to be angry and tell Anna that you are helping her. You are dissatisfied and angry with Anna's reaction, and under your reprimand, Anna quickly apologizes. You ask Anna to pray again, and she dares not refuse. With your help this time, Anna successfully establishes a connection with the goddess's divine essence, completes her first prayer, and gains a lot. Anna leaves your carriage and tries to pray alone, but the effect is less than one-tenth of before. In the land of gods and demons, there are many churches, and different gods have different feedback for their believers. The goddess of the Holy Light Church usually gives back 10 units of power to the believer for every 100 units of faith contributed. This divine power will be consumed when the believer needs to use divine arts, so believers generally do not abuse them. A 10% ratio is considered below average among many churches, but as the believer's status in the church rises, the feedback ratio will gradually increase. When Anna prays alone, she only receives about 7% feedback, mainly because she has just started to believe. Anna understands the reason behind this, but she can't help but seek you out again after experiencing the nearly 100% feedback rate when praying with you. Faced with Anna's request, you do not refuse, but this time you become even more excessive. Anna vaguely feels that you are deceiving her, but she already likes you in her heart. In order to become a true priest, she chooses to compromise completely and takes the initiative to approach you. The commotion between you and Anna in the carriage catches Catherine's attention. She signals the guards to be quiet and quietly comes to the front of the carriage, lifting the curtain. The scene that meets Catherine's eyes makes her furious. She can't control her emotions and throws a fireball towards you. The carriage explodes, and without any defense, you are blown to pieces. Simulation ends. Your shameless behavior receives the punishment it deserves. Perhaps you should slow down and proceed gradually. Overall score, 32 points. Earned simulation experience, 32 points. Earn simulation points, 32 plus 2 points. Perhaps because of the contact with divine power, Chu Chen's simulation rewards are much greater than usual.
Please select the reward you want to exchange for in the real world. 1. Mind Amplification Cap, 5 points. 2. Fountain of Light X1, 5 points. 3. Prayer Ring, 10 points. Chu Chen exchanges the Mind Amplification Cap as a gift for Anna and Roderick, and he doesn't miss the Prayer Ring either. This ring can not only enhance his relationship with Anna during the journey, but also be sold to the church to help him quickly escape poverty. Points minus 15, remaining 19 points. Chu Chen's mind returns to reality, looking at the disappointed Anna. He takes off the just exchanged prayer ring and puts it on. Anna, give me your hand, let me help you. Anna extends her delicate hand with some confusion, and Chu Chen firmly holds it. The feeling is quite good. Close your eyes and pray again. Okay, alright. A beautiful blush appears on Anna's exquisite face. Chu Chen deliberately controlled the speed to avoid being too exaggerated. With Chu Chen's help, Anna finally connected to the goddess's divine power, and the rate of return for her prayers was limited to about 25%. I did it. I succeeded. Anna exclaimed happily. Not bad, now try praying alone, Chu Chen continued. Anna calmed down and prayed again. With the experience of the first successful attempt, the goddess's divine power remembered her information in its database, so even though the rate of return this time was only about 6%, it was still considered a success. Teacher, my efficiency when praying alone is four times slower, Anna couldn't help but grab Chu Chen's hand and act spoiled. Teacher, can you help me again? Chu Chen still had many books to read and various skills to practice, so he didn't have time to accompany her in prayer all the time. He took out a hat from his personal space and handed it to Anna. Consider this a gift from me. Wear it and pray again. Anna felt a bit regretful, but she still happily accepted the exquisite looking hat. This was a gift from Chu Chen to herself. After wearing the hat, Anna's prayer effectiveness increased by 5%, reaching an astonishing 11%, almost twice as effective as when she prayed alone. This precious gift made Anna's fondness for Chu Chen soar. Unfortunately, the good times didn't last long. Catherine quickly found her and asked her to accompany her in the princess's carriage. Anna had to obey the command since she was in need and the other party was a princess. In the following days, Anna prayed in Chu Chen's carriage every morning, and when Chu Chen had time, he would occasionally pray with her. In the afternoon, Anna belonged to Princess Catherine, but fortunately, Princess Catherine didn't give Anna a hard time during their rest time at night. It seemed that Princess Catherine planned to take action after returning to the Holy City. As for Leotes, perhaps because he had become a crippled eunuch, he remained silent throughout the journey. Besides completing his guard duties, he didn't have much presence. When the group completed one-third of the journey and arrived at Edinburgh City, Chu Chen's simulation count also returned to 6-6. Six -six. The lord who received the news in advance arranged for the princess to be welcomed and brought everyone into the castle. Edinburgh City was a private territory belonging to Count Edinburgh. The castle built by Count Edinburgh was luxurious and grand, and there was a large area in the castle's backyard dedicated to dragon breeding. Count Edinburgh's pet was a bipedal flying dragon. Although bipedal flying dragons were not recognized by true dragon clans, their powerful combat abilities and flying capabilities were beyond doubt. Unfortunately, the bipedal flying dragon was not present today, so Chu Chin couldn't appreciate this interesting creature. Your Highness, the bridge over the river Edinburgh collapsed three days ago due to a storm, and it is currently being repaired. As soon as everyone entered the castle, Count Edinburgh brought some bad news. Count Edinburgh's face was somewhat pale as if he were seriously ill, which was why he didn't personally welcome the princess earlier. His flying dragon was currently helping with the repairs on the bridge. The collapse of the bridge had a significant impact on the commercial trade of Edinburgh City, so it needed to be repaired as soon as possible. How long will it take to repair? Leotes asked anxiously, eager to go back and receive treatment. Count Edinburgh shook his head. Under normal circumstances, it will take another two days to repair. Of course, you can choose to take a detour, which will add about one more day to the journey. If you're in a hurry, I can have my pet carry you across the cliff. Flying the bipedal dragon a few more times could indeed transfer the team to the other side, but Catherine refused this proposal. No rush, we've been rushing for several days and I'm exhausted. We'll wait until the bridge is repaired before we continue. Catherine's words were absolute commands, and although Leotes was helpless, he could only wait. Count Edinburgh, is the escort team for the saint in the city? Leotes asked. Count Eden shook his head. They chose to take a detour because there were too many people. They should have already reached the other side by now. Chu Chen calculated the time and asked, the time the storm appeared seems to be around the same time as when the Saintus arrived, right? Count Eden nodded. Yes, when the Saintus's group left Eden City, it suddenly started raining. Has Eden City experienced storms like this before? Has the bridge ever been destroyed? 
Chu Chen continued to ask. Count Eden looked at the priest badge on Chu Chen's chest and answered somewhat unnaturally, No, it has never happened before. The bridge is repaired every year, and since its construction, it has never been destroyed by a storm unless it was attacked by monsters. Upon hearing Count Eden's answer, Leotis couldn't help but become anxious. This sounds suspicious. Have Barbara and the others reached the other side? Did you send a dragon to confirm their safety? Um, I didn't pay attention to that. Although Barbara was the backup saintess, Count Eden was not a member of the church, so the saintess's status didn't concern him much. It was already polite enough to receive them when they arrived, and since they had already left, there was no need to be concerned to that extent. Can you send a dragon to investigate? Princess Catherine was attacked by a necromancer in the town of Pancher, and your bridge here has been destroyed. This may also be the plan of the demons. Barbara may be in danger. I'm not good at investigating, but I can have a dragon take you there. Count Eden said enthusiastically to Leotes. Leotes hesitated, having some psychological shadow after being injured by the necromancer. My duty is to ensure Princess Catherine's safety. Count Eden smiled. Don't worry, no one can harm Princess Catherine in my territory. Well, Catherine wanted to dismiss the matter, so she stepped forward and said, The saintess is very important. You should go and check. Leotes thought about his brother's hopes all resting on Barbara, and he finally chose to leave. But before leaving, he made his own request. Princess, can Chu Chen accompany me? His detection skills are impressive. Maybe he can help. Catherine rolled her eyes. Chu Chen is not my subordinate, and he is from another country. If you want his help, you should ask him yourself. After observing for a few days, Leotis found that Chu Chen didn't seem to have much interest in Catherine. Leotis no longer had any hostility towards Chu Chen and genuinely wanted to seek his help this time. But he couldn't bring himself to humbly ask Chu Chen so he tried a different approach. Chu Chen, I want to hire you to help me find Barbara. Whether we find her or not, I will pay you 10 gold coins, and if we find her, I will pay you an additional 20 gold coins. Leotes's heart was bleeding. He was indeed a silver paladin, but as a knight from the countryside, he had always been ostracized by his colleagues. In order to avoid giving others a handle, he had never dared to be corrupt like his colleagues. Maintaining the Holy Knight's armor and weapons required a lot of money, so he had to take various tasks during holidays to supplement his salary. However, the holy city was too safe, and there weren't many suitable tasks for him to take. When Chu Chen heard the commission from Leotes, he almost thought he had misheard. Chu Chen wasn't interested in being a mercenary for the other party. It would be boring, a waste of time, and dangerous. However, this didn't prevent him from simulating in the simulator. He also wanted to know Barbara's situation. If it was really a conspiracy, Perhaps he couldn't continue following the princess's group. System, start the simulation. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial ability. 1. Basic swordsmanship level plus 1, 5 points. 2. Basic forging body technique level plus 1, 5 points. 3. Holy light shield level plus 1, 10 points. 4. Free simulation, 20 points. This time, the initial options for the simulation were all related to Leotes. Chu Chen was delighted when he saw the option for the forging body technique. This skill is very cost-effective, as it increases the physique by one point for every level upgraded. After the simulation ends, you can exchange it to reach the maximum level. Chu Chen left the existing 19 points of points without exchanging them, and these options are unlikely to have a significant impact on the subsequent simulation. Leotis wants your help and is willing to pay, you choose. 1. Assist Leotis for free, maybe you can turn enemies into friends, 2. Take money and do the job, you also want to know about Barbara's situation, 3. Refuse to help, no need to waste too much time on this kind of thing, in the real world, he would definitely charge money, but in the simulation, he wants to see what can develop for free. You refused the commission and expressed willingness to help for free, Leotis was very surprised by this and his goodwill towards you doubled. He expressed his gratitude to you, Count Edinburgh took you to the bridge and commanded the dragon to take you to the other side of the cliff. During the process, you learned that this cliff was artificially split during the battle between gods and demons, after arriving on the other side, the dragon of Count Edinburgh left, and you need to return before noon tomorrow, Leotis is preparing to go to the nearest town to investigate the news. Along the way, you activated the evil detection skill but did not detect anything abnormal. After arriving in the town at night, according to the townspeople's information, Barbara and her group have already arrived safely and left at noon. Leotis treated you to a sumptuous dinner, and nothing happened overnight. The next day at noon, you returned to the cliff as agreed, but the dragon was late, fortunately. The suspension bridge had been pulled up and the wind was very light today. Although it was a bit dangerous, you crossed the suspension bridge under the protection of the construction workers' safety ropes 
when you returned to Edinburgh City, you found the atmosphere very tense. Now, only entry is allowed, no exit. When you arrived at the castle, members of the princess's guard hurriedly came to report. It turned out that they were attacked by the demons last night, and Princess Catherine disappeared. Anna, who was with the princess, was killed, Leotis was extremely frightened, and you found Count Edinburgh, who was equally anxious, you went to see Anna's body. Anna's body was only discovered this morning, and from the condition of the body, the princess should have been taken away around 2 o'clock last night, you activated the evil detection skill, but did not detect any evil creatures. However, Count Edinburgh was wearing equipment similar to Dark Knight Shelter, which shielded your detection, Count Edinburgh looked at you meaningfully, and you suspected that he was involved in this matter, the princess's disappearance has nothing to do with you, and you feel sorry for Anna's death. You decide. 1. Leave the castle wisely. 2. Question Count Edinburgh and ask him to remove the equipment for inspection. 3. Secretly inform Leo Tis of your findings. Chu Chen chose to question Count Edinburgh on the spot. Count Edinburgh looked a little panicked, and under Leo Tis's request, he had to remove the equipment. You are ready to use the evil detection on Count Edinburgh again. But suddenly he launched a surprise attack on Leotis, Leotis defended against his attack, and both sides engaged in a fierce battle. The bipedal dragon in the distance was approaching, Leotis was gradually retreating, and you choose. 1. Take out the magic sword and assist Leotis in killing Count Edinburgh. 2. Take out the magic sword and assist Count Edinburgh in killing Leotis. 3. Escape from here and find the princess's guard to inform them of the situation, looking at the soldiers appearing outside the door. Chuchin didn't think it would be easy to leave here. You pulled out the magic sword and gained unparalleled power. You assisted Count Edinburgh in killing Leotis. Count Edinburgh, facing your immense power and the magic sword, couldn't help but surrender. He told you that he willingly turned himself into a vampire for immortality. He obeyed the orders of the Blood Lord and, together with the Blood Lord, took Princess Catherine away, seemingly intending to transform her into a special vampire. If the plan goes smoothly, Princess Catherine will return tonight. You were preparing to gather more information from Count Edinburgh when the sword spirit, Klein, took control of your body and killed Count Edinburgh, absorbing his power. Your consciousness gradually blurred, and the magic sword completely took control of your body. It then killed the approaching bipedal wyvern. You don't know how much time has passed, but you died. Simulation ends. Perhaps you should have stored the magic sword in your personal space and time to reduce the possibility of being controlled. Overall score, 14 points. You gain 14 simulation experience points and 14 plus 2 simulation points. Please choose the rewards you want to exchange for in the real world. 1. Basic swordsmanship level plus 1, 5 points. 2. Basic forging and body refining level plus 1, 5 points. 3. Holy light shield level plus 1, 10 points. Xu Chen currently has 25 points, and he has exchanged options 1 and 2 twice. Congratulations, your basic forging and body refining level has reached LV5 slash 5 and your physique has increased by 1. Congratulations, your basic swordsmanship level has reached LV5 slash 5, and your physique has increased by 1. When the basic forging and body refining reaches level 5, it comes with a plus 5 physique effect. The full level reward adds another point. Chu Chen's physique has now surpassed his mental power. Name, Chu Chen. Race, Human. Rank, Black Iron. Level, LV5 slash 10. Attributes, Physique 12, Agility 5 plus 2, Spirit 10, Charm 5 plus 1, Luck 5. Specialties, Proficient in Demon Language, Goblin Language, and Diving Ability. Skills, Holy Light Shield LV2 slash 6, Monster Taming LV1 slash 6, Basic Healing LV5 slash 5, Fireball LV3 slash 5, Cross slash LV1 slash 5, Detect Evil LV5 slash 5, Basic Swordsmanship LV5 slash 5, Basic Forging and Body Refining LV5 slash 5. Equipment, Oak Staff, Steel Short Sword, Leather Armor, Knight's Shelter, Knight's Disguise, Holy Light Priest Metal, Ring of Prayer. Items, for Gold Coins, Magic Sword Klein, Earth Prison Scroll, Resistance Fire Ring Scroll, Bronze Monster Crystal X2, Primary Healing Potion X5, Primary Antidote Potion X2. Points, 5. Contract, Chocobo. Chu Chen didn't rush to simulate again. He returned to the real world and refused Leoti's hiring request. Sorry, I refuse. The goddess will protect the safety of the substitute saint, there's no need to worry about her. Chu Chen's words seemed to make sense, but in reality, they couldn't withstand scrutiny. If the goddess really cared so much about protecting the substitute saint, there wouldn't have been so many saints killed in history. For the demon clan, and for the demon clan, Princess Catherine is obviously more valuable than the yet-to-be-confirmed substitute saint. Even if there is an attack, it would be an attack on Princess Catherine.
The previous attack on the substitute saint was just a group of goblins, but the attack on Princess Catherine was by a silver-level necromancer. After Chu Chen's words, Princess Catherine's favorability towards him increased, and Leoti's desire to investigate also calmed down. While Barbara was important, his duty was to protect Princess Catherine. As a knight of the church, he had made many sacrifices to be assigned this task of guarding the princess. If he were to leave Midway, even if it was only for a short time, even if it was for the sake of the church's saint, it would still be considered irresponsible. It would not only greatly lower his position in the princess's heart but also potentially lead to reports from malicious individuals. I was reckless. The princess's safety is the most important thing. Since becoming a crippled eunuch, Laotis has undergone some significant changes in his personality. At this moment, he feels a hint of gratitude towards Chuchin. Princess Catherine pouted and ignored the matter. Chuchin hesitated whether to expose Count Eden's vampire identity on the spot, as doing so would undoubtedly bring trouble upon himself. However, if he didn't do it, he would have to leave the castle with Anna, or else they would be in danger. Chuchin activated the simulation again, wanting to seek guidance. System, start the simulation. Simulation about to begin, please choose your initial ability, 1. LV1 Light Magic, 5 points, 2. LV1 Basic Meditation, 5 points, 3. True Silver Holy Sword, 10 points, 4. Free Simulation, 20 points. Vampires are said to fear silverware because their blood contains a special substance that reacts chemically and burns intensely when it comes into contact with silver. However, pure silver weapons are not practical, so most of the time, alloys or silver-plated weapons are used to hunt vampires. Chuchin only has 5 points left so he chooses to exchange for light magic. Vampires fear sunlight, which is why Count Eden didn't personally go to greet the princess, as he dared not act under the sun to avoid any accidents. Light magic has been proven effective against vampires, although not as powerful as sunlight, it is the best means to expose their identities. You know Count Eden's identity and plans, facing the possible crisis, you choose. 1. Scheme against him, confront Count Eden alone, using his secret to threaten him and extort a large amount of wealth. Two. Expose him on the spot, now Count Eden's guards are outside, and the bipedal dragons are not in the castle, making it the best time to attack. 3. Pretend not to know, leave, and secretly inform Princess Catherine of the relevant information. The first option has the highest benefits, but the premise is to survive and not be pursued by the other party. Chuchin directly chooses to expose him on the spot. To ensure the princess's safety, you propose to perform an evil detection on the castle, and Count Eden readily accepts it thinking you will release the evil detection. However, you release light magic instead. Count Eden screams in agony, and you reveal his vampire identity to everyone, casting a healing spell towards him. A melee breaks out in the castle, and Count Eden's strength greatly diminishes under the continuous exposure to light magic. Eventually, Laotis subdues him. Count Eden claims to be a victim, trapped in darkness but with a heart towards the light, and he had no intention of attacking the princess. Count Eden is imprisoned and needs to go to the holy city for a mental trial. Only by passing the trial can he be saved. The princess expresses her gratitude to you, and you remind her that Count Eden's master may still come. You prepare to leave, but it starts pouring rain again in the sky, so you have no choice but to stay and defend in the castle. At night, Count Eden's master appears and attacks the dungeon, rescuing Count Eden and attempting to take Princess Catherine with him. A fierce battle ensues, but fortunately, you have more people and are well prepared, giving you the overall advantage. At this moment, Count Eden's bipedal dragons appear, taking the two of them away and disappearing into the night sky. The next morning, Princess Catherine decides to take a detour, and you choose. 1. It is relatively safe now, so end the simulation early, simulation successful, you will receive the light magic reward. 2. Continue to follow Princess Catherine. 3. Leave the group and go to the holy city alone, surprisingly, the simulation doesn't end in death. Ending the simulation early can actually earn additional rewards, which should be the effect of the upgraded system. When Chuchin was at level 1 of the system, he could also end the simulation early, but there were no such rewards at that time. Chuchin has achieved his goal, and considering the recent attack, he feels it's more reliable to go alone. He doesn't continue the simulation but ends it early. Simulation completed you made a decisive decision to resolve this crisis but you let the Count Edinburgh go, which may bring you hidden dangers. Overall score, 24 points obtain 24 points of simulation experience, obtain 24 plus 2 points of simulation points please choose the rewards to be exchanged into the real world one. Light manipulation level plus 1, 5 points 2. Basic meditation LV1, 5 points 3. True Silver Holy Sword, 10 points Chuchin exchanged meditation twice and also exchanged the True Silver Holy Sword into his personal space. 
Even if it is not useful in the future, he can still exchange it for money. Points-20 Congratulations on mastering basic meditation LV2-5, mental attribute plus 2 true silver holy sword rank, bronze effect, deals double damage to vampires and applies a burning effect. Note, although it is called a holy sword, it is just a relatively reliable silver sword. You shouldn't expect to exchange anything good with 10 points. Chu Chen's magic sword cannot be used under normal circumstances. Although his steel short sword is okay, it is not as good as this sword even against ordinary monsters. With this sword, Chu Chen can better impersonate a holy knight in the future, and it will be more effective when combined with his mask that can change his appearance. Chu Chen returned to reality and did not want to attract the attention of Count Edinburgh and the demons in the real world. Therefore, this time he did not reveal the true face of Count Edinburgh on the spot, but followed Anna into Catherine's room after everyone had eaten and drunk enough. What are you doing here? Catherine was very unhappy with Chu Chen's uninvited visit. Anna was a little embarrassed and stepped aside, not knowing Chu Chen's purpose. Princess Catherine, I tested Count Edinburgh just now and found out that he is actually a vampire. Catherine didn't think that Chu Chen would deceive her or dare to deceive her. If it was a misunderstanding, then Chu Chen could apologize to Count Edinburgh later. Compared to the possible danger, this trouble was not worth mentioning. As a non-combatant, Chu Chen and Anna did not participate in this plan. Catherine arranged for Leotes and the elite knights to prepare weapons to deal with vampires, and then called Count Edinburgh alone into the room. Although Count Edinburgh sensed that something was wrong, he did not dare to act rashly under the encirclement of the holy knights. Count Edinburgh, you don't look too good. I happen to know healing magic. Leotes stepped forward and directly cast a healing spell without waiting for the other party to refuse. Vampires are different from ordinary creatures. Their blood is very special, and their body tissues and cells are no longer human. Healing magic is like a fireball spell to them. Count Edinburgh wanted to call for reinforcements, but Catherine had already cast a silence barrier. Soon, he was defeated. He never dreamed that he would be exposed so easily. Fortunately, Count Edinburgh had already prepared an excuse. He once again spoke those words of being trapped in darkness and longing for light. But Catherine had heard the exact same words from Chu Chen half an hour ago, so these words from the other party were not convincing at all. We must lock you up first, and you need to recall the bipedal dragon before dark. Otherwise, don't blame me for being impolite. Catherine didn't directly kill him in the simulation because she believed in his words. Instead, she chose to imprison him. Your Highness, my pet is too far away from me now, I can't recall it. Count Edinburgh pleaded, tomorrow, it will come back early in the morning. Catherine signaled Leotes with her eyes, and Leotes pulled open the curtains. The dazzling sunlight made Count Edinburgh feel fearful. At this time, Eden was tightly bound and brought to a place where the sunlight could shine when the sun went down. This is about the place where the sun can shine when it sets. Unless the bipedal dragon returns, you won't be able to move even a bit. Count Edinburgh had no choice but to activate the power of the contract to contact his magical pet, the flying dragon, and have it return as soon as possible. The previous simulation failed mainly because the bipedal dragon took them away and escaped. Now, without the help of the bipedal dragon, the enemy had no way out. The bipedal dragon finally arrived just before Count Edinburgh was killed by sunlight. Princess Catherine hesitated on how to deal with the bipedal dragon. However, when she thought of the words Chu Chen had said to her, she became more determined. Count Edinburgh, now is the time to prove your loyalty, Princess Catherine said condescendingly to Count Edinburgh, who was bound on the ground. The bipedal dragon next to him roared angrily, almost launching an attack. Fortunately, Count Edinburgh stopped the reckless action in time, otherwise both the master and servant would have died here. The bipedal dragon was chained with thick chains and could only be held in the Lord's Hall due to its size. However, Princess Catherine was not worried. She had the bipedal dragon eat food with added ingredients, turning it into a useless dragon. As for Count Edinburgh, he was imprisoned in a heavily guarded dungeon and was also rendered unable to fight by being fed medicine, just like the bipedal dragon. Not only that, Princess Catherine secretly brought the priest group of the Holy Light Church of Eden City into the castle. Now everything was ready, and everyone was waiting for Count Edinburgh's master to appear. At night, Count Edinburgh's master seemed very confident in his own power, or perhaps his intelligence was not strong. When he sneaked into the dungeon and saw Count Edinburgh lying weakly on the ground, he had a vague feeling that something was not right. Suddenly, a dazzling light illuminated the dungeon. The priests hiding in nearby prison cells released their respective divine spells to attack. The iron gates protected them from being attacked, and their attacks hit the helpless vampire through the iron bars. The vampire howled in pain and tried to escape but soldiers defending other areas quickly rushed over to block the exit. Evil creature, die. 
Leotes knew that the opportunity to make a contribution had come. He unleashed a powerful holy light power and fought the vampire. Xu Chen had witnessed the opponent's strength during the simulation, and killing the opponent in the real world would not reward him with experience points. Therefore, he did not participate in the battle tonight, but stayed in the room with Anna on guard. The distant sound of battle lasted less than 10 minutes before quieting down. Under Chu Chen's arrangement, this powerful vampire expert had no chance to escape. After the battle, Princess Catherine tortured Count Edinburgh for information. Knowing that there was no hope of escape, Count Edinburgh confessed and revealed everything. This vampire expert who attacked Catherine, like the goblins before, was a disciple of the demons in the human world. The invasion points of the demon realm were spread throughout the continent, and the wilderness in the southern border of the New Moon Kingdom was one of them. In order to welcome the arrival of the demon army, these disciples who believed in the demons began their actions either spontaneously or under the instructions of the major demon kings. Whether it was intercepting the candidate Saint Barbara or the princess, or corrupting the priests in the town of Panshur, they were all the work of the demon disciples. These were just the ones that had been discovered, and infiltration had already occurred in various parts of the New Moon Kingdom. Early the next morning, Princess Catherine hurriedly led her team back. She needed to report the information to her father, the king, as soon as possible. Chu Chen bid her farewell. Your Highness, thank you for the escort of the guard team all the way. It may be time for us to part ways now. When Catherine heard that Chu Chen was leaving, she couldn't help but be stunned. Why? Aren't you also planning to go to the Holy City? If it weren't for Chu Chen discovering the problem in advance this time, she might have already been captured and killed. She was very grateful to Chu Chen. Originally, he planned to wait until he arrived in the Holy City to receive a generous reward from the king. Unexpectedly, the other party wanted to leave early. Not only me, Anna will also leave with me. I want to take her on a journey before she arrives at the church in the Holy City. Chu Chen's excuse was reasonable. Princess Catherine, who was in a hurry to travel, naturally wouldn't waste time sightseeing. Princess Catherine looked meaningfully at Anna, thinking that Chu Chen was leaving for her sake. For her, Anna was just a woman she relatively liked and there were many such women in the royal capital of the holy city. But Chu Chen, the strategist, was the talent she truly wanted to win over. Whether it was the feat of saving Barbara alone in the enemy's encirclement, or the almost perfect hunting plan in the Jula forest and last night, Catherine admired him. Chu Chen, I don't like beating around the bush. Let me be straight with you. As long as you are willing to be loyal to me, I can give up Anna and have the king grant you the title of Viscount and a territory. Catherine was an ambitious woman. She had a brother and a half-brother in her family, and her younger half-brother listened to her very much. As long as she defeated her brother, she could become the queen of the New Moon Kingdom. She hoped that Chu Chen could help her seize power, so that the kingdom would not be destroyed by the demons in the hands of an incompetent father. Chu Chen had no intention of being loyal to anyone. Right now, he was only interested in improving his strength and wealth. Your Highness, thank you for the invitation, but I have already shared everything with the goddess. With the impending invasion of the demons, I have many things to follow the instructions of the goddess and cannot serve you. Hearing Chu Chen's reply, Princess Catherine was somewhat disappointed. Although she didn't like men, she didn't reject handsome men like Chu Chen. If he could assist her in seizing power and increase his strength to a certain extent, perhaps it would be possible for her to marry him and have offspring. I still hope that you can return to the holy city with me. As a reward, I can give you a thousand gold coins and the noble title of baron. Catherine once again offered her chips. This reward actually included a reward for Chu Chen's previous actions. This attack had left her with lingering fear, but as long as Chu Chen was there, she could feel relatively at ease. Chu Chen looked at the simulation count, which had recovered to 5 to 6, and the simulator that was about to level up to level 3. After thinking it over, he chose to stay. He didn't even have a legal identity now, so becoming a baron could solve this problem. A thousand gold coins could also allow him to buy more powerful equipment and scrolls, making it more efficient for him to level up in the holy city. Although the title of Viscount was a lower noble title compared to the prestigious nobles, like other nobles, he would enjoy equal protection under noble law, allowing him to have privileges in front of commoners. However, once he accepted, regardless of whether he agreed or not, he would be considered a member of Princess Catherine's camp. At worst, I'll simulate every day in the future, and I should be able to avoid most troubles. Xu Chen couldn't refuse the conditions given by the other party. I can continue to travel with you, but the condition is that you can maintain a pure friendship with my student. Xu Chen proposed his own requirement. Princess Catherine frowned and after much thought, she agreed. No problem, but if Ada approaches me on her own, don't interfere. Deal. The two parties reached an agreement, and Anna was struggling in her heart. 
She knew that her father's transfer was probably in jeopardy, but at least now she had the initiative in her hands. The team was already packed up. The bipedal wyvern was directly slaughtered by Catherine, while Count Eden was still being taken to the holy city to face the noble court's trial. As for the wealth in Count Eden's house, most of it was stored in his spatial ring, and the rest had been looted. Chu Chen received his own 1,000 gold coins in advance and was happily reading a book in the carriage. Count Edinburgh had quite a collection of books, and Chu Chen could absorb knowledge from the simulator even without actually reading them, which would be helpful for future simulations. Anna's prayers were efficient when paired with a hat, but the contribution points obtained through prayers in exchange for the power of faith might not necessarily allow her to perform divine magic. There were several conditions that needed to be met in order to perform divine magic. First, Anna needed to increase her contribution points to a certain level and obtain authorization from the goddess. Second, her affinity with the light element needed to meet the standard, and third, her mental strength needed to be strong enough. Anna had no problem with her affinity, and her mental strength was sufficient to perform some low-level divine magic. As for the authorization from the goddess, it was more troublesome and usually required a bishop-level clergy to apply to the goddess. Of course, there were also some naturally talented believers who were directly chosen by the goddess and granted the authorization for divine magic. Anna's basic contribution points had already reached the requirement for performing the lowest level divine magic. Chuchin planned to have her perform several high-yield prayers, hoping that it would attract the favor of the goddess. This was also a small trick commonly used by the second and third generation of holy families to help their children become clergy, which could be considered a small bug in the self-management system of divine authority. Once Anna mastered divine magic, she would be spared from the troublesome process of entering the church. Watching Anna praying earnestly, Chu Chen activated the simulator. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial ability. 1. 20 gold coins, 1.2. Increase your own level by 1, 10 points, 3. Holy Fire LV1, 10 points, 4. Free simulation, 20 points, unexpectedly, this time there was an option to directly exchange for gold coins. However, Xu Chen didn't need money at the moment, so there was no need to waste points on it. Xu Chen's simulator was about to be upgraded, and this time he wanted to complete the upgrade as much as possible to see what new features would appear. Your disciple Anna is praying earnestly, but even with the prayer hat, she hasn't caught the attention of the goddess. You decide to help her master divine magic in advance. You ask Anna to stop meditating, and you assist her meditation with the prayer ring. As for the return rate, you choose to control it at 1. Pray with all your might, 100% return rate to quickly accumulate contribution points, 2. Fair prayer, 50% return rate to both quickly accumulate contribution points and attract the attention of the goddess, 3. Low-key prayer, 25% return rate enough to make the divine authority mistakenly believe that a bishop is recommending a believer to become a clergy, without attracting too much attention, different levels of clergy have different return rates. Ordinary believers and apprentice priests have around 10%, Ordinary priests have around 15%, and bishops can reach up to 20%. In fact, above the level of a bishop, in addition to the basic return rate, there will be different degrees of return rate increase based on the development of the church. 25% is the level that an excellent bishop can achieve, which is enough to qualify for recommending a believer to become a clergy. For safety reasons, Xu Chen would choose 25% in the real world, but in the simulation, he chose to pray with all his might at 100% to see what would happen. You assist Anna in a prayer with a 100% return rate, shocking her and making her suspect that you are the incarnation of the goddess on earth. You explain in the name of the Holy Son and ask Anna to keep it a secret, to which she obediently agrees. You pray for a full three hours, and the unusual circumstances finally catch the attention of the goddess and her divine essence. The goddess of light doesn't discover you, but her consciousness connects with Anna through her prayer, and Anna reveals the truth to her. The goddess notices you and possesses Anna's body to communicate with you. She realizes that you are not a believer and that you can exploit divine vulnerabilities. She becomes hostile towards you and launches an attack using Anna's body. The battle attracts the attention of Princess Catherine's guards, and the goddess invites them to assist in killing you. Due to Anna not being a suitable vessel, the goddess's power is limited to silver level. You have three choices. 1. Beg for mercy and express your willingness to become the most devout believer. Two. Seek help from the princess and claim that Anna is being controlled by demons and is not a true projection of the goddess. 3. Unleash the demonic sword and use your power to annihilate them. Begging for mercy won't work since it has led to the current situation. Seeking help from the princess may not convince her, and even if the lie is successful, it will eventually be exposed. You draw the demonic sword, which detests the goddess's aura, 
and it helps you eliminate the enemies, leaving only Anna. The consciousness projection of the goddess remains and is sealed within Anna by the demonic sword, unable to escape. You have three choices. 1. Kill Anna so that no one knows what happened. 2. Seek reconciliation and release the consciousness projection of the goddess. 3. Strike while the iron is hot and attempt to conquer the goddess using primal instincts. The opportunity is rare, and an evil smile appears on Chu Chen's face. After three days and nights of battle, the goddess begs for mercy. She has been to some extent conquered and educated by you, becoming obedient. You know that killing Anna would eliminate the goddess's consciousness, but that would render everything meaningless. This is not the outcome you desire, so you choose to spare the goddess. The consciousness projection of the goddess returns to the heavenly realm, and the humiliating memories merge into her true consciousness, greatly shaking her spirit. The humiliated goddess orders the holy light church to capture you, but the demonic sword, recognizing your evil behavior over the past three days, agrees with you. She hasn't run out of wicked ideas during these days. You and the demonic sword, Klein, reach an agreement, as long as you kill at least one holy light priest each month, she won't devour you. Disguised in the darkness of the night, you steal the appearance of a knight and conceal your aura with the shelter of the night. You arrive at the nearest town and discover that you are wanted, but no one sees through your disguise. You live in the town for a while, and your character becomes increasingly irritable. Even if someone accidentally bumps into you, you beat them up and kill them at night. You don't realize that you are being subtly influenced by the demonic sword. You no longer store the demonic sword in your personal space. Suddenly, you go mad and go on a killing spree, slaughtering half of the town. Eventually, you are stopped by a passing powerful individual. During the battle, your consciousness gradually becomes blurred, and you are completely consumed by the demonic sword, Klein. Simulation ends. When you unleashed the demonic sword, you lost control completely. In a state of insufficient mental strength, you were subtly influenced. Overall score, 25 points. You gain 25 experience points and 25 plus 2 simulation points. Congratulations, your simulator level has increased to level 3. The changes to the simulator are as follows. 1. The maximum number of simulations is increased to 7. 2. You can exchange up to 3 times at the end. 3. You can spend 1 point to refresh the content of one option during the simulation. 4. At the end of the simulation, you receive a base point reward of plus 3 points. The additional features of the upgrade are not bad. Sometimes, Shuchin is not satisfied with the options. Now, you can spend 1 point to get an extra choice, which can have a good effect in some situations. Please select the reward to be exchanged in the real world. Each option can be exchanged up to 3 times. 1. 20 gold coins, 1 point, 2. Increase self-level by 1, 10 points, 3. Holy Fire LV1, 10 points, Chuchin currently has a total of 33 points. The Holy Fire that requires 10 points to exchange is a bronze level skill and is the skill of a holy profession. In this simulation, Chuchin also noticed some abnormalities in the details of the battle. Divine arts are essentially spells, special spells created by the goddess. In theory, as long as you master the corresponding incantations and spell models, a mage can also cast them. When Chuchin releases divine arts, it is not a form of stealing the goddess's divine arts through a transaction, but rather borrowing the spell models stored in the system for release. The principle is somewhat similar to releasing divine arts, but it does not go through the goddess's divine nature. The system is Chuchin's alternative divine nature. Therefore, even during the projection battle with the goddess, she cannot prevent Chuchin from releasing divine arts. System, can you provide spell models for others to cast spells as a divine nature? Chuchin suddenly had an idea. This system is exclusive to the host and cannot execute this command at the moment. When can it be executed? According to the current world rules, the host's strength needs to reach at least the peak of the sixth rank before the system can be used as a divine nature. At that time, faith power can be exchanged for points. In the current power system, the fifth rank is already the limit for mortals. For the faith system, if the divine fire is further ignited, it can break through the fifth rank limit and enter the realm of the six. Fifth rank demigod. By tempering the whole body with the divine fire, one can begin to condense the divine nature and become a seventh rank lower god. As for the cultivation system of the demon race, it mainly relies on demon cores. When humans reach the limit of the fifth rank, they either transform their own race into demons and condense demon cores, or they have to follow the path of faith and ignite the divine fire. Every battle between gods and demons is an opportunity for fifth rank powerhouses to break through. With the system, Chuchin can skip the troublesome process of condensing the divine nature. Chuchin couldn't wait to level up. He exchanged two levels of his own level with points and also learned the holy fire skill. 
he still added the attribute points he obtained from leveling up to his mental power. Once he reaches 50 mental power, he can control the magic sword to a certain extent. Currently, each level of the black iron rank only has one attribute point, while each level of the bronze rank has two points, so the progress will be much faster. The failure of this simulation made Chuchin realize the risks associated with being a fake priest. He decided to try a low-level return rate to see if it would cause any adverse reactions. System, start the simulation. There was not much difference in the options compared to the last time. This time, Chuchin chose a 25% return rate for prayer. With your help, Anna's contribution to faith is rapidly increasing. The goddess's divine nature did not detect your existence, and Anna successfully gained the right to use divine arts. The divine nature is not a sophisticated computer system on earth, and even the most sophisticated computer systems have many vulnerabilities. The divine nature does not pay special attention to such trivial matters, and in fact, it is a backdoor behavior tacitly approved by the goddess. After gaining the right to use divine arts, Anna is very grateful to you. She has gained the right to use the divine art purification. The purification art can dispel evil and is extremely effective against evil spirits and can also remove some negative effects such as curses. The contribution value of the believers will be consumed not only when using divine arts but also when obtaining the rights to use various divine arts. Anna, who has mastered divine arts, continues to pray. You feel that it is a waste of time, but you quickly realize that it is not. Prayer is also a kind of alternative meditation. Through prayer, the believer's mental power will gradually increase. I see. Chuchin continued to view the simulation, lost in thought. You continue to follow Princess Catherine's team and there are no unexpected incidents along the way. Soon, you arrive at the holy city. Catherine invites you to the palace and promises to reward you. You choose. 1. Follow Princess Catherine and go to the palace with Anna. 2. Refuse Princess Catherine and go to the church first to register Anna as an apprentice priest. 3. Follow Princess Catherine and let Anna go to the palace. Chu Chen wants to know what will happen to Anna in the church and if her identity will be suspected. You refuse Princess Catherine. You and Anna arrive at the Holy City Church together. Your priest badge is genuine, and your and Anna's divine skills are enough to prove your devotion. The bishop in charge of managing the priests registers Anna. As Anna's cross-national teacher, you also register at the Holy Light Church of the New Moon Kingdom. The Holy City Church has a monastery dedicated to training priests. The bishop suggests that Anna stay and study there, and only through various assessments can she become a formal priest. You can also leave Anna to study with you and directly participate in the assessment later. Most priests in the New Moon Kingdom, whether for learning or to meet people in the circle, come here to study for a period of time during their apprenticeship. You plan to practice in the holy city for a long time. As for Anna, you decide. 1. Let Anna follow you to practice and come for the assessment on the assessment day. 2. Let Anna stay in the monastery, learn orthodox doctrine, and meet more people. 3. Stay together and study in the monastery. Chu Chen wants to conduct a stress test to see if his abnormal identity will be noticed when he enters the monastery. You reveal your identity to the bishop and tell him that you want to investigate the New Moon Kingdom's Episcopal Church and stay here for a while. After knowing that you saved Barbara, the bishop warmly welcomes you, agrees to let you stay, and arranges a separate villa for you. Barbara visits after a few days, and her strength has greatly increased. Although Barbara is only a candidate saint and has not been officially chosen as a saint, candidate saints also have powerful talents within the church. Saints receive a large amount of resources from the church, which can quickly enhance their physical strength and enable them to withstand the descent of the gods for a long time. Although candidate saints do not have such high treatment, they are strengthened to a level just below that. In the New Moon Kingdom, there are two female priests selected as candidates for the Holy Light Church. In addition to Barbara from the border town, there is also Hilary, the granddaughter of the Grand Archbishop of the Holy City. The Grand Archbishop seems to not want his granddaughter to be chosen, so he pays special attention to and takes care of Barbara hoping that she will be chosen as the saint. Barbara still thinks about Leotes in her heart and asks you to return the ring to her. You choose. 1. Refuse to return it, warn Barbara that candidate saints cannot marry or fall in love until the war between gods and demons is over. 2. Return the ring and bless them, hoping they can be together in the end. 3. Return the ring and ask Barbara to pay an equivalent amount of money. Chu Chen is not satisfied with any of the three options and decides to spend one point to refresh the options. Please select the option you want to refresh. The refreshed content will be adjusted to a certain extent based on the option. After thinking for a moment, Chu Chun chooses the first option. 1. Refuse to return it and tell Barbara that Leotis has long forgotten her and is now pursuing Princess Catherine. Also, 
tell her about turning Leotis into a eunuch. Xu Chun chooses option 1, and this refreshed option has a stronger impact. You inform Barbara about the true face and current situation of Leotis, but she finds it hard to accept and goes to find Leotis for confirmation. Leotis hates you to the core and deceives Barbara again with sweet words. Barbara doesn't want to become a saint and wants to be with Leotis, even though he is disabled. Faced with the eunuch Leotis, Barbara has no choice but to come to you, hoping you can help her remove her identity as a saint candidate. You choose. 1. Accept on the surface and secretly report Barbara and Leotis to the church, then capture them in the act of infidelity at the right moment. 2. Accept gladly and find a place to remove Barbara's virginity, thus disqualifying her as a saint candidate. 3. Refuse to take action personally and let Barbara hide her identity and find someone in Fongua Street to solve the problem herself. Xu Chen didn't expect Barbara to be so persistent, willing to abandon her faith for the person she loves and accept severe punishment. Barbara is even more beautiful than before, and her strength has also improved. I wonder when we can have a real encounter. How about 20 points next time? You gladly accept Barbara's request. Since Barbara cannot leave the church, you choose to complete the ritual with her in your villa. Barbara gets lost in your exquisite skills, and in order not to be discovered, you hastily end the ritual. Afterward, Barbara informs Leotis of her sacrifice, which causes him to collapse. He had hoped that Barbara would become a saint and show him mercy to help him heal. An angry Leotis asks if Barbara completed the ritual with you and directly reports it to the church, accusing you of forcibly humiliating the saint. Barbara defends you, but to no avail. Both you and Barbara are put on the stake, but this punishment is more severe than you imagined. You and Barbara are burned to ashes. Your student Anna is implicated. After your death, she is captured and subjected to various abuses and interrogations in the dungeon. By the time Princess Catherine rescues her, she has already suffered a mental breakdown. Simulation ends. Your courage is admirable, defiling the saint candidate of the Holy Light Church. No one will forgive your actions. Perhaps you should find another place. Overall score, 28 points. Earn 28 simulation experience points and 28 plus 3 simulation points. Please select the rewards you want to exchange for in the real world. Each option can be exchanged up to 3 times 1. 20 gold coins, 1 point. 2. Increase your own level by 1, 10 points. 3. Increase the level of holy fire by 1, 10 points. This time, there are quite a few points. Xu Chen directly adds them all to his level. Points, minus 30. Congratulations, your level has increased to LV10, and you have gained 3 free attribute points. The promotion task has been released. Completing the task can promote your rank to bronze and unlock a higher level limit. Xu Chen opens the task, which is not difficult. Task name, bronze promotion. Task requirements, 1. Have 100 points. 2. Have 1 bronze level magic core. 3. Have 1 bronze level soul stone. Task Description The bronze magic core is used to strengthen the body, and the bronze soul stone is used to strengthen the soul. Xu Chen already has the bronze magic core, and with more simulations, he can accumulate enough points. Only the soul stone is relatively troublesome. The soul stone is a controlled item used to temporarily store the souls of the deceased. It is often used by necromancers and is therefore under strict control. Buying it is very troublesome. If it is a soul stone already filled with a soul, it becomes a prohibited item. Any transaction will be punished by the law and hunted down by numerous churches. Xu Chen may be able to buy an empty soul stone with the help of Catherine, but filling it with a soul is more difficult. It may require killing a professional with bronze level spiritual power on the spot, but for Xu Chen, it might be simple. As long as he obtains the soul stone in the simulation, he will have the opportunity to exchange it for the soul stone after the simulation ends. Xu Chen's consciousness returned to reality. Looking at Anna praying, he reached out to help once again. Anna, let me pray with you. Maybe it can give you early access to divine magic. Okay, thank you. Anna obediently came to Chu Chen's side, sitting next to him and voluntarily reached out her hand, tightly holding Chu Chen's hand just like before. Chu Chen's heart stirred, this time is different from before, it needs to go further. Further, further? Yes, don't worry, soon you will be able to master divine magic. Chu Chen's hand rested on Anna's cheek. Anna's face blushed like a cherry, but she didn't dare to resist for fear of missing the opportunity and making Chu Chen angry. Not bad, not bad, Chu Chen said satisfied. I mean your talent is good, now let's start praying. In the next few days, there were no abnormal situations, just like during the simulation. After Chu Chen intervened, Anna mastered the divine magic purification and they prayed together multiple times. The team successfully arrived at the holy city, and Chu Chen's simulation count reached July 7th. 
Princess Catherine looked at the familiar holy city and breathed a sigh of relief. She turned to Chu Chen and said, Chu Chen, let's go to the palace first. The bestowal of the barren title requires a process. One of the main reasons why Chu Chen was burned alive by the church before was because he didn't have a noble status, he was just a foreign priest. Now, if he obtains the barren title of the new moon kingdom, even if there are conflicts with the church of the holy light in the future, they will have to consider it. I will follow your orders respectfully, Chu Chen said with a smile. Anna hurriedly said, teacher, what about me? Can I go with you? Anna is still just an apprentice priest, and there is no record of her in the church. Although she can directly register with her divine magic, it would mean losing her master-disciple relationship with Chu Chen. She might even be assigned to another priest for an internship, which is not what Anna wants. Catherine has already promised Chu Chen that she won't force him to do anything, so Anna is not afraid to go to the palace. Before Chu Chen could answer, Catherine spoke up, of course, no problem. There are many empty palaces in the palace anyway, I will arrange the most luxurious one for you. Chu Chen also nodded, there's no rush with the church for now. You will need to stay there to study the doctrine later, and by then you won't have time. It's better to explore the city for a few days. As for studying the doctrine, Chu Chen had already asked Anna's opinion on the way, and she said she would follow Chu Chen's arrangements. Chu Chen himself doesn't understand the doctrine, so he chose to let Anna study it. On one hand, it wouldn't affect her future development, and on the other hand, if Chu Chen becomes a god in the future, he can make Anna his own priest. Some necessary knowledge is still necessary. Anna has great potential, and her spiritual power grows quickly. In this world, people usually start mental cultivation after reaching the age of 14, when their brains have developed to a certain extent. Anna is 16 years old this year and has been meditating and practicing on her own for two years. Her spiritual power was recently measured to be twice that of an ordinary person, about 10 points. The early stage of spiritual power cultivation is the most difficult, and the speed will be faster after surpassing 10 points. Catherine is a mage herself, and she reached this level at the age of 17, already being called a genius. This is also one of the important reasons why Catherine values Anna and wants to obtain her. However, a genius who hasn't grown up is still just a weakling. With the imminent invasion of the demon realm, Catherine cannot wait for Anna to grow up. She needs to quickly gather various forces and launch a coup to seize the throne. The two followed Princess Catherine to the gate of the palace, while Leotes and some members of the Knight Order from the church returned to report. Catherine brought the two of them to the reception area for VIPs and arranged two adjacent rooms for them. Xu Chen's mount was taken to a dedicated stable. You can rest here for now, or explore the nearby area or the palace grounds. Here is a pass which allows you to freely move around the reception area in the palace. I will report this trip to my father, and I will come find you tomorrow. After Princess Catherine left, the two of them went into the house to freshen up and rest. They had been on the road the whole way, and the bumpy carriage ride made it difficult to fall asleep. Chu Chun used meditation as a substitute for sleep. Now, he could finally get a good night's sleep. Chu Chen woke up around 7 in the evening, having slept straight through from noon. He opened the door and went outside where Anna was playing with a well-behaved little cat in the courtyard. Teacher, you're awake. Anna hurried over when she saw Chu Chen. Hmm, I was thinking of taking a walk outside the palace. Would you like to come with me? It's boring to go alone. He had already used up his simulation limit for the day, and he wasn't afraid of encountering danger outside. If he didn't use it, it would go to waste by midnight. Hee hee, of course I wanna go. Anna would soon enter seclusion at the monastery for a period of intensive study. She only had one day off each week, so she cherished the remaining time she had with Chu Chen. Chu Chen left the palace with the pass. The holy city truly lived up to its name as the capital of the Crescent Moon Kingdom, with lights still shining brightly even at night. For most people, daytime was for work or going out, while nighttime was for true rest and entertainment. The holy city was the name given by the followers of the Holy Light Church to the headquarters of the National Church. In reality, the capital of the Crescent Moon Kingdom was called Shambhala and was renowned as a paradise on earth. Shambhala was a famous tourist city on the continent, known for its hot springs, fine wine, and proximity to the elven forest. The relationship between the Crescent Moon Kingdom and the elven race was very harmonious. The elves provided the kingdom with mage training services and magical equipment trade, while the kingdom supplied the elven forest with a large amount of basic supplies and legal protection. The kingdom strictly prohibited the slave trade of the elven race within its borders, and even nobles would face punishment if found to be harboring elven slaves. Furthermore, the elven race offered limited tours of the elven forest exclusively to the kingdom. As long as one had a good reputation, paid a hefty fee and deposit, they could enjoy a pleasant vacation in the elven forest. 
This was extremely rare throughout the entire continent and attracted many wealthy individuals who were curious about and fascinated by the elven race. If one was lucky, they might even spark a romantic flame with an elven beauty. Princess Catherine's mother was an elf from the elven forest, and she played a significant role in the harmonious relationship between the Crescent Moon Kingdom and the elven race. I'm a little hungry. Let's eat something first. Do you know any good restaurants in the capital? Xu Chen opened his mouth and asked. Anna has read many books and is very familiar with the local customs of Shangbala. She also followed her father on a trip when she was a child. Lionheart Inn is the liveliest and most popular chain inn in the city for adventurers. But if you don't like noise and prefer exquisite cuisine, you can experience the charm of the elves at the Starry Inn. However, the prices there will be relatively expensive, around 10 gold coins per person. If you want to taste the elven fruit wine, the price will be even higher. Anna continued, the waiters in the hotel are all beautiful half-elves, and you can often see elves dining there. Chu Chen smiled and said, then let's go to this one. I'll treat you today. Chu Chen still had over a thousand gold coins in his hand, which was equivalent to one million copper coins. He wanted to try a meal that cost twenty thousand. The two arrived at the entrance of the Starry Inn. The Starry Inn was shaped like a tall treehouse with five floors. The treehouse was not a man-made structure but was built by the elves using plant magic after nurturing many tree species with a lot of effort. As soon as the two arrived at the door, they were stopped. Sir, please show your membership card. We are a members-only restaurant, and only those who meet the requirements can dine here. We apologize for any inconvenience caused. Xu Chen thought it was not bad. He asked, how can I apply for a membership card? The half-elf waiter smiled and said, the simplest way to apply for a membership card is to recharge with 100 gold coins. If you are a professional and have reached the bronze level, you can also apply. Because the relationship between the elven goddess and the goddess of light is excellent, if you are a priest, you can apply with the iron level. The waiter looked at the badge on Chu Chen's chest and smiled kindly. Then please. The half-elf waiter led Chu Chen to the reception room, where Chu Chen's information was registered and the authenticity of the priest badge was confirmed before a special material membership card was handed to Chu Chen. This is a special material developed by our elven race. It can be recognized by injecting spiritual power. If you spend more than 30 gold coins in the store today, you don't need to pay the 5 gold coin fee for the membership card. The amount spent will be recorded as points on the membership card, and you can use the points to deduct 10% of the next consumption. Chu Chen took the membership card and injected spiritual power into it, and the membership card quickly lit up and emitted a faint light. If it were an ordinary person, a more expensive membership card would be required so that the membership card could independently authenticate the identity without the customer inputting spiritual power. Although it was just a simple membership card, it allowed Chu Chen to see the extraordinary magical technology of this world. The New Moon Kingdom was only a medium-sized kingdom, and in those large empires and magic kingdoms, there would probably be even more magical black technology. Chu Chen took Anna to the third floor. Although the fourth and fifth floors had better views, they required reservations. The third floor was already higher than most buildings in the city, so they could enjoy the night market of Shangbala while dining elegantly. Another half-elf waiter was in charge of dining reception. She presented a beautifully crafted menu, which was embedded with a magic core. Sir, this is your first visit, please allow me to explain. Xu Chen nodded in agreement, and the other person pressed a button on the menu, and instantly, the images on the menu appeared in a three-dimensional form in front of the two. How amazing! Anna couldn't help but exclaim. Although Chu Chen thought it was good, he was not too surprised as he had seen and experienced many things. How about transferring to the study of magic? Chu Chen asked with a smile. Anna quickly shook her head and said unhappily, Teacher, are you testing my devotion to the goddess? I will not give up my faith. No, 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 everyone has the right to decide their own future. It was just a temporary measure at that time. Take a few more days to think about it. Although I am a priest, I have never given up on practicing magic. A fireball rose in Chu Chen's hand, which amazed Anna. Sir, please refrain from using dangerous fire magic. The treehouse is prone to catching fire. The waiter hurriedly intervened, afraid of any accidents. Chu Chen smiled and put away the fireball, then proceeded to order food. The dishes at the Star Tavern were cheaper than expected, but the portions were not large, so it would cost quite a bit to get full. Generally, this place was more suitable for having dessert and chatting with people after a meal. Chu Chen was not someone who liked to save money. With the simulator in his hand, he was not lacking in funds, and now that he had arrived in the relatively safe holy city, he could enjoy himself. Xu Chun ordered several dishes he liked, as well as a bottle of fruit wine worth 15 gold coins. Anna, having seen the world, was not scared by these prices, 
and she also knew that Chu Chen had money and didn't need to be polite. Together, they ordered dishes worth 50 gold coins, which would be enough to cover the expenses of a family of four in Pancher Town for a whole year. As one exquisite dish after another was served, the two of them, who had been hungry for a long time, enjoyed themselves happily. Would you like some fruit wine? Chu Chen poured half a glass for himself and asked. Anna was a bit excited, I just came of age and haven't had any alcohol yet. If I get drunk, you have to send me back. Of course, no problem. Elven fruit wine had a low alcohol content and a very refreshing taste. Closing her eyes, it felt as if birds were soaring in the forest. Anna quickly became infatuated with this feeling and ended up drinking most of the bottle of wine during the meal. Just as the two of them were enjoying their dessert after the meal, a loud noise suddenly came from a distance, interrupting their tranquility. What's going on? Chu Chen looked out the window and saw a group of people fighting in the street. Chu Chen took a closer look and was surprised to see that Leo this was the one being besieged. The capital city is indeed different. Even the Holy Knights dare to attack, Anna recognized the identity of the other party and couldn't help but sigh. The waiter in charge of serving Chu Chen's table came forward to answer their doubts. Mr. Chu Chen, the ones attacking the Holy Knights are also Holy Knights from within the Holy Light Church. The leader is the Silver Holy Knight, Gulen. I see. Do they have any grudges? Chu Chen casually asked. There were many internal conflicts and factions within the Holy Light Church, so this was not something new. The waiter hesitated a bit, looking at the priest's badge on Chu Chen's chest and his indifferent attitude towards Leo this, before finally speaking up. Leo this and Gulen are both young elites of the Holy Light Church. They both have feelings for Princess Catherine and often have conflicts because of her. Leo this is younger and more talented than Gulen, but Gulen's father is a bishop and has more power within the Holy Light Church. I heard that Leo this was unfortunate enough to be injured while escorting Princess Catherine, and he also lost some limbs. It seems that Lord Gulen must have provoked him after encountering him. The battle in the distance became more intense, but the surrounding crowd of onlookers did not step forward to stop it. Even the city guards deliberately stayed outside the crowd. Battles involving silver-level professionals were not common, so it was quite entertaining to watch as a bystander. However, Xu Chen had already simulated too many times and was about to refresh, so he decided to use one simulation to see what would happen. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial ability. 1. Cross slash level plus 1, 5 points, 2. Holy Light Shield level plus 1, 10 points, 3. Sacred Fire level plus 1, 10 points, 4. Free Simulation, 20 points, perhaps due to the impending battle, all the initial abilities Chu Chen could simulate this time were combat skills. Chu Chen didn't want to exchange for temporary abilities before a battle unless they had a significant impact on the outcome. A battle within the Holy Light Church is taking place. It has nothing to do with you, but it is a good opportunity for you to choose a faction and take a stance. What do you decide? 1. Help Leo this, who belongs to the princess and the grand bishop faction. 2. Helping Gulan, he is the eldest prince and a follower of Bishop Douglas. 3. They both didn't help, but stepped forward to stop the fight from escalating further. Chu Chen's reputation is not prominent at the moment, he is just a black iron level priest, and no one cares which faction he belongs to. But as he completes the promotion task and becomes a bronze level priest, he will soon attract some attention within the church. Chu Chen chooses to step forward and help. You reveal your identity as a priest, and everyone makes way for you. At this time, Leothes has already launched a powerful spell, causing Gu Lan and his three followers to retreat. If this continues, Gu Lan will be embarrassed. Fortunately, you appear on the scene and stop Leothes from taking further action. Leothes, who has calmed down, doesn't want to go too far and face more retaliation. He gives you face and interrupts the fight. After Leothes leaves, Gulan is very grateful for your help and invites you to dine at the Star Tavern. When Gulan sees Anna, his eyes become infatuated, and his attitude towards you subtly changes. When he learns that Anna is about to go to the monastery for study, he is overjoyed. His father, Bishop Douglas, is one of the responsible persons in the monastery. Gulan and his friends keep toasting to you and Anna, and both of you get a little drunk. Gulan suggests taking you to experience the charm of other races, and you decide. 1. Follow Gulan to Fongyue Street, taste the exotic girls, and let his followers escort Anna back to the palace. 2. Take Anna with you to Fongyue Street, perhaps something interesting will happen. 3. Refuse to go and escort Anna back to the palace, ending the simulation. Fongyue Street is not a place for Anna to go, and Chu Chen is not very willing to end the simulation early. The first option seems problematic but Chu Chen doesn't want to waste points refreshing options. He wants to see what will happen. You choose to follow Gulan to Fongyue Street, 
and Gulan lets his followers escort Anna back to the palace. On the way, you feel a little uneasy, but Gulan introduces many interesting girls to you, which excites you. You are taken to a shop specializing in cat-eared girls. You hesitate for a moment but soon get lost in the meowing sounds. The next day, you return to the palace, but you can't find Anna. The gatekeeper didn't see Anna return last night. You anxiously go to the church to look for Anna, but Gulan sends someone to show you two crystal images. One of them records the image of your battle last night, and Gulan threatens you not to look for Anna again, otherwise he will make the image public and ruin your reputation. The other crystal shows Anna's encounter after being taken elsewhere. Anna's face is full of tears, and she keeps calling your name. The other party says that Anna is already Gu Lan's woman and has nothing to do with you in the future. Faced with Gu Lan's threat, you choose. 1. Draw the magic sword and break into the church to find and kill Gu Lan. 2. Humble yourself and express obedience, hoping to receive the other party's care in the future. 3. Take the crystal and seek the help of Princess Catherine and Leothes. Chu Chen is speechless. He just wanted to go to Fongiwe Street to see a high-quality adult animation, but he ended up as the victim. These holy knights are really inhuman, and this Gulan is too arrogant. Although this is only a simulated ending, Xu Chen's anger towards Gulan is real. Xu Chen really wants to draw the magic sword and break into the church, but leaving aside whether Gulan is in the church or not, even if he is blessed by the magic sword, his strength is at most at the golden level. In the Holy Light Church, where there are many experts, once someone with a magic sword breaks in, they will likely be killed before they even see anyone. You engage in a fierce battle with the opponent, and after defeating them, you seek to find Princess Catherine with the image of Anna being humiliated. Princess Catherine is furious and informs the Archbishop, then leads soldiers to enter the church to find Douglas. Douglas was prepared in advance and accuses you of being the culprit. Since Galen does not appear in the image sphere and Anna calls your name, the owner of the cat ear and also provides false testimony, proving that you did not come last night, and you cannot defend yourself. Faced with the imminent arrest and interrogation, you, filled with shame and anger, draw your magic sword and kill Galen in the chaos, but then you are killed by the people of the church. Simulation ends where there is light, there is shadow. Darkness is everywhere. You should not trust those who claim to be righteous. Overall score, 13 points obtain 13 points of simulation experience, obtain 13 plus 3 points of simulation points please select the reward you want to exchange for in the real world one. Cross slash level plus 1, 5 points 2. Holy Light Shield level plus 1, 10 points 3. Sacred Fire level plus 1, 10 points Chu Chen is unwilling and wants to kill Galen immediately. He adds all 20 points to the Holy Light Shield, then starts the simulation again and chooses to help Leo this. You reveal your identity as a priest and come to the front of the battlefield Leothus forces the opponent to retreat, but Galen's counterattack is fierce. Continuing the fight would result in victory but also serious injuries to oneself. You cast a healing spell on Leo this and then put a holy shield on him. Leothus is relieved of worries and unleashes a powerful force, knocking Galen's sword away. Galen falls to the ground with a furious look at you, an outsider. Leothus expresses gratitude to you and invites you to the Lionheart Inn. After escorting Anna back to the palace, you go to the Lionheart Inn with him. Leothus considers you a friend, and that night you both drink a lot. He suggests escorting you back to the palace to avoid retaliation from Galen. You choose. 1. Accept the escort and return to the palace too. Refuse the escort and return alone 3. Stay at the inn and not return to the palace tonight Galen is a vengeful person, and Chu Chen's actions will surely provoke his retaliation. Leothus escorts you back to the outside of the palace, and you safely return inside the palace the next morning. Princess Catherine finds you and takes you to participate in the king's meeting the king bestows upon you the title of baron, making you a new noble of the Crescent Kingdom and invites you to the queen's birthday banquet tonight the queen is not princess catherine's mother catherine's elven mother is just a concubine compared to the powerful influence of the queen's family catherine's mother's status among the elves is not high she was just an ordinary elf who traveled on the continent when the king married her decades ago the poor elven girl thought she could have a beautiful love with the prince but shortly after the prince became king he married the current queen in order to establish friendship between the elves and the crescent kingdom she reluctantly stayed after Catherine was born, she never shared a bed with the king again. Catherine's idea of usurping the throne is more or less influenced by her mother. That night, you participate in the banquet during the banquet. The king announces that Princess Catherine will be married to the prince of a neighboring country in exchange for their help in resisting the future invasion of the demon realm Princess Catherine wants to refuse, but all the courtiers remain silent. Even those who have sided with her dare not speak up for her most of the nobles who support Catherine have not been invited and the remaining nobles are watching during the time. 
Princess Catherine is away, some things happen that she is unaware of the situation is not good, and in her desperation, Princess Catherine lies and claims that she has already had a relationship with you and privately agreed to a lifelong commitment everyone's gaze turns to you, and you choose. 1. Expose Princess Catherine's lie and persuade her to serve the country well too. He stepped forward and took Princess Catherine's hand, indicating their relationship. 3. He begged the king for mercy, stating that he was forced by the princess and also apply for national compensation. You exposed Catherine's lie and persuaded her to serve the country. The king admired your determination and despised your character. Baron Chu Chen's identity was obtained with the help of Princess Catherine, but now he has betrayed her. This is a taboo for the king. However, Chu Chen doesn't think that holding hands with Princess Catherine will lead to any good results. The most likely outcome is being subjected to mental spells such as truth detection or hypnosis. Catherine's lie was exposed, and she angrily left the banquet. That night, Catherine received an urgent report from the Queen's messenger. Her mother mysteriously disappeared while traveling to the elven forest to visit. Catherine knew that this was the Queen's doing and wanted to use her mother to threaten her to leave. As a half-elf, she understood that she was in a hopeless situation and that those who were once on her side would not be able to help her now. Helplessly, Catherine finally found you. She didn't know what to do now, and you suggested. 1. Persuade Princess Catherine to kill the Crown Prince and the Queen to completely eliminate future troubles. 2. Persuade Princess Catherine to marry a prince from a neighboring country and lead an army to attack and occupy the New Moon Kingdom for revenge. 3. Persuade Princess Catherine to return to the Elven Forest and launch a coup with the help of the Elven Tribe. Assisting in a coup would only bring disaster to the Elven Tribe, and the Elven Tribe would not help Catherine with such actions. The best solution now is for her to marry a prince from a neighboring country and then lead an army to occupy the New Moon Kingdom in the name of avenging her mother. However, the problem is that the New Moon Kingdom is one of the front lines against the invasion of the Demon Realm, and it is unlikely that the neighboring country will send troops at this time. You persuaded Princess Catherine to kill the Crown Prince and the Queen, but she hesitated to act because her mother was captured. The next day, Princess Catherine was placed under house arrest by the King, and you could no longer contact her. Soon after, the welcoming party of the neighboring prince arrived, and Princess Catherine committed suicide in front of the welcoming party. Later, Catherine's mother returned from the elven forest, and she had not disappeared. It was all a scheme by the queen. The simulation ends. You chose the wrong team in the chaos, but fortunately, you didn't do anything too extreme and didn't suffer any misfortune as a result. Overall score, 15 points. You gained 15 points of simulation experience and 15 plus 3 simulation points. The score is a bit low, and Chu Chen did not exchange but stayed behind. He felt deeply sorry for the princess's experience but it was difficult to help her and profit from it. As for offending Gulen to help Leotes, he had no intention of doing so. The battle in the distance ended with both sides suffering losses. The city guards began to disperse the crowd, and the onlookers quickly dispersed. When Chu Chen arrived at the Star Tavern, he happened to encounter Leotes, who was dragging his injured body. The previous battle had exhausted his mental power and now he could no longer heal himself and could faint at any moment. He glanced at Chu Chen, said nothing, and then walked straight towards the distance. Go back, this holy city is not that safe. Early the next morning, Princess Catherine found Chu Chen. Chu Chen, come with me to the council hall. Today, father will grant you the title of baron. Catherine said with a smile on her face. She had no idea what was about to happen to her. Chu Chen couldn't refuse his title but he could skip the banquet, and he planned to leave the palace and not stay here anymore. Thank you, your highness. Congratulations on your wedding. Chu Chen said something confusing. Princess Catherine frowned and asked, Chu Chen, what do you mean? How am I getting married? There were only the two of them in the room. Chu Chen smiled and said, yesterday, while I was wandering around, I heard a rumor that the king intends to marry you off to the prince of the Rhine Kingdom. Is this just a rumor? And I also heard that your mother was furious about it and ran back to the elven forest in anger. It shouldn't be false. The adventurer even claimed to have seen your mother enter the elven forest with his own eyes. Catherine couldn't help but freeze, as countless thoughts flashed through her mind. After she returned yesterday, she didn't just sleep it off. After completing her report, she contacted some ministers from her own camp. At the time, she felt that their reactions were a bit strange, and now, thinking back, it seemed even more suspicious. Has my mother already returned to the elven forest? That's good. Catherine secretly breathed a sigh of relief. What's wrong, your highness? You don't know about it? Chu Chen asked knowingly. Catherine Princess was honest. I just got back and didn't know. I will refuse the marriage. I'm afraid it won't be that easy. After all, this is a matter of national survival. 
If you rashly back out, the Rhine Kingdom might become furious. Catherine took a deep breath and pretended everything was fine. Let's go to the council hall first. I'll ask my father about this later. Chu Chin didn't think she would be able to find out anything, but if he wanted to change her fate, he only had today. Chu Chin planned to go to the council hall first and see what was happening. The reception area for dignitaries was not far from the council hall and often received foreign guests. The king's council was much more humane than the morning court of feudal dynasties on earth. Ministers and important personnel sat at a large round table. Even small nobles could sit slightly further away from the round table and have a decent chair, without having to kneel and bow to the king like servants in TV dramas. This mainly depended on the system. Many of the territories of the Crescent Moon Kingdom had already been allocated to the nobles, who had private soldiers and dominion over their territories. The king, to some extent, was just the largest lord among them and had the right to collect taxes from all the lords. The king's council was composed of members of many major noble families. On important matters, all members would vote and decide the fate of the country. Otherwise, if these major nobles did not cooperate, many things could not be carried out. Once the vote was completed, nobles who did not comply would be boycotted and condemned by all. In the vote, the royal family had the most votes, and the family of the queen also had quite a few. The combination of the two could determine the direction of many things. If Catherine's matter was decided by the king and queen without being discussed in the council, perhaps other nobles would not interfere. But now that Catherine already knew in advance and decided to resist, it would undoubtedly have an impact on the relationship between the two countries. Perhaps I should suggest that Catherine directly propose a vote on this matter, and there may be hope to reverse the outcome? Chu Chen, sitting behind the princess, planned to give it a try. System, start the simulation. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial ability. 1. Crescent Moon Kingdom's Noble Secrets, 1.2. Crescent Moon Kingdom's Church Secrets, 1.3. Fireball Spell Level Plus 1, 5 points, 4. Free Simulation, 20 points. Chu Chen's eyes lit up as he looked at the attendees with a meaningful smile, and then exchanged for the first option. You have learned the secrets of many nobles in the Crescent Moon Kingdom, and the darkness and ugliness among them disgust you. You are about to become one of them. The king has bestowed upon you the title of baron, but because you have no territory and your title is too low, you do not have the right to vote. The king's council is about to begin, and the major nobles will vote on national affairs. You have been granted permission to observe this vote. You decide. 1. You are not interested and choose to leave here early. 2. You tell Catherine about the secrets of the nobles and persuade her to take the opportunity to initiate a vote on the marriage. 3. You choose to wait and see, Catherine seems to also intend to ask about this matter on the spot and provide information when needed, you will get more benefits. Chu Chen did not rush to persuade Catherine, after all, Catherine is not even sure if Chu Chen's information is accurate. You choose to wait and see, sure enough, after all the topics were discussed, Catherine stepped forward and asked about the hidden marriage alliance with the Rhine Kingdom in front of everyone. King Richard looked embarrassed, but did not suspect you, but suspected that someone among his trusted aides leaked the information. Only a few people knew about this plan, and many nobles in the venue expressed surprise. The king had no choice but to admit it. Catherine firmly refused and demanded a vote on the issue. The king was worried about failure and unwilling to hold a vote. Catherine stated that she would kill the prince of the Rhine Kingdom unless the majority of people supported the alliance in the vote. King Richard had no choice but to initiate a vote on the issue, but because the issue had just been raised, many people were unaware, so the vote would take place tomorrow morning. Many nobles supported Catherine, and the queen used this as a reason to persuade the king to send Catherine away to prevent future rebellious intentions. In addition to the nobles who supported Catherine, there were also many nobles who were dissatisfied with the queen's family using royal power to encroach on their interests, so the vote might not be in favor of the king. The king wanted to win over more nobles in this day's time, and Catherine also wanted to change her own fate in this day's time. After the meeting was announced to be over, Catherine made a speech in front of everyone, stating that if she were to marry, it would greatly affect the relationship with the elven race. Catherine is the descendant of King Richard of the Elven Fish Kingdom, representing the friendship between the two races. The series of protective laws for the elves in the New Moon Kingdom were the result of her mother's efforts. If she were to be forced into a marriage without her consent, it would negate the protection laws. King Richard's reason for the alliance was to seek help from neighboring countries, but history has proven countless times that there are only interests between nations, and marriage alliances cannot truly bring help. After the dissolution, Catherine expressed gratitude to you and asked for your help in persuading more nobles to support her. You choose. 1. Help Catherine and personally persuade the nobles who may oppose her with the nobles' secrets. 2. 
Help Catherine by giving her the noble's secrets and let her handle it herself. 3. Stay out of it and see if Catherine can succeed without your help. In several simulations conducted in the capital, he, who had the simulator, could gain benefits in the chaos or stay out of all risks. The noble's secrets are the scandals, weaknesses, and secrets that the nobles do not want others to know. It is dangerous to threaten others with this information. You give the noble's secrets to Catherine and tell her that you don't want too many people to pay attention to you. Catherine treasures the secrets and looks at you with admiration. Princess Catherine made a list of people she needs to persuade and delegated some of the work to her confidants while personally persuading others. Early the next morning, almost all the representatives of the nobles in the city and local nobles participated in this royal council. The news of the princess being forced into a political marriage spread throughout the city. Due to the princess's excellent reputation, most of the public supported her. Even though the king tried to persuade the nobles with various benefits, the nobles' secrets played a role, and many nobles changed their decision to support Catherine. Catherine won with an absolute advantage, and King Richard became more worried about his daughter seizing the throne. Compared to the dissolute crown prince, Catherine surpassed him in both cultivation and management abilities. However, King Richard was able to become king largely due to the help of the queen's family, and he had not been a king enough and had no intention of abdicating early. The Kingdom of Lane is very dissatisfied with the annulment from the Kingdom of New Moon and demands payment of 1 million gold coins as compensation. The Kingdom of New Moon refuses to compensate, and the Prince of Lane leads his army to the border of the two countries. Princess Catherine personally goes and defeats the Prince of Lane in a duel. The simulation ends. The focus of this simulation was on Princess Catherine, and it ended directly after her crisis was temporarily resolved. You reversed the tragedy of Princess Catherine with intelligence and information. In her heart, you are her true love, but unfortunately, your abilities have not met her requirements. Overall score, 26 points. Earn 26 simulation experience points and 26 plus 3 simulation points. Please choose the reward you want to exchange for in the real world. 1. Noble Secrets of the Kingdom of New Moon, 1 point. 2. Church Secrets of the Kingdom of New Moon, 1 point. 3. Fireball Spell Level plus 1, 5 points. With these points, along with the previous ones, Chu Chen now has a total of 45 points. Chu Chen immediately exchanges all the points for the two secrets and upgrades the fireball spell twice to reach the maximum level. Points minus 12. Congratulations, the fireball spell has been upgraded to LV5 slash 5, and you have received the reward spirit attribute plus 1. The fireball spell is a skill related to Catherine, and after reaching the maximum level, a new skill will appear in the next simulation. Chu Chen is quite satisfied with the results of this simulation, and the biggest gain is obtaining the noble secrets and church secrets, which are crucial pieces of information. For the simulator, these non-physical rewards are very cost-effective. After Chu Chen entered the holy city, the simulator began to collect various information to enhance its simulation effect. The simulator, which has reached level 4, has greatly improved its ability to gather information and is no longer limited to Chu Chen's experiences. Like in the simulation, Chu Chen chooses to observe. Catherine publicly proposes marriage as a topic, and the final result will be decided by a vote of the nobles. The nobles love voting the most and naturally support Catherine's decision. Because of the threat that Catherine will kill the prince, the king reluctantly sets the voting time for tomorrow morning's meeting. After everyone disperses and only Catherine and Chu Chen are left, she sincerely thanks him, saying, Chu Chen, thank you. If it weren't for you, I would still be in the dark. Although there are many nobles supporting me now, it would be troublesome if the queen's family bribes the nobles. After seeing Catherine's simulated outcome, Chu Chen has a different view of her abilities and smiles, saying, How confident are you? If the vote were held today, I would be 60% confident, but now I'm only 40% confident. Chu Chen looks around and then takes out three pieces of paper from his personal space, each containing the secrets of three nobles, and hands them to Catherine. Catherine's eyes widen as she is shocked by the contents. Now, how confident are you? Catherine says excitedly, 70%. If I can control them, their affiliated nobles will also support me, and they will continue to support me in the future. Are these pieces of information accurate? Where did you get them? Catherine asks, somewhat incredulous. I don't know either. They appeared on my desk when I woke up today. Maybe someone is secretly helping you, Chu Chin shrugs and casually fabricates a plausible lie. With limited time, Catherine thanks Chu Chin again and separates from him, promising to repay him after the matter is resolved. Chu Chen returns to his residence, where Anna is waiting for him in the courtyard. According to the previous plan, once he obtains the title of baron, he will go to the church and leave Anna to study doctrine in the monastery. 
However, after Chu Chen obtained the church secrets and learned about the situation inside, he gave up on this plan. He had previously encountered Gulen, who was a typical member of the Holy Light Church, and his father was the bishop in charge of training in the monastery. Those poor apprentice priests, especially those like Anna who came from the countryside, as long as they are noticed by them and do not have a background, they almost all suffer. If Anna stays in the monastery for a while, she is afraid that she will not be able to escape the clutches. Anna, do you want to go to the monastery to study or do you want to stay by my side to learn? Until you pass the assessment. Ah, can I really? Of course, I want to study with you, teacher. Anna said without hesitation. Then follow me first. The monastery holds assessments at the end of every month. Once you pass the assessment, you can become an official priest. Xu Chen said with a smile. There are only a few days left at the end of the month, and Anna doesn't think she can pass the assessment so quickly. At least she has to wait until next month. But as long as she can stay with Chu Chen, she is very willing to stay for a while. Chu Chen has a simulator in hand to help Anna pass the assessment easily. As for himself, he also needs to participate in the assessment. The previous badge was the Black Iron Priest badge. Now that he has obtained the noble status of the New Moon Kingdom, he also wants to obtain the Bronze Priest badge here. Although he has decided not to enter the monastery for study, they still need to go to the church to help Anna register her identity and sign up for the end-of-month assessment. The reception area of the palace is not suitable for long-term stay, so Chu Chen returned the token to Princess Catherine and arranged for his own attendant. Then he took his mountain carriage and prepared to rent a small villa in the noble district to live in first and consider other things when he has money. The two drove to the church, and because Chu Chen's mount was a monster and had been completely tamed by Chu Chen, they didn't need a traditional coachman, just Anna directing the route. The carriage stopped at the entrance of the church, and Chu Chen went forward and stated his identity and was taken to the department responsible for managing the priest's identity. Respected Lord Chu Chen, although you were a priest of the caste empire before, you are now a noble of the New Moon Kingdom. You can register again in our branch and enjoy more benefits. What benefits? Chu Chen asked. If you need it, the church can arrange priest tools for a town-level church for you. Of course, if it's in a more popular town, you may need to start as an assistant first. Chu Chen didn't think this was a benefit. It's okay to help me register, but I don't need a job arrangement. Okay, sir. In addition, you can enjoy a 10% discount on church healing services and a 5% discount on goods. There will be more discounts after promotion. Chu Chen already has a genuine badge, and Anna also has an apprentice priest badge. After they released their divine arts, they quickly completed the initial registration. From now on, they are the legal priests recorded in the New Moon Kingdom. Chu Chen and Anna visited the church under each other's guidance. When they visited the monastery, they met someone they knew. Chu Chen, you also came to the holy city? Barbara looked at him with surprise. After Leotis returned to the church, he had already met Barbara once, but he didn't mention much about escorting the princess, so she didn't know that Chu Chen was also in the team. Previously, because she was worried that she would be chased by the demons again on the way, Barbara gave the ring to Chu Chen, hoping that Chu Chen could bring the ring to Leotis in order to get the help of the Silver Holy Knight. Although she is now a candidate saint and it is no longer possible for her and Leotis, she still wants to get back that ring and wait for the end of the invasion of the demon realm to continue their fate. Long time no see, Barbara. You look even more beautiful. I almost didn't recognize you. Barbara's holy aura became more prominent after she changed into the candidate saint's attire. After coming to the church, she received more blessings from the goddess and her strength has also improved a lot, reaching the bronze level. Barbara was very happy to hear Chu Chen's praise, but when she thought of the embarrassing treatment Chu Chen had given her at that time, her cheeks blushed again. Chu Chen, can you return the things I gave you before? Barbara continued, I can exchange with you for higher value equipment, which is important to me. After becoming a substitute saint, Barbara couldn't leave the church headquarters and was worried that she wouldn't be able to see Chu Chen in the future so she made the request on the spot. Chu Chen had previously conducted relevant simulations and sympathized with Barbara's subsequent experiences, being moved by her dedication to love. Chu Chen started the simulation again. Simulation is about to begin, please choose your initial ability, 1. Bronze level soul stone, empty, 5 points, 2. Holy light shield level plus 1, 10 points, 3. Sacred fire level plus 1, 10 points, 4. Free simulation, 20 points, friendly reminder, after the soul stone is filled in the simulation, it can be exchanged for a complete soul stone after the simulation ends. Xu Chen was somewhat surprised that there was a soul stone among the options this time, which solved a big problem for him. Xu Chen exchanged the soul stone on the spot and then started the simulation. Barbara wants to redeem her ring, choose. 1. 
Return the ring and tell her about Leotes's betrayal and pursuit of Princess Catherine, with Anna as your witness, too. Refuse to return the ring and tell her about Leotes's betrayal and pursuit of Princess Catherine, with Anna as your witness, 3. Return the ring and tell her the truth, find Leotes together, and confront him face to face, these simulation options were different, and it had to do with Anna's presence. After thinking for a moment, Xu Chun chose option 3. You returned the ring and immediately exposed the truth that Leotes had already forgotten her, Barbara refused to believe, you found Leotes who was training in the training ground and questioned him, Leotes wanted to deceive her again with sweet words, you asked Leotes to bring the promised ring, but he couldn't produce it, so he made up a new lie, and you decided. 1. Point out the truth that Leotes has become a eunuch and tell Barbara that he only wants to use the power of the saint to restore his male body, 2. Help expose Leotes's lies and strike his image again, 3. Use the church's secret information about Leotes to reveal his true face, there is not much secret information about Leotes in the church, so it is not enough to destroy him, but some of the content is enough to make Barbara completely disappointed in him, you handed the secret information paper to Barbara, which detailed the process of him using his identity as a holy knight and handsome appearance to deceive several commoner girls after he arrived in the holy city, although this matter was not a big deal in the church, it was a devastating blow to Barbara. It happened a month after Leotes and Barbara separated, shortly after Leotes arrived in the holy city. In such a short period of time, he had become like this. How much had he changed over the years? Tears welled up in Barbara's eyes. She knew that Chu Chen had received the goddess's oracle and was a messenger walking in the mortal world. There was no need to deceive herself, and this information could also be verified by those women. Barbara no longer questioned Leotes and left disappointed. Leotes pestered you for a while, and suddenly a funeral bell rang in the church. You went to check the situation and found that Barbara had committed suicide in her room after returning. Barbara's death is somewhat related to you, and you will inevitably face strict questioning. You choose. 1. Use the soul stone to steal Barbara's soul. 2. Unleash the magic sword and absorb more souls before leaving. 3. Calm down, you haven't done anything wrong, releasing the magic sword would probably absorb all the souls, so Chu Chen chose the first option. You secretly took out the soul stone and absorbed Barbara's soul, storing it in your personal space. The archbishop arrived quickly and, after healing Barbara's physical wounds, prayed to the goddess and performed a resurrection spell. However, due to the disappearance of the soul, the resurrection failed, and the archbishop became furious. Everyone present was taken away for investigation. Although your soul stone was not found during the search, you cannot use mental spells to hypnotize. You were forced to hand over the soul stone and were sentenced to extreme punishment. Simulation ends. Perhaps you should increase your mental power to 30 points or above before facing this mental spell erosion. Overall score, 13 points. Earn 13 points of simulation experience and 13 plus 3 simulation points. Please select the reward you want to exchange for in the real world. 1. Bronze Soul Stone, Barbara, 10 points. 2. Holy Light Shield Level plus 1, 10 points. 3. Sacred Fire Level plus 1, 10 points. Although the simulation failed, Xu Chen has achieved his goal. With the Bronze Soul Stone, he only needs to accumulate 100 simulation points to be promoted to bronze. When exchanging, Xu Chen hesitated and decided to exchange two Barbara's soul stones at once. The Archbishop can use resurrection magic to inject Barbara's soul from the soul stone into a corpse and revive her. Xu Chen wants to know the relationship between the soul he obtained through the simulator and the real Barbara. This rare opportunity made Xu Chen decide to use one for an upgrade and keep one as a spare. If there is no difference between the two, then there will be more room for manipulation. He still has 24 points left and decides to upgrade the Holy Light Shield to the maximum level at once. Congratulations, your Holy Light Shield skill has been upgraded to LV6-6, and you have received the reward Physical Strength plus 2, Spirit plus 1. The Holy Light Shield is a bronze level skill that requires 10 points to exchange. Although it costs 60 points to reach the maximum level, the final reward is more cost effective than the Iron Level. The Iron Level reaches level 5 with a total of 25 points, but only provides one attribute reward. It seems that in the future, I should try to exchange for higher quality skills. The effect of the fully upgraded Holy Light Shield is excellent, and his true strength has already surpassed that of an ordinary bronze paladin. After the simulation ends, Xu Chen falls into contemplation. Seeing Barbara die again because of Leotes, he vaguely understands the reason. First of all, Barbara may not want to become a substitute saint who loses her freedom due to house arrest. Originally, she could still be with her childhood friend Leotes in the church, and she thought she could accept it. But after knowing the truth, she realized that she would have to see that disgusting man every day in the days of house arrest in the future, and she would rather die. 
Chu Chen, did you sell that ring? Barbara asked nervously. Chu Chen shook his head, no, but there is something I want to talk to you about privately. Is it convenient? Of course, let's go to that pavilion over there. Although Barbara was effectively under house arrest in the Holy City Church, she still had a lot of power and status within the church, and the church would not prohibit her from communicating with a devout priest. The two went to the pavilion, and Chu Chen took out the ring and looked at Barbara, asking, Barbara, what is your relationship with Leotes? Why did he ask me to give him this ring? Isn't it a couple's ring? Barbara was afraid that their relationship would be known by others, so she explained awkwardly, we are just fellow villagers. Someone asked me to give him this ring. Barbara reached out to take the ring. Chu Chen put the ring away, Barbara, last night I saw Leo Tis being mocked because of his disability and got into a fight with the Holy Knights of Gurin. Disability? Are you talking about the leg injury? Barbara seemed unaware that Leo Tis had become a eunuch. No, it's about him chasing and killing the necromancer with the knights in order to gain merit in front of the princess, but accidentally losing his manhood, Chu Chen continued, I was there at the time, he could have escaped with his teammates, but he didn't, and ended up causing the death of many people. Among those people were friends of Gurin, that's why they fought so fiercely last night. This time, Chu Chen didn't tell her about Leo Tis harming the civilian girl, to prevent her from becoming too desperate and committing suicide. If the other party was Princess Catherine, then according to the results of the first simulation, it wouldn't be so serious. Is what you're saying true? Barbara sat paralyzed on the ground, her face pale. I swear in the name of the goddess, there is absolutely no lie in what I said. If you don't believe it, you can ask Leo Tiz and see if he still has the ring. Chu Chen left the ring with Barbara. Chu Chen wanted to see if this woman was truly beyond redemption. Barbara, don't be impulsive. I am your friend, you can come to me if you need any help. I will come to the church library again tomorrow morning. Thank you, Chu Chen. Barbara stood up, but she didn't take the ring. Barbara recalled the scene of their meeting yesterday, and many details had already proven Chu Chen's words. Watching Barbara leave without saying goodbye, Chu Chen put away the ring and left with Anna. He was somewhat looking forward to and worried about Barbara's message. This time, the option seemed the same as the first simulation, but in reality, different words and details would lead to different outcomes when operated by Chu Chen himself. Early the next morning, Chu Chen came alone to the library belonging to the church. It was still early, and Barbara was the only one in the library. Today, Barbara seemed like a different person, with no trace of vitality on her face. Her eyes were swollen, and her dark circles were very prominent. Barbara, are you okay? Chu Chen approached and comforted her. After seeing Chu Chen, Barbara forced a smile that looked ugly on her face. Chu Chen, you were right. Leo Tiz is indeed a scumbag. He actually wanted to deceive me, treating me like a fool. What should I do? I never want to see him again. But he appears in the church every day, and I could run into him at any time. Barbara's situation was slightly better than expected. She wasn't fooled again, but saw through the true nature of the other person. Barbara's movements were now restricted to the church area, and if she wanted to avoid Leo Tiz, her range of activities would be greatly reduced. For Barbara, this was no different from being imprisoned, and over time, she might resort to suicide again. System, start simulation. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial ability. 1. Invisibility ring, 10 points, 2. Holy fire level plus 1, 10 points, 3. Intermediate healing spell, 10 points, 4. Free simulation, 20 points, Xu Chen only had 4 points left, so he couldn't choose anything and started the simulation directly. Barbara is on the verge of collapse. She needs to change the situation or vent her emotions. You suggest to her. 1. Let her seek the help of the Archbishop to exile Leo Tis to another city, out of sight, out of mind. 2. Let her design a plot to frame Leo Tis, thus avenging him and causing him to lose his qualification as a holy knight. 3. Help Barbara vent her emotions and relieve her suppressed feelings, so that she can face Leo Tis normally in the future. Framing Leo Tis carries a high risk and may endanger Barbara herself. And if you ask the Archbishop for help then you will owe him a favor in the future. Moreover, Leotes is a silver paladin and a member of the princess's camp, so it is not easy to transfer him. The third option seems a bit cowardly, but it is the safest and most serious option, and Chu Chen made a choice. You tell Barbara that some rebellious behavior can relieve psychological pressure and help her face Leotes again without psychological pressure. Barbara asks you how to do it specifically, and you suggest. 1. Sneak out of the church and play in the holy city for a day. 2. Steal books from the library and quietly return them the next day. 3. Liberate the beast in your heart together, but stop at a certain point. If Anna is a contrasting good girl, then Barbara is a crazy and daring woman. 
She dared to ask Chu Chen to help her remove her status as a saint during the simulation, which most people would not dare to do. You tell Barbara that you are the messenger of the goddess, and the goddess doesn't mind if something interesting happens between you, but there should be boundaries, Barbara believes your nonsense, and you go to the top floor of the library together, she shows you her pet white rabbit, you don't back down and show her your weapon, a long spear, during the conversation, the church's holy pegasus knights on patrol in the air discover you, you are sentenced to extreme punishment, simulation ends, hey, what do you think the invisibility ring is for? Overall score, 14 points, obtained 14 simulation experience points, obtained 14 plus 3 simulation points, please select the reward to be exchanged for in the real world, 1. Invisibility ring, 10 points, 2. Holy fire level plus 1, 10 points, 3. Intermediate healing spell, 10 points, Chu Chen was speechless. He didn't expect that the church would actually have an air force, otherwise he would never have gone to the rooftop. With this information now, he won't make the same mistake in the next simulation. However, just in case, Chu Chen still exchanged for an invisibility ring and also learned the healing spell. Invisibility ring, rank, bronze effect, can use elemental power to become invisible, consumes one point of mental power per minute. Explanation, mainly optical invisibility, weaken masking odors and sounds. Healing spell is an upgraded version of the healing technique, which is very necessary for Chu Chen, who is about to advance to a bronze priest. Although only one invisibility ring was exchanged, Chu Chen had the experience of failing the first simulation, so he shouldn't be discovered again. System, start simulation. Barbara believes your nonsense, and she takes you back to her place while in invisible state, except for the final boundary, you did everything you could do, and then left satisfied, Barbara's attitude has changed, when facing Leotes again, she treats him like a stray dog, but in the following days, she always thinks about the craziness when she was with you, she sends someone to find you and asks you to come for an audience, you choose. 1. Go to the church and engage in even crazier behavior with Barbara. 2. Refuse the audience and gradually fade away from Barbara. 3. Go to the church and tell Barbara that she no longer needs your help. This woman can't have everything her way. If it were a free simulation, Chu Chen might choose the first option, but now he wants to see what will happen to Barbara after being rejected. You refuse Barbara, and she sends someone to find you again and threatens to tell the Archbishop the secret if you don't come. The Archbishop doesn't want his granddaughter, Hilvi, who is also a candidate for saint, to become the saint, so he will do everything to protect Barbara and reduce the probability of Hilvi being chosen. If Barbara really tells the Archbishop about their affair, Chu Chen would probably disappear. You still refused Barbara's threat, and she didn't betray you mercilessly or find someone else to replace you. You were her only friend, and she committed suicide a month later. Unfortunately, her soul did not dissipate. She was resurrected by the archbishop and then imprisoned in a confinement room under 24-hour surveillance. Since then, you have never seen Barbara again. Simulation ends. If she had never seen the light, she could have endured the darkness. You shouldn't have been so heartless. Overall score, 13 points. Obtain 13 points of simulation experience and 13 plus 3 simulation points. Chu Chen didn't expect that Barbara would commit suicide again, and this time it was because of him. Forget it, anyway, with the simulator, even if we meet once a week, nothing will happen, right? Chu Chen was somewhat moved. Every time he just watched in the simulator, it made him very unhappy. He exchanged another invisibility ring and planned to hand her over to Barbara to facilitate their actions. Chu Chen's mind returned to the real world and watched Barbara, who was on the verge of collapse, start her own plan. Barbara, you need to release the suppressed emotions in your heart in order to start a new life. What should I do? Barbara asked in confusion. Put on this ring and follow me to the rooftop. Oh, the griffin knight flew overhead, and the invisible Barbara and Chu Chun were on edge. Fortunately, it was a time of peace and the war had not yet broken out. These griffin knights were just patrolling in the air and did not notice the two invisible people below. Chu Chen, stop quickly. Both of them were in an invisible state and couldn't see each other, but when part of the human senses were blocked, the remaining parts would be enhanced. Barbara once again lost the battle, and her mental power was not enough to maintain invisibility. After the two cleaned up the battlefield, they hurried back to the library and then left in an inconspicuous place. This time, Xu Chen told Barbara that he would come to her again in a few days. He asked her not to send anyone to find him to avoid suspicion. Xu Chen did not deceive Barbara with a prophecy this time, and Barbara always thought that Xu Chen was a devout follower who had received a prophecy and was loyal to the goddess. She didn't expect him to do such a thing. This made her secretly happy, as if she had found a kindred spirit. As a candidate saint, she had always rejected this identity and had little devotion to the goddess. What happened today was a secret between the two of them, and Chu Chen was her first real man. 
she had completely forgotten about Leo Titus. Humph, he forgets about me once he succeeds. If I hadn't become a candidate saint, he probably wouldn't have remembered me in his lifetime. Ah, there are no books on this topic in the church. How should I win against Chu Chen next time? Barbara was a little annoyed by today's defeat. Next time, let Chu Chen bring some books for me. But I guess I'll have to wait until the next time to win? Barbara was caught up in the dilemma of her sexual satisfaction. On the other side, Chu Chen, who had transformed into a sage, left the church with a righteous face and returned to the villa he had just rented. The rent for this villa was not cheap, costing 30 gold coins a month. If he wanted to buy it, it would originally cost 20,000 gold coins, but because the New Moon Kingdom was considered the front line of the demon invasion, it was reduced to 10,000 gold coins. Even though the price was halved, Chu Chen couldn't afford it and didn't plan to buy it. He planned to practice in the holy city until he reached the silver level and then leave to find a city further away from the demon invasion to live in. He had no interest in war. The owner of this villa was selling it at a reduced price, probably with a similar mindset. As soon as Chu Chen returned to the villa, he saw Catherine and Anna happily drinking tea in the small garden. It seemed that she had won in this morning's vote. Congratulations, I wonder what the score was between the princess and the king. Chu Chen asked with a smile. When Chu Chen addressed himself with respect but not the king, Princess Catherine was very happy. Chu Chen, I really appreciate you. If it weren't for you, I would probably have to pack my bags and escape back to the elven forest today, Catherine half-jokingly said. He he, princess, you are the people's choice, it has nothing to do with me. Chu Chen didn't want too many people to notice him. Catherine understood Chu Chen's meaning and handed him a document, saying, You gave me a few pieces of paper to help me solve the problem, and I'll give you one in return. You can sell it if you don't want it. Chu Chen glanced at the document handed to him. It turned out to be the deed to this villa, a gift worth 10,000 gold coins. Princess, you are someone who does big things, but Rhine Kingdom probably won't give up easily. Chu Chen took the deed and Anna beside him widened her eyes. She didn't know what kind of deal the two had made, but she knew the value of this villa. Princess Catherine also had some concerns. Chu Chen, what do you think Rhine Kingdom will do? Will they take this opportunity to attack our kingdom? They will probably make our kingdom pay compensation for the sake of face. The king won't be able to afford it. Now, the new moon kingdom is considered the front line of the demon invasion. Rhine kingdom's national strength is only slightly stronger than the new moon kingdom's. It's impossible for them to start a war at this time. At most, they will just make empty threats, send people to put pressure on the border, or take the opportunity to plunder. As long as we prepare for defense and advance and counterattack with a strong stance, the crisis will naturally be resolved. But when the demon invasion comes, it will be difficult to request assistance from them. Listening to Chu Chen's analysis, Catherine nodded continuously. In the end, she also expressed her own opinion, we can relax the defense line near Rhine Kingdom appropriately, making it easier for the demons to enter their kingdom. By then, they will be forced to join the war early. The two continued their conversation, and Catherine hurriedly left. On one hand, Chu Chen didn't want Catherine to stay longer and bring unnecessary trouble to himself, and on the other hand, Catherine wanted to prepare in advance for the possible invasion of Rhine Kingdom. After Catherine left, Anna approached. Teacher, these are the questions from the previous bronze priest assessments. Do you want to prepare? Anna didn't ask about Princess Catherine. She knew she shouldn't ask too much. Yesterday, when they were at the church, she borrowed a lot of books, including the theoretical knowledge of previous assessments. Chu Chen had a simulator that allowed him to know the questions in advance, but the assessments were not all theoretical knowledge. There was also a practical part that needed to be prepared in advance. Chu Chen took the materials and looked at the practical content. Most of the priest assessments were related to healing, but there were also some assessments related to combat. With the demon invasion approaching, priests also need to have some combat abilities. Focus on practicing divine arts. I'll mark the key points for you before the assessment, and you should try to learn healing spells, okay? Thank you, teacher. Chu Chen had three out of seven simulation attempts left. There wasn't much time left until the assessment. He needed to accumulate 100 points before that to truly break through to the bronze level in the system. In the next few days, Xu Chen didn't rush to do simulations. He restored the number of simulations to the maximum of 7-7 and that day happened to be the day of the Holy Light Church assessment. Xu Chen and Anna changed into new priest robes, wore their respective priest badges, and after enjoying a hearty breakfast, they finally started the simulation while looking at Anna's anxious face. Anna was still waiting for Chu Chen to mark the key points for her. She hadn't read much in the past few days. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial ability. 1. Mastery of Holy Light Doctrine, 5 points, 2. Holy Fire Level plus 1, 10 points, 3. 
Dispel Disease LV1-6, 10 points, 4. Free Simulation, 20 points, Zhu Chen has 7 points left in his score. In order to participate in the subsequent assessment, he had to exchange for the mastery of the Holy Light Doctrine. You and Anna went to the examination room. Anna asked you about the key points, and you casually made up a few sentences that you thought might be tested. Anna quickly memorized them as a last-minute effort, but when the exam started, she found that what you said was completely different. After the first round of exams, you scored 90 points, while Anna only scored 10 points and had her qualification for the next exam revoked by the church. Anna was very speechless about this, and you asked her about the exam questions of the Black Iron Priest. After comforting Anna, you proceeded to the second round of assessment, which was to treat a wounded and poisoned Pegasus beast. You didn't have any detoxification spells, but you managed to pass the assessment by relying on healing spells. In the third round of practical assessment, because you also applied for the assessment of the Bronze Paladin, the target of the battle was different from that of the priest. You needed to withstand the attacks of a bronze-level paladin for more than three minutes. The paladin, Elwyn, who was in charge of assessing you, was a subordinate of Leotes. Leotes suspected that you had ruined his relationship with Barbara. Elwyn's strength was at the peak of the bronze level, and at Leotes's request, he launched a full attack against you. Faced with Elwyn's attack, you chose 1. Question his behavior, believing that he was seeking personal revenge. 2. Fight with all your strength, trying to hold on for as long as possible. 3. Tell him that you have an excellent relationship with Barbara and ask him to go easy on you. Chu Chen didn't think that questioning the other party would be of any use. He told him that his relationship with Barbara would only bring him more trouble. You fought with all your strength, but you were slightly lacking in battle experience and were injured after being caught off guard by the opponent. You persisted in continuing the fight, but you were still defeated. While watching the battle, Barbara questioned Elwyn for being too harsh. Although the bishop in charge of the assessment did not allow you to successfully advance to the bronze paladin, he still promoted you to the bronze priest. Barbara's behavior made Leotes increasingly hostile towards you. Barbara used the excuse of needing to convey the doctrine of the goddess to you and asked you to enter the church to receive her guidance. You chose. 1. Find an excuse to refuse, saying that it is not the right time now. 2. Accept gladly and enter the church with Barbara. 3. Accept the proposal and remind her to let more passing priests go with you to receive Barbara's guidance. Chu Chen didn't expect to encounter trouble in the assessment. Barbara's request in public was too risky and easily noticeable. You accepted Barbara's proposal and cleverly brought along other priests. Although Barbara was dissatisfied, she did not refuse. Everyone followed Barbara to pray together, and then Barbara sent them away, leaving only you. Barbara wanted you to fulfill your previous promise, but you thought it was not appropriate at the moment and promised to find her tomorrow. Barbara made a request for you to bring suitable books for her to study tomorrow. Early the next morning, you pretended to enter the library and then used your invisibility ability to quietly enter Barbara's residence. The battle was too intense, and Barbara accidentally got injured. The goddess detected the abnormality. The archbishop sent someone to capture you on the spot, and you were sentenced to death. You died, simulation over. Simulation over. You seem to have led Barbara into the abyss. This is a path of no return. Overall score, 18 points. Obtain simulation experience, 18 points. Obtain simulation score, 18 plus 3 points. Please choose the rewards you want to exchange for in the real world. 1. Mastery of the Holy Light Doctrine, 5 points. 2. Holy Fire Level plus 1, 10 points. 3. Dispel Disease LV1-6, 10 points. Although you already knew the exam questions in the simulation, mastery of the doctrine will be useful in many future situations, so you exchanged for it again. In addition, you also exchanged for one level of holy fire, temporarily giving up on dispel disease due to insufficient points. Xu Chen opened the simulation again, this time Anna was not so unlucky because she knew the test questions in advance. After the first round of exams, you got a perfect score, Anna passed smoothly with 65 points, and you glanced at the test questions again. Anna admired you and excitedly grabbed your hand, which made Barbara, who was watching, jealous and dissatisfied. You went through the second round of assessment, successfully passing with the healing technique and previous experience. Anna's black iron priest assessment was different, but she also passed smoothly. In the third round of assessment, you encountered the powerful Elvin. Fortunately, you already knew his fighting style and your mastery of the holy fire was good. Although you didn't defeat Elvin, you managed to hold on for three minutes. You are about to pass the third round of assessment. Leotes questioned your use of fireball in battle, believing it to be disrespectful to the goddess. Your qualification as a bronze paladin was revoked, 
but with Barbara's help, you retained the promotion as a bronze priest. Meanwhile, Anna failed in the practical combat due to being too nervous and tripping over a stone. Leotes is really a petty person. It seems that I have to find an opportunity to deal with him completely, otherwise he will always be a hidden danger, Chuchin thought silently. Barbara used the excuse of needing to convey the teachings of the goddess to you. Chuchin made the same choice again, and because of the experience from the first simulation, nothing happened to the two of them this time. You returned to the library exhausted, pretended to borrow a few books, and left. At night, you were attacked and killed, along with Anna. Simulation ends. Although the person who killed you concealed their face, you recognized Leotes. Overall score, 20 points. Obtain 20 points of simulation experience, obtain 20 plus 3 points of simulation points. Please select the rewards to be exchanged for in the real world. Looking at the accumulated 31 points, Xu Chen decided not to continue exchanging rewards and simulations, but to pass the assessment first. Xu Chen returned to reality, and in both simulations, he paid attention to Anna's exams, so he remembered quite a few test questions now. Anna, bring your book, I'll mark the key points for you. Anna hurriedly brought the book she bought, and Xu Chen quickly flipped through it after looking at the table of contents, then drew a large number of test questions. Anna felt like she had found a treasure and recited them quickly with Chu Chen on the carriage. The Chocobo had been to the church several times and no longer needed someone to drive it, as long as you told it the destination. On the way forward, Chu Chen thought about how to proceed with the next simulation. Leotes's heart has already twisted after being completely abandoned by Barbara. He is capable of doing anything now. Of course, what really caused Leotes to take action should be Barbara's invitation to Chu Chen after the assessment. Xu Chen could either tell Barbara in advance that he would go to the church tomorrow to make her less anxious, or take the opportunity to kill Leotes. The first option was simple, just find a reason to say it before Barbara spoke. The second option could also be done, such as hiring a large number of mercenaries to ambush in the villa that day. Once Leotes attacked, there would be no way out. Hiring mercenaries would cost a lot of money, and killing a silver paladin, even if he attacked first, would be troublesome. Whatever, he brought this upon himself. I should be able to find the safest way to kill him after a few more simulations. Xu Chen made a decision. Have you memorized everything? No, not yet. I only remember 80%. Anna said nervously. 60 points is enough. Relax a bit. Xu Chen patted Anna's head. Anna immediately calmed down and took a deep breath as she walked towards her own exam room. Xu Chen yawned and then casually started his own exam. The content of the written test is based on the teachings of the Holy Light. With his deep understanding of the teachings, he can pass the assessment whether or not he knows the exam questions in advance. However, it has been a long time since he last wrote and he has never written in the language of this world, which has slowed down his answering speed. The efficiency of a keyboard is still higher. I wonder how advanced the magical technology of this world has developed. Xu Chen only took half the time to complete the theoretical exam, but unfortunately, he couldn't submit it early. He had to meditate in the exam room to restore his spiritual power. The simulator consumes spiritual power during the simulation process, so Chu Chen ended the simulation early in order to have time to recover his spiritual power for the next two assessments. As for advancing to the bronze level, he didn't know what would happen during the promotion process. From the results of the simulation, even if he didn't advance, he could still pass the assessment and break through later. After the exam, a priest sitting behind Chu Chen approached him. Friend, you answered the questions too quickly. You actually completed the test in half the time. Xu Chen glanced at the person. Many irrelevant details were omitted during the simulation, so he didn't know much about this priest who approached him. He vaguely remembered that Harry seemed to be one of the bronze priests who passed the assessment this time. I'm Harry, from the Radiant Moon City Church. Harry reached out his hand, and Xu Chen didn't refuse. They shook hands. I'm Xu Chen, nice to meet you. Shangbala, the holy city, is the central city of the New Moon Kingdom, while Huaiwe City is far from the southern landing point of the Demon Clan and is currently one of the safest cities in the New Moon Kingdom. Xu Chen, I heard that the great sage Mabus has been active in the Holy City recently. Do you know where she is? Harry asked with admiration on his face. Sage? Xu Chen was a little surprised. A sage is a holy figure whose status is equivalent to that of a high bishop, with at least gold level strength. Unlike high bishops who work within the church, sages often travel throughout the continent. Sages, like holy knights, practice both magic and martial arts, but unlike holy knights who lean towards physical combat skills, sages lean more towards spellcasting abilities. Not everyone can become a sage. In addition to personal strength, one's character, reputation, and contributions to the church are all conditions for becoming a sage. Yes, haven't you heard? 
I came here specifically to find Lady Mavis when I heard the news. Unfortunately, I haven't received any information after searching for several days, so I also signed up for the priest assessment. Xu Chen shook his head. Sages usually don't like to attract attention. They often disguise themselves as travelers and explore various places on the continent. It's not easy to find her. Ah, if only I could become Lady Mabes's disciple. Her strength is already close to that of a fifth order saint. I heard that she came here this time to investigate the invasion points of the demon clan. I'm afraid she won't stay in the holy city for long. Chu Chen and Harry chatted for a while, and soon Anna also came out of the exam room for iron priests and returned to Chu Chen's side. Teacher, your predictions were amazing. You actually got all the questions right, Anna said excitedly. Chu Chen smiled. Anna, you should have no problem with the second round of assessment. As for the third round, I guess it will be about hunting two skeleton warriors. Be prepared in advance and don't get scared when the time comes. Chu Chen revealed the assessment topic to her. Harry, who was on the side, looked at the beautiful Anna and was initially interested, but when he noticed the way Anna looked at Chu Chen, he immediately felt disappointed and chose to give up. Anna quickly took out the materials and started studying the information about skeleton warriors. With mental preparation, she shouldn't trip over a stone again. Half an hour later, the results of the first round were announced. Chu Chen passed smoothly with a perfect score, and Anna also achieved a high score of 90. The second round of assessment was the same as before, healing a wounded and poisoned monster. Xu Chen's intermediate healing technique has a slight detoxification effect compared to the basic healing technique. Although the effect is weak, under Xu Chen's precise control and powerful mental power, he successfully passed the assessment. There is no need to wait for the second round of grading. After finishing the assessment, Xu Chen goes directly to the bronze paladin's examination room. Actually, if Xu Chen only took the paladin assessment, the content of the second round of the exam would not be so difficult. However, he has a bigger ambition and wants to obtain certifications for two professions at the same time. Therefore, the second round of divine magic assessment is conducted in the more challenging priest examination room, and the third round is in the even more difficult paladin examination room. Xu Chen submits the proof of passing the second round of assessment to the examiner, who gives him a number plate. He goes to the rest area to meditate and recover. After about 10 minutes, it's his turn to go on stage. Normally, he should have at least 20 minutes of rest time, but Leotes, who sees Chu Chen, specifically lets him go on stage early. During the simulation, Chu Chen didn't pay much attention, but now he doesn't plan to let it go. Sir Examiner, I am number 10, there are still three people ahead who haven't participated in the assessment, did you make a mistake? Chu Chen questions discontentedly. The examiner feels a bit guilty, but Leotes is his superior so he can only explain with a stiff face. I'm sorry, those three candidates had some issues. You can go ahead, I will have the paladin examiner adjust the assessment appropriately. The examiner shows a kind smile. However, Xu Chen rolls his eyes and says, I'm sorry, this violates the rules of the examination room. I need to consult the chief examiner. If the chief examiner has no objections, then I will go on stage. Talking about adjusting the assessment is simply deceiving people. The paladin examiner, Elvin, is also Leotes's subordinate. And those three candidates are just sitting there chatting, what's their situation? What's wrong with you? Xu Chen points at the distant candidates numbered 7, 8, and 9, and scolds loudly, as a paladin, you dare to change the rules of the paladin assessment without authorization. Did you take their money to give them more rest time? The examiner has never been so frustrated before, being pointed at and scolded by a candidate. Chu Chen's voice attracts the attention of the chief examiner and the saintess Barbara in the distance. The examiner hurriedly says, stop shouting, stop shouting. If you want to rest, then rest a little longer. I will let them go on first. Looking at the chief examiner who is coming towards the assessment field, Chu Chen nods satisfactorily. With the chief examiner present, Elvin's battle will also be restrained a bit. Even if he doesn't use fireball, Chu Chen can still pass the paladin assessment. Chu Chen excitedly steps onto the stage. After all, there is a big difference between simulation and reality. In the simulation, he watched from a third-person perspective, but now he is actually on the battlefield and he doesn't know if his performance will be worse than in the simulation. Xu Chen holds an oak staff in his left hand and a steel short sword in his right hand, vigilantly watching Elvin across from him. Elvin looks hesitant. Although he doesn't like Leotes, he is still his superior, and he demands that Elvin must make Xu Chen fail. The chief examiner has already arrived to watch the battle and he also doesn't dare to make things too difficult for Chu Chen. Begin! Elvin launches the first attack. His weapon is a two-handed sword, and a white light appears on the sword as he runs. Powerful slash. 
Elvin raises the sword and launches an uppercut attack towards Chu Chen, who seems to be in a daze. In the simulation, Chu Chen used the holy shield to withstand the attack, but this time Chu Chen changes tactics. He takes two steps back, narrowly avoiding the opponent's attack, and then counterattacks with a cross slash while the opponent is momentarily stiff. Chu Chen's cross slash is only level 1, but fortunately, his basic swordsmanship is at max level. Although the cross slash didn't injure Elvin, it forced him to hastily defend with the sword. Clang! The two-handed sword is a weapon that combines offense and defense, and it can block attacks with the sword itself without the need for a shield. When facing an attack, it can make Elwin's attacking momentum collapse. Chu Chen quickly launches a series of attacks with the power inside him, making it difficult for Elwin to transition from a defensive posture to an offensive one. The foundation is very solid, but unfortunately the swordsmanship skills are lacking a bit, the chief examiner commented on the side. Elwin seems to be in a sorry state, but in reality, he is depleting Chu Chen's stamina and will soon find an opportunity to counterattack. Sure enough, after multiple attacks, Chu Chen's speed slowed down. When he tried to break Elwin's defense again with a cross slash, Elwin squatted down to avoid the attack and then swiftly thrust his sword. Holy Light Shield. However, Chu Chen was prepared early on, and the Holy Shield easily blocked the opponent's attack. Then, the Holy Fire covered the sword and slashed towards Elwin, who was difficult to dodge. Elwin realized the danger and quickly extended his left hand to block with his wrist guard. Chu Chen's strength was unexpectedly powerful, causing his hand to be in intense pain, and the holy fire on the steel short sword spread to his arm, igniting it. Holy Radiance! Chu Chen unleashed an unexpected skill, and the dazzling light caused Elwin to instinctively close his eyes. Watch out on the left! A voice appeared next to Elwin's ear, and he instinctively defended his left side. However, this voice was actually from Chu Chen, and his short sword aimed at the gap in Elwin's right armor. Put! Elwin was injured and the onlookers couldn't help but exclaim. So strong, he actually injured the examiner. No, his own strength is average, but his grasp of battle is simply genius. Who is that person? Why didn't we see him just now? Um, it seems like he came from the priest examination area, he's a talented person who was taking both certifications at once. The voices from the audience reached Elwin's ears, making him annoyed and triggering his combat technique. Get lost. A powerful momentum was released from Elwin's body but Chu Chen had already evaded and moved to the side, avoiding the opponent's attack. Holy fire! This time, the holy fire did not attach to the weapon but flew towards Elwin like a fireball spell. Elwin also activated the holy light shield to defend against the attack, but Chu Chen's holy fire, under his precise control, made a turn and quickly spun around him. This, this control is too terrifying, worthy of being a priest. The paladin's divine arts were only a minor study, with the main focus on various holy light combat techniques, so their control over divine arts was not as good as that of magic-based professions. Elwin's shield followed the holy fire in circles, but ultimately, Chu Chen's speed was faster. The flames hit Elwin's face, and he painfully held his head and let out a mournful cry. Assessment over, the winner is Chu Chen. The examiner announced the result, and then arranged for a priest to treat Elwin. Looking at the defeated Elwin, Leotes's face was extremely ugly. He couldn't find any reason to trouble Chu Chen now. Easier than imagined. You knights of the holy city probably haven't fought in a long time, right? Chu Chen taunted in a voice that only Elwin could hear. Elwin was so angry that his blood surged, almost causing him to spit out blood. Chu Chen successfully passed the bronze paladin assessment, and when all the assessments were over, the chief examiner, under the witness of the candidate saint, Barbara, awarded exclusive badges to everyone. The two bronze badges that Chu Chen wore were quite eye-catching. Among the candidates, only he obtained two badges at once. There was a significant difference between the bronze and iron levels. Many times, only the bronze level was recognized as a true professional, and the treatment for bronze dual-class professionals was naturally higher than that of ordinary bronze level. As for Anna, her luck was not bad. She barely passed the final assessment and became an official iron level priest. In theory, she could graduate from Chu Chen now and start her own journey in training. After awarding the badges to everyone, the chief examiner looked at Barbara. Barbara was blessed by the goddess and was seen as the embodiment of the goddess in the eyes of the believers. Having the opportunity to meet the saint, even as a substitute, is a great blessing for them. However, Barbara's gaze remained on Chu Chen, who gestured with a one sign. She immediately understood that Chu Chen was too tired today and meant to make her wait another day. Barbara couldn't be bothered with the others and casually encouraged them before leaving. Leotis had been observing the two all along and after seeing Chu Chen's gesture, he became even more certain of their close relationship. He had already heard that Chu Chen had saved Barbara and that they had talked in the church garden. 
It was after that conversation that Barbara's attitude towards him had reversed, from being a lapdog to treating him like a stray dog. Chu Chen, as long as I kill you, Barbara will return to being the foolish woman she was before. Leotis made up his mind. After Chu Chen left, he and Anna went to the Lionheart Tavern to celebrate, with Anna treating this time. Chu Chen chose the Lionheart Tavern because he wanted to see if he could gather some information about the sage Mebis. He wanted to invite Mebis to his home so that he wouldn't have to hire too many high-level mercenaries and risk being discovered by Leotis. While enjoying the food, Chu Chen listened to the discussions of the people in the tavern. Although he didn't hear any news about Mebis, it gave him a better understanding of this world. After finishing the meal, he directly checked the secret information of the Holy Light Church in his personal space, searching for Mebis using the system's keywords. Ha! Huh, there really is? Mebis was not from the New Moon Kingdom, but there was some information about her in the secret information of the church. When the sage Mebis was young, she was a wandering priest and met her beloved in the holy city of Shamhala. Unfortunately, it wasn't until she gave birth to their child that she discovered her beloved was already married and a big liar. Angry, Mebis left the holy city with her child. But after more than a decade, when her child started practicing, she finally realized that they had no blood relation. Mebis had been deceived by the other person for more than 10 years. This time, she came to the New Moon Kingdom not only to investigate the invasion of the demon race but also to reclaim her child. The information about Mebis came from an information card of a Viscount named Andre. It seemed that Viscount Andre had received Mebis' message in advance and had now disappeared with his son, leaving no trace. If I can find Viscount Andre or his son, I should be able to invite Mebis to my home. Based on the previous simulation, Leotis would take action tomorrow night. He also had an appointment with the church tomorrow, so time was limited, and he needed to use the simulator to find people and simulate the best outcome. To find Viscount Andre, I can seek help from Princess Catherine or rely on the Mercenary Guild and Adventurer Guild. Viscount Andre may still be hiding somewhere in the Noble District. Chu Chen envisioned several plans in his mind and then began the simulation. Simulation is about to start. Please choose your initial abilities. 1. Scent Tracking LV1-5, 5 points, 2. Area Detection LV1-6, 10 points, 3. Charm Humans LV1-6, 10 points, 4. Free Simulation, 20 points, all three abilities were excellent, and Chu Chen started the simulation without exchanging any of them. You want to use someone else to kill Leotis, so you need to find Viscount Andre and his son first. You went to the Mercenary Guild and Adventurer Guild to buy information, but you didn't get what you wanted. You need to anonymously hire mercenaries to find Viscount Andre. You suspect that the other person is Mebis, and you know that he comes here every night before the guild closes to inquire about the results. After failing to make a purchase, you go to the palace and, using your noble identity token, you are allowed to enter the reception area. A servant goes to contact Princess Catherine for you. Princess Catherine personally comes to see you, and you ask her for help in finding Viscount Andre. Princess Catherine says that Viscount Andre took leave after attending the last meeting related to a marriage alliance and hasn't been seen since. Princess Catherine promises to help you find Viscount Andre, and you decide. 1. To wait for news at home, maybe you will get results soon. 2. To visit Viscount Andre's house to gather more information. 3. To ask the city guards and go outside the city to gather more information. During the simulation, Chu Chen doesn't feel tired at all. The more he does, the better he feels. When the simulation ends, he feels more relaxed. Visiting Viscount Andre's house probably requires the use of charm spells to get effective results. Chu Chen plans to start by investigating the area around the holy city. You go to the city guard's office and, using your noble identity, successfully meet the officer in charge of managing the city gates. You choose. 1. To bribe him with money to tell you information about Viscount Andre. 2. To use your noble and church identity to directly ask him. 3. To defeat him and use force to force him to reveal the information. The money spent in the simulation won't decrease a single copper coin in the real world, so Chu Chen chooses the first option. You bribe the officer with a large sum of money, and he brings in the squad leaders responsible for each gate at different times to inquire, but they didn't find that Viscount Andre had left. You remind them that Viscount Andre may have also bribed the soldiers and asked them to keep it a secret. You warn the soldiers that Viscount Andre has been targeted by the demons, and the church sent him to protect Viscount Andre. If they lie, they will be punished by the goddess. The soldiers remain tight-lipped, and perhaps Viscount Andre is not outside the city. After an unsuccessful search, you go to the mercenary guild and wait. Just before the guild is about to close, an unremarkable old woman catches your attention. She is likely Nebis. You choose. 1. To approach her and invite her to your home after confirming her identity. 2. 
to approach her and deceive her by claiming to have information about Viscount Andre. 3. To silently observe, track her, and find out where she lives. You don't think you can track her without being noticed, so you choose the first option to see what results you can get. You step forward and call out the other person's name disrespectfully, and after seeing your badge, Mephisto expresses that she doesn't want to be disturbed. You tell her that you are also looking for Andre and offer to use the princess's information network to search. You invite Mephisto to wait for news at your house. Mephisto is intrigued and, being bold and confident in her skills, she follows you to your house. Early the next morning, the princess's messenger arrives to report that they haven't found Viscount Andre. Mephisto leaves disappointed, and you try to convince her to stay another night, but she refuses. You go to the church as planned and help Barbara release her suppressed desires. You sense Barbara's hostility towards Anna. On the way back, you hire three silver mercenaries from the mercenary guild as bodyguards. At night, Leotes launches a surprise attack, and a fierce battle ensues. After being injured, Leotes escapes. You order the mercenaries to continue pursuing, but Leotes secretly returns and kills you before you can draw the magic sword. Simulation ends. Mercenaries won't really risk their lives for you, their task is only to protect you, not to kill enemies. Chu Chen naturally understands this principle, which is why he wants to use the stronger Mephisto to deal with Leotes. Overall score, 14 points, received 14 points of simulation experience, received 14 plus 3 simulation points, including the points previously accumulated, Chu Chen now has 48 points, still needing to accumulate half of the points to advance. But looking at the exchange options, he can't help but have the urge to spend money, and he exchanges for the bronze level skills of ranging and charm humans. He also raises the charm skill to level 3. Points are once again emptied, leaving only 8 points. The charm human skill is related to the charm attribute and the mental power attribute. It is a type of mental spell that has a 200% effect on the opposite sex and only a 50% effect on the same sex. The main reason for exchanging this skill is to gain a better understanding of this area of knowledge, so as not to be charmed by enemies in the future or reveal various truths while being hypnotized as before. Of course, in the current situation, the charm spell can help Chu Chen extract information about Andre from the people in his house. In the real world, he may not dare to use this spell on others at will, but in the simulation world, Chu Chen can use it without restraint. System, start the simulation again. You want to use Mephisto to kill Leotes, so you decide to investigate the situation at Andre's house first. You visit Viscount Andre in the name of the newly appointed Baron and bring a gift as a disguise. The butler tells you that Andre is not at home, and you choose. 1. Charm the butler, with a low chance of success. 2. Activate ranging to see if Andre is hiding in the house. 3. Request to meet other members of the family and present the prepared gift. Chu Chen decisively chooses the third option. You refuse to leave and request to meet other people. After seeing your gift, the butler thinks for a moment and welcomes you into the house. Andre's daughter, Judith, appears before you, and she is very pleased with your gift. You have a pleasant conversation with her. The butler goes to the cellar to get wine, and you decide. 1. Pretend to go to the bathroom and follow the butler to the cellar to investigate. 2. Take the opportunity to use charm on Judith and ask her about Viscount Andre's whereabouts. 3. Wait in place and try to intoxicate her before finding an opportunity to use charm. Chu Chen has a good tolerance for alcohol, and charm has a stronger effect on women, so the success rate would be higher if combined with intoxication. You tasted wine with Judith, and when she was a little drunk, you casually mentioned a secret about her from the aristocratic rumors. Judith hurriedly took you to her room and dismissed the butler. You revealed all her dark secrets, and her psychological defenses completely collapsed. Taking advantage of the situation, you used your charm and she had no resistance, so she told you Andre's whereabouts. It turned out that Andre was hiding in the church. He knew that Mephistopheles disliked the people in the church and wouldn't go there, so he chose the most dangerous but also the safest hiding place. Judith begged you not to tell anyone her secret. Now she listens to you obediently. You choose. 1. Take advantage of her and continue to control her with the secret, making her your puppet. 2. Make her forget what just happened and leave. 3. Make her obey your commands in the future and become your puppet. Chu Chen didn't hesitate too much. His system stored a lot of video data from simulated processes, and he would review them when he had free time. He was a collector, and he couldn't miss out on this CG and branching plot. You conquered Judith, but when she woke up, she didn't compromise because you knew her secret. She attacked you like crazy, and you had no choice but to fight back. Accidentally, you killed her. You were surrounded by the butler and guards of the Andre family. You didn't want to be caught, so you forced your way out. 
You were injured and had no choice but to draw the magic sword. After killing everyone, you prepared to leave, but Mephistopheles stopped you and killed you. Simulation ends. You should learn to stop when it's enough, instead of pushing your luck. Overall score, 20 points. Earn 20 simulation experience points and 20 plus 3 simulation points. The points reached exactly 31, and Chuchin quickly maxed out the charm skill. Congratulations, charm skill reached LV6-6, and you received the reward spirit plus 1, charm plus 2. The cost effectiveness of the bronze level skill is very high, and Xu Chen's spirit reached 20 points, and his charm also improved. After all skills reach the maximum level, their power and effects will increase significantly, while the consumption will slightly decrease. Xu Chen now knew where Andre was hiding, so he ended the simulation. Looking at the remaining one point in the points column, Xu Chen felt helpless. If he continued like this, he would probably never be promoted to bronze. Although he met the requirements for bronze in terms of attributes and skills and passed the assessment, the significance of bronze at the system level was greater. Only by advancing to bronze could he continue to level up and gain more attribute points. After Anna and Xu Chen finished their meal, they returned to the villa to rest. Since he already knew Andre's location, all he had to do next was to find a way to invite Mephistopheles to his house for one night tomorrow. Xu Chen rested at home for the afternoon. When the mercenary guild was about to close, he went to the guild again and coincidentally met Mephistopheles. Are you the one who posted the mission to find Andre? This time, Xu Chen pretended not to recognize her. Mephistopheles glanced at the badge on Xu Chen's body and showed a hint of displeasure. Although she was a sage of the Holy Light Church, she seemed to have some aversion to the church. She was only loyal to the goddess and the Holy Light. Yes, do you know where he is? Mephistopheles asked casually. Xu Chen nodded, I have a rough idea. I can help you find him, but you must tell me the reason why you're looking for him. Mephistopheles' eyes lit up, but her expression remained calm. Personal reasons. Tell me where he is, and I'll give you money. It's not good for you to know too much. Then forget it, I don't need money. Xu Chen also showed his barren badge. Mephistopheles' commission was very low, and not many people were willing to take her missions. What if you're his enemy, and I become an accomplice? After Chu Chen finished speaking, he left on his own. Mavis frowned. She had been searching for several days and didn't want to wait any longer. Instead of immediately approaching Chu Chen, Mavis followed him all the way until he entered the noble district villa. After waiting for a while, she approached the door and knocked. Knock, knock, knock the door opened, revealing a beautiful girl. Hello, may I ask who you're looking for? What can I help you with? Anna looked at her with confusion. Judging from her clothes, the person in front of her looked like a beggar with patched clothes, but they were all clean. There are some bread and milk in the kitchen. If you don't mind, I can give them to you, Anna said with a smile. Mavis shook her head after seeing Anna's badge. I'm looking for your teacher. All right, let me call the teacher for you. Please wait a moment, Chuchin said as he followed Anna to open the door again. Looking at Mavis's complicated expression, Chuchin didn't mock her, but welcomed her in. He took away my son, Mavis said calmly. I see. What do you plan to do after finding him? Xu Chen sat down and gestured for Anna to prepare a feast in the kitchen to entertain their guest. The anger Mavis had towards Andre had dissipated over the years, but the anger in her heart erupted uncontrollably upon learning that she had been deceived. She hated Andre for deceiving her, but she hated him even more for wasting her son's time, fearing that he would be influenced by Andre. Bring back my son, Mavis said calmly. Xu Chen pretended to think for a long time before continuing. I can help you find Andre, but I may face his retaliation or even assassination. As an exchange, you need to ensure my safety for the next three days. Mavis faintly felt a sense of conspiracy and questioned, you already know who I am? Xu Chin shrugged, of course. Respected Mavis, the sage of the Tower of Undead, the shepherd of the Crimson Desert. The Tower of Undead and the Crimson Desert were the places where Mavis gained her fame. Mavis didn't have much fondness for Chu Chen, but now she had to cooperate with him since she needed his help. You are a priest and a paladin of the Holy Light Church. Who in the Holy Light City wants to kill you? Mavis didn't believe what Chu Chen had just said. Andre didn't have the guts. Although Mavis was powerful, she didn't want to cause trouble for herself. As you know, the church is best at internal strife. If you find it troublesome, then forget it. After I get through this crisis, I will tell you Andre's hiding place for free. In fact, I only know his approximate location now. It will take at least three days to truly find him. The reason Mavis disliked the church was because she hated the dark side and power struggles within it. After hearing Chu Chen's words, she spoke, I can stay with you for three nights. If anyone dares to attack or assassinate a holy clergy, I will take care of it for you. 
But if you don't find Andre for me after three days, not only will you be expelled from the church, but you will also lose all your divine power. Mavis warned. Chu Chen wasn't afraid of her threats. If he was expelled, so be it. He didn't have divine power to begin with. Don't worry, Lady Mavis. Please be patient and wait. There will be results soon, Chu Chen said confidently. Mavis nodded slightly. She had strong mental power and had been paying attention to Chu Chen's expressions and micro-expressions during their conversation. It seemed that he wasn't lying. Anna, who had been sent to cook, finally finished her own dish. Teacher, teacher, please try my cooking. It's the stargazer pie I just learned from a cooking book. I'm already full. You guys eat more, Chu Chen said without hesitation as he turned and left. Anna looked a bit disappointed and looked at Mavis. Grandma, please eat more while it's hot. It's very nutritious. Mavis's face seemed to have gained a few more wrinkles. In fact, she is only 43 years old, but she has overdrawn her life in countless battles with strong enemies. Now she looks like she's in her 70s or 80s, a world of difference compared to the noble women of the same age in the capital. Mavis ate Anna's dark cuisine, feeling bitter in her heart. Her whole life has been spent fighting monsters, the money she earned either given to the poor or spent on her irresponsible adopted son. This time, when she came to the Kingdom of New Moon, she intended to buy some skincare products from the elf tribe, but the prices made her hesitate. The next morning, Shuchin went to the library. His top priority today was to find Andre, followed by fulfilling his promise with Barbara. Andre was not a member of the church, he was hiding here temporarily under the guise of meditation after spending money. Shuchin activated the simulation, he not only needed to investigate Andre's situation, but also see if Andre's son was here. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial ability, 1. Send tracking LV1-5, 5 points, 2. Range detection LV1-6, 10 points, 3. Lie detection LV1-6, 10 points, 4. Free simulation, 20 points. Shuchin had to start accumulating points. He had to resist exchanging these skills. You arrived at the church library, ready to start your investigation, you choose. 1. Go to the meditation management department and directly inquire about the situation, 2. Go find Barbara, satisfy her and ask for her help in inquiring. 3. Go to the meditation residential area and search on your own. Chuchin's current identity is a free priest, much lower in status and power compared to Barbara within the church. He chose a plan that would kill two birds with one stone, asking Barbara for help in investigating. You skillfully used the invisibility ring to enter Barbara's house, and she was very happy to see you. After a pleasant conversation, Barbara said she needed to leave for prayer and you asked her to help investigate Andre's situation. Barbara did not see Andre among the morning prayers. After finishing her prayer, she went to the meditation area to investigate. The administrator reported the situation truthfully. Barbara returned with the information and asked you to spend the whole day. With her before telling you the details, you decide. 1. Agree with Barbara, play for the whole day before leaving. 2. Refuse Barbara, only play for half a day before leaving. 3. Refuse Barbara, ask her to tell you the situation immediately, and promise to come back and accompany her later, considering that Leothius would attack him tonight, Shuchin chose the second option. Barbara reluctantly agreed to your request, but she wanted to experience more exciting activities, so you both used the invisibility ring to leave the room, Barbara took you to the vicinity of the garden goddess statue, using the invisibility effect, you both explored under the statue, before your mental power was exhausted, you sensibly brought Barbara back to the house, Barbara told you the location where Andre lived, after restoring your mental power, you left and went to investigate. You sneaked into Andre's house and found him being intimate with his young maid. You didn't see his son Andrew in the house, you decide. 1. Interrupt them and forcefully ask for Andrew's location. 2. Wait and observe. Charm the maid to ask for Andrew's location. 3. Leave the house and search nearby for Andrew. Andre himself is not a professional, and his maid is only a bronze-level swordsman, so Chuchin's strength is enough to defeat her. Chuchin shows the simplest way. You wait for an opportunity in stealth mode. When Andre's maid turns her back to you, you put on a mask and launch a surprise attack, knocking her unconscious. Andre realizes the situation is not good and takes out a magic scroll from his space ring. A gust of wind blows you away, giving Andre a chance to escape. You catch up to him, but he is already protected by the guards of the church, and you are surrounded. In the intense battle, you are outnumbered, but you draw your magic sword and kill the guards, capturing Andre. Andre tells you that his son, Andrew, has been corrupted by the demons and is now missing. After getting the answer, you try to store the magic sword in your personal space, but the sword spirit resists and the storage fails. The sword takes control of you, and your consciousness gradually fades away. Simulation ends. You get the desired result. 
even though it may not be entirely satisfactory. Overall score, 20 points. You gain 20 experience points and 20 plus 3 simulation points. Chu Chen is somewhat surprised by this result, but there is no need to continue the simulation. He promised Mephisto to find Andre, and the whereabouts of his son are just a side question. After finishing the simulation, Chu Chen finds Barbara and gives her various forbidden books he bought from a stall. They spend a pleasant day together. As the sun is about to set, he confidently appears in the library and then leaves. On his way out, he intentionally walks towards the training ground of the Holy Knights, where Leotes is training a group of bronze Holy Knights. Seeing Chu Chen, a barely noticeable anger appears on his face. He notices that Chu Chen is wearing the promise ring that originally belonged to Barbara and deliberately shakes it in his direction. Leotes is completely enraged. Wise one, Andre is hiding in residence number 17 of the church's meditation area. However, it seems that Andrew is not there. Capture Andre first and then ask him. Chu Chen returns home and tells Mephisto about his hairstyle. Upon hearing the news, Mephisto is stunned. This guy is still as cunning as before. I'll drag him out. Wait. Chu Chen hurriedly stops him. Wise one, it's already late. It's better to wait until tomorrow morning to take action. Chu Chen is worried that if Mephisto acts too early, it might affect Leoti's ambush on him. Mephisto controls her emotions. Although she wants to rush into the church and capture Andre immediately, she understands that she can't act impulsively. After all, this is the kingdom of New Moon, and Andre is a noble. Also, the fallen holy knight who is going to assassinate me tonight, please save me, wise one. Chu Chen continues, then we can use his despicable actions to question the archbishop. Mephisto knows that Chu Chen wants to use someone else to do the dirty work. If he is truly a holy knight of the church, the church will punish him. I won't directly kill him. That's fine. You capture him, and I'll take care of the rest myself. Chu Chen had no intention of leaving anyone alive. Mephisto hated internal conflicts within the church the most, and she didn't have much fondness for Chu Chen either. They were only trading now. However, compared to Chu Chen, she quite liked Chu Chen's student, Anna. This naive and innocent girl was kind-hearted, much like herself when she was young. She worried that Anna would be deceived by Chu Chen, just like she was deceived by Andre. Unfortunately, Anna's understanding of the doctrine of the holy light was a bit dull, and Mephisto had limited energy to retrain her own son. Otherwise, she might have taken her as a disciple. Mephisto agreed to Chu Chen's conditions and returned to her room to meditate, waiting for Chu Chen's enemies to fall into the trap. Chu Chen was not in a hurry either. After eating the takeout food Anna bought for him, he bathed and changed clothes. As for laundry and other chores, Anna naturally took care of them. At night, Chu Chen extinguished the candles, and the room immediately plunged into darkness. Leotis, who had been waiting outside, patiently endured his anger for an hour. Shouldn't he be asleep by now? Leotis had already changed into a set of leather armor, wearing a pure black mask on his face, and had switched to a different weapon. He carefully avoided the chocobos and came to the back of the house, prying open the ground floor window. After sneaking into the house, he observed for a while before arriving at Chu Chen's room on the second floor. Leotis took a deep breath, then turned the doorknob, but to his surprise, the door was not locked. Today is your death day. Leotis forcefully pushed open the door, then drew his weapon and stabbed fiercely towards the bed. Put. The feeling of the long sword piercing into the cotton made him greatly alarmed, and a strong sense of crisis came from behind him. Spear of Judgment. A dazzling light lit up, and Leotis was locked by a powerful mind, unable to move his body. A spear made of light elements instantly pierced through his abdomen, followed by a powerful burst of energy that severely injured him. Mephisto defeated Leotis with just one move. Looking at Leotis, who was spitting blood and collapsed on the ground, his face full of disbelief, Chu Chen felt extremely fortunate that Mephisto was his teammate. TSK TSK TSK, Leotis, you actually dared to assassinate a church priest. You really have quite the courage. Chu Chen came to Leotis and squinted his eyes. While spitting blood, Leotis asked, How did you know? Who is this old lady? Hearing Leotis calling her an old lady, Mephisto regretted not being more ruthless just now. She should have been more severe. You didn't hide your killing intent towards me at all. I am a priest without any backing or background. Based on your style, it's not difficult to deduce that you would do something foolish like this. What do you want to do? A hint of panic appeared in Leotis' eyes. When he looked at Mephisto again, he couldn't help but regret. Only now did he realize how terrifying this old man's strength was. Chu Chen approached, holding the true silver holy sword, ready to kill him. However, just in case, Chu Chen activated the simulation again. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial ability. 1. Basic meditation level plus 1, 5 points, 2. 
Intermediate Healing Magic Level Plus 1, 10 points, 3. Spear of Judgment LV1 Slash 8, 50 points, 4. Free Simulation, 20 points, this time, a Golden Level Divine Magic, Spear of Judgment, appeared in the simulation. Shu Chen had already witnessed the power of this divine magic. Even a Silver Holy Knight was instantly killed by it. Although this had something to do with Mephisto's own strength, Shu Chen believed that he could also achieve good results if he learned it. Should I promote later? Shu Chen was somewhat tempted and decided to make a decision after the simulation ended. You captured Leotes. Faced with the heavily injured Leotes, what do you decide? 1. Execute him, kill him directly to avoid future troubles. 2. Disable him and hand him over to the church for handling. 3. Let him go and become friends with him. Shu Chen decisively chose the first option. He wanted to see what results killing him would bring to himself. You step forward and directly kill Leotes, and to prevent him from being resurrected by the Archbishop, you wait until dawn before going to the church with Mephisto and the body the death of the Silver Paladin alarmed the Archbishop, but fortunately Mephisto did not harm you, and even told him that she killed Leotes. Mephisto used the attack of the Paladin on herself as a reason to ask the Archbishop for an explanation, and the Archbishop had nothing to say, using the excuse that Leotes was corrupted by the demons Mephisto took the opportunity to make him hand over Andre, claiming that Andre's behavior was suspicious and suspected of being corrupted by the demons the archbishop had no choice but to bring Andre, who was still unaware, to Mephisto. Mephisto took Andre away the archbishop asked you for detailed information, and your statement was consistent with Mephisto's and you swore in the name of the goddess the death of Leotes was left unresolved, and the backup saint candidate Barbara was saddened by the news later, Barbara, citing the insecurity within the church, publicly issued an oracle in the name of the goddess, making you her guardian paladin to follow her. You decide. 1. Refuse the oracle and question the authenticity of Barbara's oracle, asking the archbishop to consult the goddess to expose her lies too. Accept the oracle and educate Barbara properly when there are no outsiders around, asking her to lift the oracle and stop clinging to you. 3. Accept the oracle and follow Barbara closely to protect her safety. Chu Chen felt that Barbara seemed a bit out of control because of Leo Tiz's death, so he chose the second option. You accepted the oracle and became Barbara's exclusive paladin. You were arranged to live in the church and responsible for protecting Barbara's safety at night at night. You dismissed the other guards and entered Barbara's room. Barbara didn't want to lose you, and she wanted to lock you by her side in this way. No matter what means you used, she refused to let go. The archbishop had doubts about Barbara's oracle and prayed to the goddess for confirmation. The goddess personally inspected Barbara and found that she was exploring the mysteries of the human body with you. The goddess became furious and, after occupying Barbara's body, killed you simulation ends every choice you make will have immeasurable consequences for the future. So remember not to focus only on the present overall score, 18. Points obtained 18 points of simulation experience, obtained 18 plus 3 points of simulation points please select the reward you want to exchange for in the real world. With only 42 points, Xu Chen spent 15 points to upgrade the basic meditation to the maximum level, so that he could get a one-time increase of 3 plus 1 points in the spiritual attribute. The Archbishop is a bit difficult to deal with. I have to be more careful in the future. Chu Chen still had no intention of letting Leo Tiz go, but he didn't plan to go to the church tomorrow. Instead, he wanted Mephisto to take the body himself. With this idea in mind, Chu Chen started the simulation again. Simulation is about to start. Please choose your initial ability 1. Intermediate Healing Art Level plus 1, 10 points 2. Double the simulation points for this session, 10 points 3. Spear of Judgment LV1 slash 8, 50 points 4. Free Simulation, 20 points The long-awaited doubling of points appeared again, and Chu Chen immediately exchanged for this option. After all, now he has a minimum of plus 3 points, and after doubling, it will be plus 6 points. As long as the score is slightly higher, he can easily recover the investment. You killed Leo Tiz and asked Mephisto to take Leo Tiz's body to the church. Mephisto asked you to pay 300 gold coins as a reward, and you gladly agreed the poor Mephisto, who was mistaken for an old lady several times, was determined to buy a set of elf skincare products. Mephisto took the body to the church that night to question the archbishop. The startled archbishop was speechless and dared not question Mephisto's status as a sage. After the exchange, Mephisto found Andre and almost killed him when he saw him fooling around with a maid. Mephisto restrained his urge to kill and took Andre away. The archbishop prayed to the goddess and reported the incident involving Mephisto and Leotes. The goddess was indifferent and allowed the archbishop to handle it on his own. The matter was dropped. After learning that her son had been corrupted and disappeared, Mephisto found you and asked for your help in finding her son. You decide. 1. Help Mephisto and use the princess's power to find Andrew. 2. Refuse Mephisto and persuade her to give up on Andrew. 
3. Help Mephisto and lend her 300 gold coins to post a mission at the mercenary guild to find him. Because Chu Chen helped her find Andre, Mephisto highly recognized Chu Chen's ability to find people and sought his help again when she couldn't find her son. You choose to help Mephisto and tell her that you have a good relationship with Princess Catherine. You invite the princess to your mansion as a guest. Catherine takes time out of her busy schedule to come and, upon learning that the sage Mephisto needs her help, she orders her subordinates to set aside their work and search for Andrew with all their might. With Princess Catherine's efforts, they find Andrew's drained body in a morgue in a small town. Going back to the time of Andrew's death, even if Mephisto drops everything and rushes to find him now, it's already too late. She is destined to be disappointed. Heartbroken and almost mad with grief, Mephisto attacks Viscount Andre and seriously injures him. The Archbishop brings people to arrest Mephisto. Mephisto does not resist and surrenders, waiting for the goddess's punishment. Mephisto, as a top-level saint with this level of qualification, is already qualified to directly contact the goddess. Although she made a mistake, she won't have much trouble, and the king dare not make trouble for the sage over Andre's minor matter. The goddess orders Mephisto to stay in the holy city for three years as punishment. Mephisto becomes a presence second only to the archbishop and asks you to take Anna as her disciple. You decide. 1. Let Anna decide for herself whether to stay or go. 2. Persuade Anna to follow Mephisto and train. 3. Refuse Mephisto's request and let Anna continue to train with you. Anna has become an official Black Iron Priest and can now go out independently or find a bishop-level strongman to be her master according to the formal process. Becoming Mephisto's disciple is an opportunity for Anna, but Chu Chin wants to see what choice she will make when faced with temptation. You let Anna decide for herself, and she is deeply conflicted. Anna wants to train with Mephisto but doesn't want to leave you. Mephisto tells Anna that if she accepts, she will go to the church to find her tomorrow. After Mephisto leaves, Anna is very worried. Anna wants to train with Mephisto and decides to find a different way to stay by your side. At night, Anna comes to your room. She wants to trade her purity for your forgiveness and to keep you. You decide. 1. Accept Anna and make her your woman. 2. Accept Anna, but only maintain the original relationship and be an irresponsible man. 3. Reject Anna and send her away, never to return here again. Chu Chin doesn't want to give up a whole forest for one tree, so he decisively chooses the second option. You mercilessly took away her first time. After Anna's request, she can continue to stay here, and you did not refuse her request, but she can only come back to stay one day a week. Things seem to be developing in a good direction, the simulation is over. You made the princess and Mephisto owe you a favor, and you made Anna willingly sacrifice herself, but you have to be careful not to play with fire. Overall score, 24 points. Obtain 24 points of simulation experience, obtained, 24 plus 3, asterisk 2 simulation points. Doubling the points is awesome, and Chu Chen's points suddenly reached 71 points. Looking at the remaining two simulation attempts, he finally resisted the urge to exchange. Since Mephisto will stay, there will be plenty of opportunities in the future to exchange for her magic. Chu Chen returned to the real world and swung his long sword to kill Leo Titus again. Respected wise man, Leo Titus, as a holy knight of the church, attacked us innocent believers at night, which is simply heinous. Unfortunately, my words are insignificant. I don't know if you are willing to take the body to question the archbishop and let him discipline his subordinates properly? Chu Chen suggested tactfully, I think the archbishop, who is in the wrong, will also help you find Andre. Mephisto frowned. Although she didn't kill the person, she did seriously injure him. However, Leo Titus' behavior was indeed unforgivable. This time, Mephisto didn't ask Chu Chen for money. She planned to demand child support from that bastard Andre. You better not deceive me. If Andre is not in the church, I will cut out your tongue. Mephisto warned. Early the next morning, before dawn, Mephisto knocked on Chu Chen's door. Anna welcomed the other party into the house, and Mephisto's white hair had grown a bit more. Chu Chen, thank you for helping me find Andre. Now I need you to continue helping me find my son, Andrew. Before Chu Chen could speak, Mephisto went on to tell him everything. When she finished speaking, a hint of helplessness and sadness appeared in her eyes. Can you help me find him, right? Chu Chen asked in confusion, why don't you seek help from the church? With your identity, the church will fully cooperate with you. Mephisto shook her head in a hurry, no, my poor child may have already been corrupted. If the people from the church find him, they will definitely kill him. Even if he is corrupted, as long as it's not severe, there is still a way to redeem him. Mephisto possessed a powerful magic that sacrificed herself to save others. If it was for her son, she was willing to give him another chance. According to Andre's statement, he has probably already left the holy city. Alright, 
I have some acquaintance with Princess Catherine. I will ask her to help you find him. Mephisto at this moment didn't look like a wise man at all. She was just a helpless mother. She was like the family members of those who were deceived into overseas scam parks on earth. They knew there was no hope but they still refused to give up. Anna rode a chocobo and rushed to the palace. Before leaving, Chu Chen gave Anna a note, telling her about Mephisto's identity. When Catherine and Anna returned, Catherine looked respectful, while Anna was shocked. She couldn't believe that the ordinary-looking old man in front of her was the legendary wise man. After Catherine understood the situation, she immediately dispatched her subordinates and sent requests for assistance in the investigation to those nobles who were friendly to her. Although Chu Chin knew that Andrew was already dead, the bigger the commotion Princess Catherine made, the more Mephisto would owe her. Chu Chen did not tell Catherine the location of Andrew, as it would raise suspicions. In the next few days, Chu Chen waited for the simulation attempts to recover and waited for news. On the third day, Princess Catherine told Chu Chen about Andrew's death. On the fourth day, Andre was seriously injured by Mephisto, and Mephisto was captured by the Archbishop. On the fifth day, Mephisto was appointed as the deputy commander of the holy city by the goddess and ordered to stay for three years. In the afternoon, Mabus found Anna, a young girl who resembled herself when she was young, in order to find a new spiritual support and took her as her disciple. This time, Shuchin no longer let Anna be conflicted in her heart, but directly persuaded her to seize the opportunity. Anna, why don't you thank Lord Mabus quickly? This is an opportunity that countless people dream of. Shuchin patted Anna's shoulder and encouraged her. Faced with the sudden surprise, Anna didn't know how to react for a while. But, but, you are my teacher. Keep the key, you can come back when you have free time on weekends. Mabus continued, no need to rush to give me an answer, if you're willing, come find me at the church tomorrow. After Mabus finished speaking, he turned and left. In the past, countless people begged to be his teacher, but now the other party still needed to consider it. But this also showed that Anna was a person with feelings and principles, not someone who would forget loyalty for personal gain. Mabus was a powerful expert at the peak of the fourth rank, and even in the entire continent, he was the top master. Being able to become a student of such a powerful person, even if she only learned a little, would be enough to benefit her for a lifetime. Unfortunately, Anna was currently infatuated, and in front of Mabus, she seemed to consider Chuchin more important. If Chuchin opposed, she would definitely not leave. But now Chuchin encouraged her to become Mabus' disciple which made her hesitate. Even though Chu Chen said she could continue to come back and stay, she knew that she probably wouldn't have much time to rest and would have to practice diligently. If it takes too long, he might forget about me. Anna made up her mind. That night, Anna bathed and changed into a cool pajama. Knock, knock, knock. Anna knocked on the door. Chu Chen had already known her thoughts in the simulator. He opened the door and looked at the shy Anna who was bowing her head and deliberately asked, Anna, is there something you need? I. I want to understand the mysteries of life, maybe it will help me in my cultivation. Can you, can you teach me? At this point, Anna's face was as red as a cherry. Chu Chen closed the door and hugged Anna into his arms. Yes, but we will only discuss the meaning of life in a pure sense. Anna held Chu Chen tightly, and it was clear that she was very nervous. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Chu Chen comforted her while stroking her hair. After Anna relaxed, she slowly knelt on the ground. She looked up with a longing expression. After Anna left, Chu Chen's spacious villa felt somewhat empty. Whether it was to take care of his daily life or to avoid boredom, Chu Chen planned to go to the slave market to buy a humanoid servant who was good at housework. As for why it had to be a humanoid servant, besides satisfying his own preferences, it was more important because humanoid slaves were easier to control. Although there were human slaves in the New Moon Kingdom, they still had certain human rights, while humanoid slaves were much more miserable. Chu Chen's simulation count had already been restored to 7-7 full, and he wanted to complete the promotion by accumulating points during the process of buying slaves. As the capital of the New Moon Kingdom, Shamhala City had a thriving slave trade. Except for the elven race, there were almost no slaves that couldn't be sold. Chu Chen arrived outside the slave trading market, which was located in the area near the city gate of New Moon City. Although it was not in the city center, it was very lively. Whether it was nobles, wealthy merchants, mercenaries, or ordinary people, they would come here to buy slaves. A farmer who saved enough money to buy a slave could then delegate all the dirty farm work to the slave. A bachelor who bought a slave could save a lot of money spent on women in the red light district and not have to worry about dowries. A merchant who bought slaves in bulk didn't have to pay them monthly wages, making them permanent workers. The way of heaven is to diminish excess and supplement insufficiency, the way of man is to diminish insufficiency and uphold excess. Xu Chen couldn't help but think of this sentence. 
Regardless of which world, it is a pyramid structure, and to climb to the top, one must step on the bottom. Lost in thought, Chu Chen arrived at the largest slave shop in the market. As soon as he arrived at the door, he noticed that the receptionist's gaze towards him was somewhat strange. The priest and holy knight badges he wore clashed with the slave market. Chu Chen naturally understood the teachings of the Church of the Holy Light, which was one of the reasons why he decided to purchase a slave from a different race rather than a human slave. Sir priest, how may I assist you? The attendant respectfully asked. Although Chu Chen wore two badges, his attire leaned more towards that of a priest. I need to purchase a maid-type slave who is good at household chores, beautiful, and obedient, Chu Chen stated his requirements. Upon hearing this, the attendant immediately revealed an understanding smile. May I ask if you have any specific requirements regarding the race of the slave? Show me around and introduce them to me first, Chu Chen replied. Very well, this way please. The attendant led Chu Chen to the area where the slaves were confined, consisting of cages. The imprisoned slaves looked at Chu Chen with complex eyes, similar to the cats and dogs in a pet store. Their destinies had fallen into the abyss, and now their only hope was to find a slightly better owner. Chu Chen's appearance stirred up many slaves, each one calling out from their iron cages, trying to catch his attention. Especially those who arrived early and couldn't be sold, if they continued to remain unsold, they were likely to be sold to the arena. Sir Priest, may I ask what price range of slaves you are interested in purchasing? What is the price range for these slaves? This is the low price area, with prices below 10 gold coins, which is not suitable for someone of your esteemed status. Please follow me further ahead, the attendant said with a smile. Usually, buyers with status and identity like yours would choose slaves between 10 gold to 100 gold. If you have higher demands or special requirements, you can also purchase premium slaves between 100 gold to 1000 gold. Chu Chen continued to inquire, what about the more expensive ones? He he, more expensive slaves are generally not sold directly. The trading market holds a slave auction every week, and each shop will take their excellent slaves to auction. The trading market will help promote the registered merchants in advance, so they can sell at better prices. Chu Chen nodded slightly, I see, take me to the premium slave area. Chu Chen still had over 900 gold coins, so buying a better slave would save him a lot of trouble in the future. Upon hearing that Chu Chen wanted to purchase a premium slave, the attendant's smile grew even wider as he guided Chu Chen past the area for superior slaves. The slaves in the superior slave area already looked quite good, but most of them were ordinary people with little combat power. The slaves in the premium area not only had pleasing appearances and well-dressed attire, but most of them also possessed some combat power. Here are the slaves suitable for guards, and here are the slaves suitable for servants, the attendant pointed to cages of different colors on both sides. Xu Chen glanced at them and continued, I don't want human slaves, I want a maid slave from a different race. Understood, sir priest. You truly know how to enjoy. Please follow me. The attendant led Chu Chen further inside, and they soon arrived at the slave area that Chu Chen desired. The cages in the premium area have prices listed on them. Our shop does not negotiate prices, nor do we overcharge. You can rest assured while making your selection. Chu Chen looked at the prices, which were mostly around 300 gold coins, with the better ones at 500 gold coins and the lesser ones at 150 gold coins. Chu Chen stood in front of the slaves and addressed them, I am a free priest, and I am currently in need of a maid slave who is skilled in household chores, with at least black iron level strength. Who among you wants to come with me? Chu Chen smiled and looked at the crowd. Although these high quality slaves had nicer names, they were still just slaves in reality. The slaves glanced at each other and remained silent. Most priests had the hearts of beasts, and the more friendly they appeared, the more wary people became. No one knew what kind of twisted and perverted thoughts lay beneath his facade. The waiter stepped forward and took the initiative to introduce Chu Chen. Three slaves caught Chu Chen's attention. This is a cat-eared slave, priced at 329 gold coins. Relatively docile with the strength of a black iron level assassin, but be careful of her forked tongue. This is a fox-tailed slave, priced at 330 gold coins. More cunning than the cat-eared slave, knows how to serve her master, and she also has the ability to charm. The only downside is a slight fox odor, so perfume needs to be sprayed daily. This is a Pomeranian slave, priced at 350 gold coins. Pomeranians are a branch of the dog-eared tribe. Once they recognize their master, they are extremely loyal, but sometimes they may develop hostility towards female owners. As the information about these slaves was revealed one by one, Chu Chen made a decision and initiated the first simulation to see if the envisioned slaves were suitable. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial ability. 1. 30 gold coins, 1.2. Beast Taming Technique Level Plus 1, 10 points, 3. Holy Fire Level Plus 1, 10 points, 4. 
Free simulation, 20 points. The exchange rate of gold coins to points had increased from 20 coins per point to 30 coins per point as the simulator level increased, but Chu Chin did not intend to exchange precious points for gold coins. He was about to break through the bronze level and did not have extra points to exchange for these things. You saw many tempting slaves in the slave market, and you are more inclined to control them through contracts rather than iron chains. After comparing, you have chosen three slaves to purchase. 1. Catyard Slave, Black Iron Level Assassin, priced at 329 gold coins. 2. Pomeranian Slave, Black Iron Level Warrior, priced at 350 gold coins. 3. Winged Humanoid Slave, Black Iron Level Archer, priced at 435 gold coins. Chuchin didn't want a fox spirit. He wanted a slave who could do household chores. The Pomeranian slave was a warrior by profession and should be more capable, and her physique was much better than the other two slaves. However, if considering combat, the winged humanoid slave with wings might be more suitable. Although the black iron level combat power was average, if it was an aerial battle, then she could unleash her full potential. Moreover, winged humanoids had powerful reconnaissance abilities and could also handle guarding duties. You have chosen to purchase the winged humanoid slave and named her Betty. After buying Betty, your mental power is insufficient to make a second contract, so you decide. 1. Release the Chocobo from the contract and sign a contract with Betty. 2. Use the slave collar provided by the slave shop to control Betty. 3. Keep her in a cage and release her after taming. Chuchin planned to sign a contract with Betty once his mental power met the requirements. However, in the simulated world, it was not possible to simulate again, so the available options were different from the real world. You use the slave shop's collar to control Betty. With a single thought, she will be punished. You bring Betty back home. She appears obedient on the surface and completely submissive to you. You decide to test her loyalty. You decide. 1. Remove the collar and tell her that if she serves you for 3 years, she will be set free after that. 2. Remove the collar and let her guard outside the house. 3. Pretend to sleep in front of her and give her the opportunity to attack and kill you. Normally, People who control slaves with collars would lock them in a relatively safe place at night. Although the collar could punish the slave, it couldn't be activated when the owner was asleep. You made Betty perform an extremely insulting dance for you, and then pretended to be asleep after getting drunk. Betty, feeling humiliated and furious, took out a fruit knife and stabbed at your neck, but you suddenly woke up and avoided the attack. Betty was shocked and tried to escape from your clutches by flapping her wings, but you activated the slave collar and Betty fell from the air. Since her head hit the ground first, she was badly injured. Simulation ends. You wasted over 400 gold coins. The best way to prevent her from betraying you is to not give her any chance to betray you. Overall score, 13 points. Earned 13 experience points and 13 plus 3 simulation points. Chu Chen was somewhat surprised, but this was normal. In order to provide buyers with a better user experience, the slaves in these premium areas are imported without any ideological education. If personality correction and etiquette guidance are needed, the slaves can be sent to specialized institutions for training. Compared to the crude education in the slave market, these institutions are more professional. Back in the real world, Chu Chen looked at the winged person locked in a cage in the distance with a hint of admiration in his eyes. Even as a slave, she still had a longing for freedom in her heart. However, this was also the tragedy of the winged race. Usually, winged slaves are controlled in ways other than signing a magical contract. In general, their wings are locked with heavy iron chains to prevent them from escaping. Although her personality is stubborn, as long as she is given a certain amount of respect and slowly trained, she will be good. Chu Chen looked at his Pomeranian slave, who was looking at him with anticipation. She was the only one among the three slaves chosen by Chu Chen who showed a voluntary expression. Forget it, it's boring if she's too obedient. Chu Chen knew that he had already made a choice during the first simulation. Now, the question was how to make the winged girl loyal to him. System, start the simulation again. About to start the simulation, please choose your initial abilities. Friendly reminder, improving the monster taming skill can enhance the continuous taming effect on monsters. Chu Chen's score had reached 87 points, and if this simulation went smoothly, the extra points could be exchanged normally. You chose to buy a winged slave and gave her the new name Betty and controlled her with a slave collar. After returning home, you showed Betty around your house and then arranged her work and residence. You want her to live in. 1. The vacant guest room, to be a decent maid. 2. The utility room cage, to continue honing her character. 3. Your bed, to conquer her body before considering other things. Xu Chen didn't want the simulation to end too quickly, so he chose the first option, also to see if the winged person would attack him or try to escape when treated well. 
Betty felt respected and felt that she could live like a normal person. She was very satisfied with your arrangements. Betty started cleaning the house, even flying up to the roof to clean it. At night, she looked at the collar on her neck and fell into deep thought. When you were asleep, she opened the window and tried to fly away. After much consideration, she decided to stay. She remembered what her fellow inmate had said, that the collar would explode if it moved a certain distance away from the owner's wristband. She came to your bedside, wanting to take away your control wristband. You deliberately let her succeed and then woke up. Betty didn't want to fight you and asked you to let her go. You choose. 1. Let her leave and give her freedom. 2. Make her repay the ransom with work, and after paying it off, you can let her go. 3. Prevent her from leaving, teach her a lesson, and make her understand what a slave should do. No one likes being a slave, even in slightly better conditions with a slightly more normal master. Once they have the opportunity to escape, slaves will still do their best to run away. You let her repay the ransom with work, and then give her freedom, according to the high price you offered. She needs to work for you for three years. Betty accepted your proposal, but she asked you not to attempt to possess her body, and you casually agreed to her request. In the following days, Betty diligently completed her tasks, and after temporarily feeling reassured, you planned to test her limits again. At night, you called Betty to the bathroom, and you made a decision. 1. Make her kneel down and wash your feet. 2. Make her give you a back massage. 3. Make her help you take a bath. The three options vary in intensity, and Chu Chen decided to start with something simple. You decided to gradually progress and only make her kneel down in front of you and wash your feet. Betty was hesitant, but she still obeyed your command and completed your request in humiliation. You decided. 1. Stop there and maintain this level of relationship in the future. 2. Take it a step further and continue testing her limits. 3. Act aggressively and forcefully possess her body. A slave is a slave and Xu Chen had no intention of treating her as an equal. In the future, he would naturally control her through a contract. For now, let's see what happens. You decided to take it a step further without possessing her body, and you asked her to give you a full body massage. Betty wanted to resist, but you used a bracelet to make her feel pain, and she reluctantly completed all your requests in humiliation. In the following days, you continuously tested her limits, but as long as you kept your promise, she wouldn't betray you. 1. End Simulation 2. Demand her submission. 3. Forcefully possess her body. Ending the simulation normally can earn more points, and Chu Chin would have plenty of opportunities in the future, so he ended the simulation early. Simulation ended. You rarely showed restraint, and it's unclear whether to praise or despise you. Overall score, 22 points. Earn 22 simulation experience points and 22 plus 3 simulation points. Please select the reward you want to exchange for in the real world. 1. 30 gold coins, 1 point. 2. Level up in monster taming skill by 1, 10 points. 3. Level up in holy fire skill by 1, 10 points. Chu Chen's points reached 112, and he exchanged for a level up in monster taming skill. He then planned to start advancing. Congratulations on meeting the promotion requirements. Would you like to start the bronze promotion? Friendly reminder, promotion will take 3 minutes, please ensure your surroundings are safe. After thinking for a moment, Chu Chen said to the attendant, I want that winged slave. I'll go to the restroom first, and then bring her to the counter for settlement. Yes, sir. I'll handle the procedures for you right away. The attendant instantly smiled with joy. He had been worried that Chu Chen was a hypocrite who came to perform obligatory treatment on slaves, but now it seemed he had been overly concerned. Chu Chen went to an empty place and started the promotion process. Points minus 100, soul crystal minus 1, monster crystal minus 1. The crystals in his personal space merged into Chu Chen's body, and the points were the power of the system, driving the strengthening of Chu Chen's body and mind. There was no pain, only endless comfort, and Chu Chen quickly completed the promotion. Congratulations, your rank has been promoted to bronze. Received reward, all attributes plus 2. Level cap unlocked up to level 20. Congratulations, your level has increased to LV11, and you have gained 2 free attribute points. Chu Chen allocated all two free attribute points to his mental power, giving him a total of 28 mental power. Name, Chu Chen. Race, Human. Rank, Bronze. Level, LV11 slash 20. Attributes, Physique 16, Agility 7 plus 2, Mental Power 28, Charm 9 plus 1, Luck 7. Although Chu Chen had just reached the bronze level on the surface, his mental power was already outstanding even among bronze level individuals. After reaching the maximum level in pure magic skills at the bronze level, I should be able to stack my mental power up to 31 points. 
Chu Chen's current bronze level pure magic skills are not yet at full level, and the highest level skills are Beast Taming LV2-6 and Sacred Fire LV2-6. In addition, there are also Range Detection LV1-6 and Intermediate Healing LV1-6. Considering the current situation, Chu Chen plans to simulate and max out the Beast Taming skill first. System, can Beast Taming also work on humanoid slaves? Chu Chen asked curiously. Friendly reminder, Beast Taming theoretically can tame any creature as long as their mental and spiritual power is lower than the host's, so don't pay too much attention to the name. The reason why it's called Beast Taming is mainly because beasts are easier to forcibly tame. However, with Chu Chen's mental power, dealing with someone like Betty, who is an illegal profession, as long as she cooperates and signs the initial contract, the difficulty of control in the later stages is not great. Beast Taming is not just a simple beast contract, the contract is just the beginning. After the contract is signed, as long as it is activated several times a day, it can continuously brainwash and hypnotize the other party until they are completely unable to resist by imprinting a thought seal. The Chocobo has become more obedient after Chu Chen's continuous taming, and in fact, even if the contract is released, it is not a problem. If the mental power cannot meet the requirements for signing a second contract in a short period of time, the Chocobo contract can also be released first. Chu Chen's consciousness returned to the real world, and he arrived at the front desk of the shop. At this time, the waiter had already put on the slave collar for the avian slave and handed the control bracelet to Chu Chen for explanation. Master Priest, this bracelet can be controlled with mental power or you can press the button on it to punish the slave. The collar and bracelet are gifts for purchasing premium slaves, and the energy inside can be used for about a month. After a month, you can come to our store and get a new controller at an 80% discount. Chu Chen paid for the goods and took the control bracelet. He planned to raise his mental power first when he returned, as only by completely controlling it can he feel at ease. Master Priest, she is now your exclusive slave. You can give her a name and let her completely forget the past and start a new life. The waiter explained, according to scholars' research, this is beneficial for taming and controlling slaves, and can increase the effect by about 5%. Chu Chen didn't know where the other party got the data from, so he gave her the name he used in the simulation. From now on, you will be called Betty Chu. Xu Chen said to Betty. Betty lowered her head and obeyed. Yes, master. Xu Chen nodded slightly, realizing that reality and simulation were indeed very different. Hearing a beautiful woman with white wings like an angel calling him master made Xu Chen feel very excited. Let's go. I'll take you to customize a few sets of clothes for changing. Xu Chen said considerately. Due to the wings of the avian race, their clothes usually need to be specially designed, otherwise it would be troublesome to wear. Betty had been observing Chu Chen, contemplating her escape plan. After hearing Chu Chen's words, she was somewhat surprised and also a little happy. Are you thinking about how to escape? After the two of them got on the carriage, Chu Chen revealed her thoughts. No, I'm not. Betty hurriedly explained. Chu Chen shook his head. It's normal for a slave to want to escape, especially since you are an avian with wings that can fly away. Here's the deal. I spent 435 gold coins to buy you and you will work for me and deduct 10 gold coins every month. If you perform well during this period, I will also reward you. When you repay the money you owe me, I will give you freedom and let you leave. Chu Chen's promise was only to better control her, and when she repaid the money, he would make a real decision. By that time, she would most likely have been completely tamed and not want to leave, or maybe by then Chu Chen would have grown tired of her and not want her anymore. In any case, it was just an empty promise to give her hope and make her serve him better. The simulation has already proven that this approach works quite well. Ah, are you really telling the truth? Betty asked incredulously. She had never heard of such a master before, and almost none of the slaves sold back to slave traders were good people. I have no reason to deceive you, or would you prefer to be chained up and live in a cage every day? Chu Chen retorted. Betty couldn't stand being in a cage for just a month, so she pleaded with Chu Chen, please don't do this, I will serve you wholeheartedly. Betty also wanted to ask Chu Chen not to invade her body, but Chu Chen interrupted her. You should know that as a slave, you have no rights. I am only good to you because I am a good person. Now I have given you countless opportunities that slaves dream of, so don't think about anything else. And I am a bronze priest and paladin. Chu Chen pointed to the badge on his body and said, plus the collar, it is almost impossible for you to escape. Remember, if you try to escape, I will sell you directly to the red light district. Chu Chen warned. Under the threat of a carrot and stick, Betty temporarily gave up the idea of escaping, unless Chu Chen did something too excessive, she was willing to work for Chu Chen to repay her debt. And Chu Chen wouldn't do anything reckless until the contract was fully established. 
In the following time, Chu Chin took Betty to a clothing store to urgently customize made outfits and various cost costumes, and then took her to purchase various necessities and ingredients in the city. In the meantime, they enjoyed a sumptuous meal. This made Betty, who had been imprisoned for a long time, feel the long-lost freedom, even if it was limited, she still enjoyed it very much. After returning to the villa, Chu Chin arranged a decent guest room for her, which filled her with hope for the future. Just treated as working in the human world, Betty comforted herself. In the evening, Betty started preparing dinner for Chu Chen. As the winged race needed to maintain their figure for flying, Betty's cooking skills were relatively light. Chu Chen had just had a big meal at noon, so he didn't mind having a lighter dinner. At night, Betty slept on a comfortable and soft bed, feeling grateful but also shedding tears of regret. Wu Wu I shouldn't have run away from home. Is this the consequence of being a bad child? Sister, I really want to go back home. Fortunately, I didn't encounter a perverted master. I need to earn enough money to leave as soon as possible. Tonight, Chu Chen didn't trouble Betty. He was thinking about ways to make money. After these days of understanding Shangbara City, he decided to go to the arena tomorrow to make money using the simulator. The next morning, when Chu Chen woke up, Betty had already prepared a sumptuous breakfast. There were many ingredients purchased yesterday, and she didn't know what Chu Chen liked to eat, so she made more to try. Although Betty was young, her cooking skills were good. Although the dishes were relatively simple, it could be seen that she put a lot of effort into them. The taste is good, I really like it, Chu Chen praised. When Betty heard the compliment, a smile appeared on her face. Usually, when she was at home, no matter how hard she tried, her sister would always find fault with her. Although her cooking skills improved because of this, she hoped to receive praise. But one of the main reasons she ran away from home was because her sister was too strict with her. Master, the tailor shop delivered the clothes in the morning. Besides the clothes Chu Chen had custom made at the store yesterday, she also picked out many nice clothes and modified them into wing styles. As a young girl, she couldn't wait to put on the new clothes. Today we're going out, so pick a dress suitable for going out, Chu Chen understood her thoughts. Giving her the freedom to choose now was to make her more willing to cooperate and wear those interesting clothes in the future. Betty restrained her eagerness in her heart. After finishing her meal, Chu Chen started eating the leftovers. She didn't change into her favorite clothes until she had washed all the bowls clean. Although she was still wearing a maid outfit, she felt that this exquisite maid dress was even more beautiful than what the chief's daughter wore at her wedding in her tribe. Yesterday, she thought the price was too expensive, but now she regretted not picking a few more. Master, where are we going today? Betty, dressed in her new clothes, came to Chuchin with a map of the capital city in her hand. Although Chakabos were obedient, they could only go to places they had been before. They needed someone to guide them to places they hadn't been. We're going to the arena, Chuchin said while admiring Betty. Betty's heart skipped a beat. During her days of captivity, she often saw slaves being sent to the arena. Those slaves sent to the arena had only one way to go, which was death. Only if they could win a hundred consecutive matches would they have a chance to be granted special permission to become free. In the hundred years since the establishment of the Shamhala Arena, only one dragonkin slave had completed this almost impossible challenge. Betty quickly took out the map to check the location of the arena, afraid that she would be sold to the arena by Chuchin if she didn't perform well. The arena was not far from the slave market, located between the slave market and the adventurer's guild. In addition to battles between humans, the arena also included battles between humans and monsters, as well as battles between monsters. Therefore, adventurers from the guild were often needed to assist in capturing various monsters. In the former, depending on the type of competition, it was not always necessary to fight to the death, while in the latter, usually only one side could survive. After about half an hour of carriage ride, they arrived at their destination. There were ticket windows at the entrance of the arena, as well as windows for betting on today's matches. Chu Chen asked Betty to buy a box seat ticket, while he himself went to the betting window. In the morning, there were only three duels available for betting. In addition, there were some entertainment-oriented competitions, mainly for show. There would be more matches in the afternoon, and the evening was the busiest peak period. Chu Chen looked at the odds and general situation of these three matches, and then started the simulation. Simulation is about to begin, please choose your initial ability, 1. Level up range detection magic, 10 points, 2. Level up intermediate healing magic, 10 points, 3. Arena slave secret, 1 point, 4. Free simulation, 20 points, the taming magic that Chuchin wanted did not appear, but fortunately, the first two options could be used to increase his attributes. Chuchin didn't really need the secret of the arena slave, as he could predict the results with the simulator, so he directly started the simulation with only two points. 
You arrived at the arena and wanted to make money by taking advantage of the situation, you decided to spend a large amount of money on the first match, and then bet on the second match after winning, the first match is between a human bronze warrior and a bronze earth bear. You choose. 1. Believe that the human will win. 2. Believe that the bear will win. 3. Give up on the first match, the strength of both sides seemed to be similar, and the Shambhala arena tended to match evenly matched battles. Chu Chen randomly chose 1. You chose to believe in the human. You and Betty went to the second floor box seat that you bought at a high price, the first battle ended quickly, and you gained 360 gold coins, during the entertainment match, you asked the waiter to help you bet on the second match. You choose. 1. Believe that the human female swordsman will win. 2. Believe that the minotaur warrior will win. 3. Give up on this match. In the second match, both sides were also bronze level, but there seemed to be some difference in strength. The minotaur was strong and sturdy, while the human female swordsman knew some simple magic. You think that human female swordsmen have unparalleled advantages after a long wait, the second battle finally begins the human female swordsman severely injures the minotaur, but the minotaur ultimately turns the tables with astonishing perseverance the human female swordsman suffers torture from the minotaur, and the match ends you lose all your gold coins, but you still watch the third match to the end in the third match, the shadow leopard, which you think is easier to win, is killed. By the wind wolf you guessed wrong again, simulation ends the simulator adjusts the simulation options in progress based on Chu Chen's simulation purpose. Now that Chu Chen has run out of money, there is no need to continue the simulation. Simulation ends Yuri not too unlucky, if you had stopped in time, maybe it wouldn't be so bad overall score, 15 points obtained 15 simulation experience points, obtained 15 plus 3 simulation points please select the rewards you want to exchange for in the real world. Chu Chen exchanged for 2 levels of intermediate healing magic, and the points returned to zero again. With the results of the first simulation, Chu Chen no longer needs to continue simulating. However, he is somewhat worried that the arena may cheat or fix matches in his subsequent second or third guesses due to the large amounts involved. In theory, this is easy, such as in the third battle between monsters. By giving one of the monsters an enhanced potion in advance, or making another monster that wants to lose drink a weakening potion, the outcome can be changed to some extent. In addition, the simulator is about to upgrade, and Chu Chen starts the simulation again. The initial options are the same as before, and Chu Chen starts the simulation directly. You arrive at the arena, relying on the memories in your mind, you win 360 gold coins again you win again in the second match, and when the third match starts, you don't notice anything unusual, and you win again looking at the more than 2700 gold coins in your hand, your heart is filled with excitement, and you decide. 1. Take the winnings and leave the arena too. Continue waiting and participate in the afternoon and evening competitions 3. Go home first and see if anyone is following you at the arena Chu Chun shows the third option. Although your three consecutive wins have attracted some attention in the arena, the number of spectators in the arena is not many compared to the total amount after making sure there is no danger, you and Betty enjoy a meal, and in the afternoon, you arrive at the arena again Yuri Lucky, and you win the first match in the afternoon, and you decide. 1. Go all in and continue to the next match 2. Take the winnings, you have already attracted attention in the arena 3. Switch to smaller amounts, just for entertainment you choose to go all in, and you notice something unusual about the participants in the second match, and you lose the game. Simulation ends fortunately, they didn't directly trouble you, maybe you should be more cautious overall score, 18 points obtained 18 simulation experience points, obtained 18 plus 3 simulation points congratulations. The simulator level has been upgraded to level 4 the rewards at the end of the simulation can be exchanged up to 4 times the maximum number of simulations has increased to 8 times and the basic reward has increased to 4 points you can exchange rewards to the real world before. The simulation starts after the upgrade of the simulator, all abilities have been improved, and it also humanely incorporates the rewards exchanged at the beginning of the simulation directly into reality. This way, Xu Chin doesn't have to wait for the simulation to end every time and exchange points. It can save a lot of points in the long run. Xu Chin exchanged for 2 more levels of intermediate healing magic, and in a good mood, he also exchanged for the secret of the arena slaves. Back in the real world, Chu Chen buys the first match's guess and checks the contents of the secret. The secret mainly describes the various situations of the existing slaves in the arena, and with this information as a judgment, better decisions can be made. Chu Chen checked the situation of the two slaves he lost in the second match in the afternoon. As expected, the slave who failed should have had a higher winning rate. Chu Chen also found some slaves who were good at fishing from the information. They clearly had strong abilities but always maintained a precarious winning state in order to avoid being arranged against two strong opponents. Chu Chen and Betty came to the box, 
which not only had a better environment but also was equipped with fruits and snacks. While enjoying Betty's feeding and massage, Chu Chen continued to look at the secrets of the slaves. Most of the slaves in the arena were black iron level, and only those at the bronze level were eligible for betting duels. There were very few silver level slaves, each of them being a treasure of the town, usually only fighting once or twice a week. The silver level duels attracted countless spectators, and even some self-proclaimed high-ranking professionals would want to learn from watching. Soon, the first competitive duel began, and Chu Chin successfully won the first pot of gold. Betty couldn't help but envy, thinking that if she had so much money, she might be able to earn enough to redeem herself today. What about you? Do you want to try? Betty shook her head in a hurry. Her luck had always been bad, and she dared not participate in such gambling luck matters. You are smart, but I am smarter than you, Chu Chin said to Betty, go and help me by the next minute or victory. Okay. After about 10 minutes, Betty came back with the lottery ticket. Chu Chen won another match in her incredulous eyes. This time, he personally went to redeem and bet on the third match. The reason he had attracted attention from the arena before was largely because he had the waiter buy the tickets, and the situation would be given to the arena by the waiter. Normally, the lottery tickets were not named, as long as the double encoding on the ticket matched the encoding on the arena's bottom sheet, they could be redeemed. Winning three times in a row was not a high probability, and Betty couldn't help but suspect that Chu Chen had some special cheating method. During the lunch break, Chu Chen did not leave the arena but enjoyed the exclusive food in the box with Betty. Master, can you lend me 500 gold coins? I can win with you, right? Betty said anxiously to Chu Chen. You can, but the borrowed money will have interest. By the time you repay the money, it will probably double, Chu Chen said with a smile. It may take you more than 10 years to repay it all. Do you really want to borrow? Betty was shocked and quickly shook her head like a drum. Unfortunately, Betty missed the last chance. The first match of the afternoon began. Chu Chen bought three tickets from different windows to minimize the possibility of being noticed. He decided that in the future, he would use the disguise of the Dark Knight to change his face and come to the arena to brush, otherwise it would still be dangerous. As the match progressed, Betty was surprised to find that Chu Chen had won again. But unfortunately, Chu Chen stopped when things were going well and did not continue. Otherwise, Betty might have gathered the courage to ask Chu Chen for money again. Chu Chen did not rush to redeem, he waited until there were fewer people at the redemption window before going to redeem. Over 5,200 gold coins were thrown into his personal space by Chu Chen. With this money, Chu Chen could enjoy himself for a long time. When leaving, Chu Chen activated his range detection skill to observe. Fortunately, no one from the arena followed him, otherwise it would be troublesome again. Xu Chen came to the commercial street and naturally had to put on the equipment that he couldn't afford before and didn't want to buy. Now he had reached the bronze level, and it was estimated that he would not be promoted to silver so quickly. A set of bronze level equipment was worthy of his status. Just as he was about to make a purchase, a flyer handed over by a little boy caught his attention. The Magic Equipment Quarterly Auction, jointly held by Shangbala and the Forest of Elves, is about to begin. As an ally of the New Moon Kingdom, the Forest of Elves would trade the magic equipment made by their tribe with humans. As the capital of the New Moon Kingdom, Shangbala is also the best place to sell magic equipment. This auction will be held in three days, and it is a large-scale auction that only takes place once every quarter. At that time, not only buyers from Shangbala city, but also many people from surrounding cities will come here. Sir, I have brochures here. It provides detailed information about the items in this auction. It only costs one silver coin. Do you need it? Chu Chen threw a silver coin to the little boy and then took a beautifully made brochure like an art book. When he saw the highlight auction item and the starting price, he was speechless with surprise. The gold coins in his space were suddenly not enough. Are the elves crazy? They are actually auctioning off the Fountain of Life? Chu Chen was very surprised. But after reading the description, he understood. Taking another bottle of the Fountain of Life can extend a human's lifespan by about 10 years and keep them forever young, but repeated use will not increase the effect. For the elves, who have a lifespan of thousands of years and do not age, the Fountain of Life may not be as significant. It is often used as a luxury advanced medicine. The Fountain of Life is a special plant called the Tree of Life nurtured by the elves, condensed from the essence of natural power. The elves rarely sell the Fountain of Life, most of the time, they sell it directly to the royal family or some nobles and strong individuals. Although Catherine's mother is just an ordinary elf, marrying the king represents the dignity of the elf forest. Catherine, as a half-elf, is also a symbol of friendship between the elf forest and the new moon kingdom. The elves auctioning off the fountain of life may be related to the forced marriage incident of Princess Catherine, as the elves want to express their dissatisfaction to the king through this. 
Although Chu Chen is interested in the Fountain of Life, his interest is not that great. For him, the cost effectiveness of the Fountain of Life is too low. Instead of spending a fortune to buy it, it is better to find an opportunity to obtain it through the system. As the highlight of this auction, the Fountain of Life will attract many strong individuals and even people from other countries to come and buy it. In addition to the Fountain of Life, the other various items in the auction are also very good. Even though the prices may be higher than usual, many times these equipment cannot be bought even with money. Chu Chen only flipped through a few pages and already found several pieces of equipment that he liked. He couldn't wait to go back to the arena and earn millions of gold coins. That's it for today. Tomorrow, I'll go to the arena in disguise. Chu Chen made up his mind. After returning home, he wrote down the magic equipment he wanted to bid on, and then estimated the amount of money he needed based on the starting price. The next day, when he woke up, he took out the disguise mask and decided to act alone because Betty's winged person wings were too conspicuous. System, start the simulation. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial ability. 1. Mastery of voice control, 5 points, 2. Breath concealment potion, 1 point, 3. Intermediate healing spell level plus 1, 10 points, 4. Free simulation, 20 points. Unfortunately, Chu Chen currently has 0 points, otherwise he could exchange for a specialization in disguise that matches the mask. You decide to continue taking advantage of the arena, but your mask currently has the face of a woman. You decide. 1. Buy a slave, take their face and kill them. 2. Crossdress as a man, use the mask's current appearance to go to the arena. 3. Go to the slums and find someone willing to sell their face. The third option is the least safe, so it can be ruled out first. The first option also carries the risk of being recognized. The second option is the most reliable, as no one would suspect that a priest of the Holy Light Church would disguise themselves as a woman. You decide to crossdress as a disguise, wearing relatively neutral clothing and then dressing up as a woman with a veil. You arrive at the arena and participate in three different betting windows. Using the secret information about the arena slaves, you correctly guess the outcome of the first match. You guess wrong for the second match, losing a large amount of gold coins. You choose. 1. Use the remaining coins to turn the tables. 2. Only watch the battles and learn combat experience. 3. Borrow money from Princess Catherine. Chu Chen's purpose in this simulation is to investigate the results of the arena matches, so he chooses the second option. You watch the matches all day and gain combat experience. For the next few days, you go to the arena daily to watch and record the results of the battles. Soon, you run out of money. Simulation ends. You wasted a lot of money, making this simulation a failure from that perspective, but it will affect the next simulation. Overall score, 12 points. Obtain 12 simulation experience points and 12 plus 4 simulation points. Please select the rewards you want to exchange for in the real world. Chu Chen exchanges for intermediate healing magic and upgrades it to the maximum level. Congratulations, intermediate healing magic level upgraded to LV6-6. Reward, spirit power plus 3. Once his spirit power reaches 31 points, Chu Chen can officially sign a contract with Betty and truly trust her. But for now, Chu Chen is busy and immediately starts the second simulation. To avoid being tracked by the arena personnel, he exchanges for a bottle of scent masking potion in advance. Exchange successful, minus one point. The scent masking potion enters Chu Chen's personal space in the real world, so he will have it at the beginning of the simulation. You cross-dress and go to the arena. Using your memories, you win three consecutive matches. When you spend over 10,000 gold coins at each of the three windows in the afternoon, people in the arena notice your situation. They send someone to keep an eye on you and manipulate the outcome of the match, causing you to lose a large amount of gold coins. Now that you have been noticed, you decide. 1. Temporarily stop and think long term. 2. Continue turning the tables with the remaining money. 3. Publicly question the fairness of the matches. It's safer to follow the rules of others on their turf. You already know the results of the matches. You turn the tables with the remaining money and control each bet to not exceed 10,000 gold coins. Even so, the arena continues to manipulate the outcomes. The final match ends, and you only win 5,000 gold coins. When you leave, you realize someone is following you. You decide. 1. Subdue the person and force them to reveal their intentions. 2. Pretend not to know and safely return home. 3. Blend into the crowd, use the scent masking potion to hide your presence, and change your appearance with a stealth ring to avoid being recognized. Chu Chen's goal in this simulation is to see if the arena personnel can catch him afterwards, so he chooses the third option. You use the scent masking potion to hide your presence, making it impossible for the arena's hounds to track you. 
You hide in the crowd, quickly change your appearance in an empty place, and safely return home. The next day, you disguise yourself again and go to the arena. The arena's hounds immediately recognize you. You notice that today's matches are different from the first simulation in your mind. The arena has made adjustments based on the first day's situation. You win some money but quickly lose all your gold coins. You leave in a daze, and the hounds and arena staff do not continue to pursue you. Simulation ends. I think you should know what to do now, right? Overall score, 15 points. Obtained 15 simulation experience points and 15 plus 4 simulation points. Chu Chen returns to reality, knowing that as long as he eliminates his own scent when exchanging tickets, the hounds won't be able to track him. Even if he comes again, he won't attract special attention from the arena personnel. Chu Chen changed into women's clothing at home and used an invisibility ring to leave the villa. He only appeared when there was no one around. He called a carriage and arrived at the arena. He only had one chance, after all, tomorrow's duel could be adjusted because of the money he won today. Chu Chen still followed the previous method and made purchases at three different windows, which minimized the possibility of being noticed. After the first match ended, his total funds reached 9,900 gold coins. In the second match, he doubled his money again, and by the end of the third match, he had exchanged a total of 35,739 gold coins. Under normal circumstances, the arena had a 50-50 win rate, so the payout was fixed at 1. 9 times the bet, with 0. 1 deducted as commission. In the afternoon, Xu Chen became more cautious, afraid of being manipulated by the opponent. Just before the match was about to start, he bought 5,000 gold coins at each of the three windows and won again. Xu Chen noticed that the person responsible for tracking in the simulation had already arrived when he returned to the window. He pretended to go to the restroom, then used the invisibility ring to change back into men's clothing and sprayed himself with odor-eliminating potion. He then left the arena in invisibility mode, while the opponent was still waiting at the entrance of the women's restroom. Next time, I'll have to change my face, Xu Chen said as he returned home, delighted to see nearly 50,000 gold coins in his space. Xu Chen's mental power had already broken through to 31 points during the simulation. With his monster taming skills, he could now sign a second contract. He went to the kitchen, where Betty was preparing a sumptuous dinner for him. Betty, is your collar comfortable? Chu Chen asked a rather absurd question. Betty quickly turned around upon hearing this. Master, it's not a problem. Betty can accept it. Well, I find the slave bracelet quite troublesome, Chu Chen said as he took out the slave bracelet. Betty didn't understand what Chu Chen meant. Betty, do you want me to trust you more? Chu Chen asked in return. Betty nodded, of course, master. You can fully trust Betty. Betty will serve you wholeheartedly. Chu Chen smiled and said, very well, then let's sign a contract. With the contract, you can remove the collar from your neck, and I will be more at ease with you. Upon hearing the word contract, Betty's expression immediately turned extremely ugly. The collar was just a prop item that would become ineffective due to insufficient energy or damage. But a contract was different, it meant that she would have to give a part of her soul to Chu Chen. Once the contract was signed, she would lose any possibility of resistance. No matter what Chu Chen ordered her to do, she couldn't refuse, and she didn't even have the right to commit suicide. Master. Betty likes this collar. Betty didn't know how to refuse Chu Chen and could only come up with a weak excuse. So, are you refusing? Chu Chen's face immediately showed dissatisfaction. Betty remained silent, implicitly agreeing with Chu Chen's statement. After signing the contract and repaying your debt, I can give you an additional 100 gold coins as severance pay. If possible, Chu Chen didn't like to use violence to make others submit. If you refuse, for the sake of my safety, you will sleep in an iron cage at night. Betty was a smart person, she knew that sleeping in an iron cage was just the beginning. Once trust was lost, she would only face worse conditions. Perhaps she would be sold to the red light district, and after contracting an incurable disease, she would be sold to the arena, ending her miserable life. Thinking of the female swordsman who was publicly abused by the Minotaur yesterday, Betty trembled in fear. Master. I'm sorry. Betty was wrong. Betty is willing to sign the contract with the master. Chu Chen smiled satisfactorily. As a slave, she had no right to refuse, and she seemed to have accepted the reality. Remember, don't resist. If you fail, not only will you become a fool, but I will also be injured. I will be very angry then. Chu Chen warned. Even if the contract fails, it's not that serious but Chu Chen doesn't want to waste his mental power signing it twice. Although Betty has already accepted her fate, she still wants to fight for herself. Master, Betty has a request, please make sure to agree and write it into the contract. Betty has made up her mind, and if Chu Chen doesn't agree, 
she doesn't want to sign the contract even if it means suicide. Xu Chen knows her request, but still says, you don't have the right to make demands of me, but I am merciful and allow you to express your opinions. Betty trembles and says, Master, Betty is a winged person. If she breaks her virginity before advancing to the bronze level, she will never be able to advance to bronze for the rest of her life. Betty wants to become stronger and not be trapped in the iron level for her whole life, so she can better help you, master. Betty's reason is very good and reasonable. What if you break through to the bronze level one day? Everything about Betty belongs to the master. Betty just wants to serve the master better. After breaking through, the master can do whatever he wants. Betty promises. Xu Chen has long seen that the other party wants to stop practicing, but he doesn't refuse Betty. Even without breaking her virginity, there are other ways to communicate deeply, like with Barbara. I can promise you, this is my mercy towards you, but I won't write it into the contract, you can only trust me unconditionally. In the end, Betty can only agree, and she reluctantly splits a part of her soul and gives it to Chu Chen. Chu Chen leaves his mark on her soul, and unless Chu Chen actively cancels the contract, she will be unable to resist in any form. In terms of contract treatment, she is even worse off than a chocobo. After completing the contract, Betty looks at Chu Chen with worry, afraid that he will reveal his evil nature after signing the contract. Fortunately, Chu Chen is a man of his word, and he allows Betty to eat at the same table today. Betty finishes dinner with teary eyes, unsure if she regrets her decision or worries about her future. In the next two days, Chu Chen does not make a move on Betty, and her contract gradually stabilizes. Whenever Chu Chen actively uses contract magic to tame her, she feels a warm feeling and becomes more obedient to Chu Chen. Under this subtle influence, Betty will soon lose her rebellious spirit. Today is the day of the auction. As a noble, Chu Chen also received an invitation ticket to the auction yesterday. However, when he arrived at the entrance of the venue with Betty, Princess Catherine's maid stopped him. Lord Chu Chen, the princess requests your presence. Please follow me. Today's auction is held in the Elven Forest, and it is only natural for Princess Catherine to come and show her support. Catherine's plan to seize power is a bit unreliable, and Chu Chen doesn't want to be seen as part of her camp. But whether it was his previous barren identity or the Mephisto incident, he has already been seen as Princess Catherine's person. Chu Chen follows the maid to the top VIP box in the auction hall, which is not only spacious but also extremely luxurious. In addition to Princess Catherine, there is also a white-haired lowly with two swords hanging from her waist, indicating that she should have some connection to the elven race. Chu Chen, let me introduce you. This is my good friend, Donna, a silver-level sword mage. Like me, she is also a half-elf. After introducing Donna, Catherine introduces her to her friend, this is Chu Chen, whom I mentioned to you before. He is a priest and a holy knight. Donna just glanced at him and didn't say anything. You don't have to mind her, she's a good person, but that's just her personality. A proud and aloof white-haired lowly, but that's the type Chu Chen likes the most. Nice to meet you, Chu Chen says with a smile. Donna rolls her eyes, nice to meet you? How nice. Donna, although beautiful, is actually very unpopular and is avoided by everyone like a monster. All of this is because of her unique silver white hair. Rumor has it that Elizabeth, the witch representing the sin of pride, is a moon elf with silver white long hair. Of course, I am very, very happy, Chu Chen didn't mind the other person's rudeness. Donna looked at Chu Chen seriously and could feel that he seemed to be telling the truth. There was no disgust or disdain in his eyes, only an inexplicable eagerness. You wouldn't happen to be a witch follower, would you? Donna blurted out. Whether it was elves or humans, even those perverted nobles who liked beautiful women and lowless, they all avoided her. Only the heretics who believed in the arrogant which would like her. Chu Chen pointed to his badge and said, As you can see, I am a holy clergyman of the Holy Light Church. It is easy to be discovered if a holy clergyman falls into witch worship, and they cannot use divine magic, making it easy to expose their identity. Um, don't you know about the arrogant witch Elizabeth? Donna guessed that Chu Chen had a shallow understanding, so he couldn't recognize her identity. Of course I know. Why aren't you afraid of me? Donna became even more curious. Why should I be afraid? Just because you also have silver white long hair? Chu Chen couldn't help but laugh. There are other witches who look very similar to ordinary humans. Should we fear humans just because of that? Chu Chen's words made a lot of sense, but the arrogant which was the most powerful and had the worst personality among the seven witches. Donna's fondness for Chu Chen increased a lot, but after getting the answer she wanted, she turned her head and ignored Chu Chen. Princess Catherine gestured for Chu Chen to sit down, while Betty, as a slave, could only stand aside. Chu Chen, I heard that your student Anna has become the disciple of the sage Mephisto? Catherine had already received the news and was puzzled by this. Chu Chen nodded, 
Yes, Anna is lucky. Maybe her cooking suits Mephisto's taste. To be honest, Chuchin didn't understand why Mephisto would choose Anna either. Although Anna's talent was good, according to the standards of a sage's disciple, she could only be considered mediocre. Not to mention that Anna was not favored by the goddess, and without the prayer hat and Chu Chen's help, she couldn't even use divine magic now. Catherine's rebellious heart had not been severed, and it became even more radical because of the previous marriage alliance incident. She helped Mephisto find her son's body, so Mephisto owed her a favor. In the Holy Light Church, the majority of the local bishops, led by Bishop Douglas, supported the crown prince, while the archbishop, who had been transferred from another place a few years ago, supported her. Now with Mephisto, the Holy Light Church had no major problems, and the influence of other churches in the New Moon Kingdom was far inferior to that of the Holy Light Church. Chu Chen, I strengthened the intelligence work and found out that the Rhine Kingdom is indeed sending troops to invade our borders. Now I have won over many military generals. Do you think if I end the battle at the border and return with the army, can I succeed? Catherine's words were implicit, but Chu Chen understood what she meant. She would solve the troubles of the Rhine Kingdom herself, which sounded reasonable. Once she successfully took over the army, she could directly seize the throne on the return journey. This was the best and most straightforward way. I'm afraid it's not that simple. Those nobles and officers may not truly support you. Most beneficiaries wanted to maintain stability. They were happy to see the royal family fighting among themselves, but if they really wanted to overthrow the king's rule and support a half-elf to take the throne, few nobles would truly support it. The current king was not old, and he had also consumed the fountain of life. Under normal circumstances, being king for several decades would not be a problem. However, with the imminent invasion of the demon race, the king, who had been influenced by the queen's family for a long time, seemed somewhat incompetent. The domestic nobles are worried that he cannot protect the country's security, so Catherine's rebellion has fertile ground for growth. To make them truly support Catherine, it is estimated that we will have to wait until the demon army truly invades the new moon kingdom, but by then it will be too late. Chu Chen, do you still have the noble secrets you gave me before? Yes, I do, but this information is very valuable. Catherine actually understands these nobles, but if she can have more blackmail as a means of threat, perhaps her chances of success will be higher. Do you have any equipment you want to capture? Catherine wants to obtain secrets through trade. Xu Chen wants quite a lot, but he has money to buy them himself. You first list the noble information you want, and I'll see if I have it later. Xu Chen is not in a hurry to trade with the other party. Catherine is a little unsure of Chu Chen's thoughts, but since Chu Chen said so, it means he is willing to help. The two chatted for a while, and Donna occasionally interjected a few words, which is rare in normal times. Many elves came to this auction, mainly to protect the safety of the goods, and also to let the young elves in the clan have a long experience in the human city. Donna is not a member of the escort team. After Leo Tiz died, she received Catherine's plea for help and came to help her. Leo Tiz was originally Princess Catherine's person, but unfortunately, he didn't know why he attacked Mavis and was killed, and the matter was left unresolved. Catherine investigated the relevant situation and vaguely guessed that it might be related to him when she discovered that Mavis was living in Chu Chen's house at that time. This made Catherine value Chu Chen more and feel a little dissatisfied. Fortunately, Chu Chen later helped her by connecting with Mavis, which was much more useful than Leo Tiz. The auction soon officially began. The first item was an exquisite space ring, which not only had a large storage space but also came with the ice cone magic. The space ring is very useful for both merchants and professionals, and the price quickly soared from a starting price of 100 gold coins to 200 gold coins. Xu Chen's personal space will continue to increase as his level increases, so this ring is not very useful to him. But Betty doesn't have any space equipment yet, so it's not convenient for her to buy groceries. Xu Chen raised his sign, and the price instantly soared to 300 gold coins. VIP box no. 3, bidding 300 gold coins. The auctioneer started the bidding. The scene quieted down, and the bidders were relatively sensible. Seeing that the bid came from the princess's box, they all stopped bidding. Who is that person, and why is he with the princess? It seems to be Baron Chu Chen. He is personally supported by the princess. Hmm, could he be a gigolo? The princess has really bad taste. Xiu, keep your voice down, don't let the princess hear. 300 gold coins, second time. 300. Just as the auctioneer dropped the hammer to confirm the successful transaction, VIP box no. 4 offered a new price. VIP box no. 4, bidding 310 gold coins. Catherine, seeing this, said unhappily, it's the crown prince. He doesn't need this equipment at all. He's deliberately driving up the price. As expected, with the crown prince's malicious bid, others continued to bid. 
Catherine knew that the crown prince was targeting her, so she directly raised the price to 500 gold coins. This time, everyone quieted down again, even the crown prince did not continue bidding. Although 500 gold coins is not much, the real show has just begun, and the crown prince's target is still ahead. The first round of confrontation ended with Princess Catherine's victory. After receiving the space ring handed over by the waiter, Princess Catherine gave it to Chu Chen. Chu Chen, it's for you. Chu Chen shook his head and handed it to Betty, saying, Take it, it will be more convenient for you to go out and buy groceries in the future. Looking at Chu Chen casually throwing away the princess's gift, a space ring worth 500 gold coins, not only the besieging crowd, but even the distant prince couldn't help but take a few more glances at Chu Chen. Master, this. This is too valuable. Betty couldn't believe her eyes as she looked at her master. Her own life was only worth a little over 300 gold coins when she was sold by the slave trader, and this ring was even more expensive than herself. She felt a bit overwhelmed holding it. Storing ingredients in the ring can keep them fresher. Just take it, Chu Chen said without hesitation. Betty quickly took the ring and carefully put it on. Master, I will protect this ring with my life, Betty said excitedly. Catherine looked meaningfully at Chu Chen feeling that she was becoming more and more unable to understand the man in front of her. Most of the items that followed were not bid on by Chu Chen. When the auction came to a silver level magic staff, he finally prepared to bid. This equipment is made by the elder Pamela of the elf clan. It not only enhances spell effects, but also activates a protective shield for defense in dangerous situations. When the auctioneer introduced it, Chu Chen also saw the equipment attributes through the upgraded simulator. Guardian of the Moon Staff, Tier, Silver Level Effects, 1. Spell Amplification LV1, increases spell power by 10 points. 2. Guardian of the Moon LV3, can actively or passively release the Silver Level spell Guardian of the Moon. Explanation, 10 points of spell power is equivalent to the increase in spell power obtained by increasing spiritual power by 10 points. Spiritual power not only affects the increase in spell power, but also affects the speed of spiritual power recovery, the precision of spell control, and the control distance, among other things. The 10-point power increase from Guardian of the Moon is very good and Guardian of the Moon is a 360-degree magic shield. Starting price is 300 gold coins, each bid must be no less than 10 gold coins. Let the bidding begin. 1,000 gold coins. Chu Chen directly tripled the price. This price was already very high. Seeing the bid from the box where Princess Catherine was, the prince beside her started to cause trouble again. 1,100 gold coins. Xu Chen smiled and said, The prince is here to join in the fun again, so I'll bid 2,000 gold coins. This price immediately scared off those who wanted to join in the excitement, and the prince's face didn't look too good. This guy, where did he get so much money? There's no need to waste it like this, right? 2,000 gold coins were equivalent to 2 million copper coins, and Xu Chen's villa was only worth 1,000 gold coins. Although he was a prince, he was not the king after all. Although he had some assets, he didn't have much liquid capital, and his mother had a control freak-like desire to control him. If she knew he was spending money recklessly, he would probably be scolded when he got back. His main purpose for attending the auction this time was to get a magic sword. If he wasted too much money now, it wouldn't be worth it if he couldn't get it later. 2,000 gold coins, first time. 2,000 gold coins, third time. Sold. The bunny girl brought the item to the box where Chu Chin was, and Chu Chin paid the fee with 20 purple gold coins. He didn't feel any pain spending money he had picked up for free. The auction continued, and most of the items Chu Chen wanted were in the second half, but that didn't stop him from watching the data on various equipment. This magic sword is made from extraterrestrial meteorites and has unique magical properties. It is an excellent weapon for paladins and swordsmen. Starting price is 1000 gold coins, each bid must be no less than 30 gold coins. Let the bidding begin. Not long after the bidding started, the prince joined in the bidding. The price of the magic sword kept rising, and when it reached 2,000 gold coins, Donna unexpectedly joined in the bidding. Falling Star Sword, Tier, Silver Level Effects, 1. Overweight LV3, can increase the weight of the weapon by up to 150 kilograms during attacks. 2. Superconductivity LV2, reduces energy and elemental conduction loss by 20% explanation. This weapon is extremely tough and not easily worn out. This weapon itself is a nimble and delicate one-handed sword but it can increase its weight by 150 kilograms when the heavy effect is activated. For Donna, an agile swordswoman, this weapon not only greatly enhances her destructive power, but also reduces energy loss when conducting elements. What's more, this weapon is very durable and can fully utilize the heavy effect. In fact, this weapon is already approaching the level of a gold-grade weapon. 
The main reason Donna came to the auction was also for this weapon. The price continued to rise and showed no signs of stopping even at 3,000 gold coins, causing Donna's expression to become somewhat unpleasant. Princess Catherine, who was beside her, had already given her 1,000 gold coins in free assistance, but she only had a little over 1,000 gold coins herself, so she could only borrow more to continue bidding. 3,500 gold coins. Donna went all in, putting down all the money she borrowed. The prince in the distance raised his sign again, offering a price of 4,000 gold coins, causing Donna to give up completely. She didn't know how much higher the other party would raise the price. After thinking for a moment, Chu Chen activated the simulation, and the system did not disappoint him. Simulation is about to begin, please choose your initial exchange option, 24 points remaining, 1. Falling Star Sword Bronze Grade, 10 points, 2. Intermediate Swordsmanship LV1-6, 10 points, 3. Falling Star Sword Silver Grade, 15 points, 4. Free Simulation, 20 points, for the system, the price of a silver grade item is basically worth 15 points regardless of its quality, which is also a good way for Chu Chen to make money. Chu Chen didn't rush to exchange, he wanted to see how high the prince could bid for this weapon. The prince offered a high price of 4,000 gold coins, and you noticed that Donna also liked this sword, so you decided. 1. Buy this sword at all costs and give it to Donna. 2. Buy this sword after a reasonable bid, you also want this sword. 3. Buy this sword after a reasonable bid, then sell it to Donna and make her owe you money. You playfully doubled the price to 8,000 gold coins, attracting everyone's attention to you. The prince, defeated by you twice in a row, didn't want to back down this time. He raised the price to 9,000 gold coins. You boldly doubled the price again to 16,000 gold coins, making the prince hate you to the bone. He didn't want to buy this weapon at an inflated price. You successfully obtained the falling star sword and gave it to Donna in her disbelief. Donna accepted your gift and her attitude towards you improved slightly. She gave you her current sword as a gift. In the following auction, you and Donna had a pleasant conversation. Donna realized that you were really different from others, but she still remained cautious of you. The auction gradually came to an end and the Fountain of Life was finally bought by a wealthy noble for 100,000 gold coins, you and Princess Catherine left the venue together. She was worried that the prince would cause trouble for you, so she asked Donna to escort you home, and you gladly accepted, along the way, you indeed noticed someone following you, but with Donna's protection, you returned safely. You choose. 1. Let Donna stay and continue to protect your safety. 2. Let Donna leave, you can protect yourself well. 3. Coordinate with Donna to kill the person who is following you, you don't care about those who are following you, but you use it as an excuse to let Donna stay overnight, Donna also noticed the follower and after some thought, she chose to stay, but only for today, you had Betty prepare a sumptuous dinner and wine. You notice that Donna is not good at drinking, so you decide. 1. Get her drunk and take advantage of the situation, make her yours. 2. Get her drunk, and afterwards use healing magic to treat her, pretending that nothing happened. 3. Give her juice and let her pay close attention to possible attacks tonight. Shu Chen doesn't think that the crown prince would be so bold as to send someone to attack him in the noble residential area. If he wants to attack him, he would have to find a suitable time. Now, it's just a matter of investigating first. You change the entrance, but the wine has a strong aftertaste. You had Betty cooperate and get Donna drunk. Donna completely passed out after drinking a whole bottle under your sweet talk. Afterwards, you used healing magic to treat Donna and clean her up. You pretended that nothing happened. The next morning, Donna woke up and didn't notice anything unusual. She left your house. Ten days later, in the middle of the night, the crown prince sent someone to capture you. You knew that using the magic sword would be a dead end. You thought maybe Catherine would come to save you. You resisted the enemy's mental hypnosis, but couldn't withstand the various tortures. Your hands and feet were broken. Three days later, you finally found an opportunity and successfully committed suicide. One month later, Donna came to your house. She swore to find you and kill you. A new life is growing inside her. Simulation ends. You shouldn't have gotten involved in the struggle between Catherine and the crown prince. It will only bring unnecessary trouble. As for Donna, she might not actually kill you. Overall score, 19 points. Earn 19 simulation experience points and 19 plus 4 simulation points. Please choose a reward to exchange for in the real world, 47 points remaining. 1. Falling Star Sword Bronze Level, 10 points. 2. Intermediate Sword Magic LV1-6, 10 points. 3. Falling Star Sword Silver Level, 15 points. According to Chu Chen's estimate, the Crown Prince should be able to bid around 10,000 gold coins for this sword. In other words, 15 points can be exchanged for 10,000 gold coins, 
which is much more cost-effective than directly exchanging for gold coins. Although it is not as good as making money in the arena, high-quality magical equipment is hard to come by and not always available for purchase. Chu Chen exchanged one for himself first, and then planned to help Donna buy the Falling Star Sword in the real world. As long as he did it discreetly, he wouldn't attract the attention of the Crown Prince. With the remaining 32 points, he learned three levels of intermediate sword magic. Chu Chen approached Donna and said, Donna, I'm very interested in your sword magic. If you can teach me, I'm willing to pay tuition fees, and I can pay in advance. Donna knew that Chu Chen had money, but she didn't think about borrowing money from someone she had just met less than a day ago. Borrowing money might be enjoyable for a while, but she didn't know when she would have to pay it back. My sword magic is not ordinary. It's an exclusive secret technique passed down to me by my father, and I won't easily teach it to you, Donna said cautiously to Chu Chen. Chu Chen smiled and said, I'll pay you 100 gold coins each time as compensation. I can pay for 50 lessons in advance. Donna understood that Chu Chen wanted to help her buy the falling star sword. Actually, my father, who knows where he ran off to and whether he's dead or not, isn't that important. Donna looked anxiously at the auctioneer about to hammer down. Then it's settled. Before my sword magic surpasses yours, you have to come to give me a lesson at least once a week. This way, he could see Donna frequently, and it would be easier to strategize. What if you learn it earlier? Donna didn't want to owe too much money. Besides sword magic, you have many other skills that I want to learn. Deal. Donna really wanted the falling star sword. After all, it would be boring in the capital city, and she didn't dislike Chu Chen either. With Chu Chen's sponsorship of 5,000 gold coins, Donna gained confidence and raised the price to 5,000 and personally made the bid. The crown prince didn't notice Donna and Chu Chen's transaction. He already disliked half-elves and seeing Donna outbid him again made him even more annoyed. 6,000 gold coins. Donna was a little anxious. Even with the money from Chu Chen, she could only come up with a total of 8,500 gold coins. We can't weaken our momentum. Once the prince sees through us, he will continue to raise the price, Catherine reminded. Donna gritted her teeth and directly raised the bid by 2,000. 8,000 gold coins. During the previous simulation, Chu Chen also raised the bid to 8,000 gold coins. The prince, provoked by Chu Chen's challenge and previous grievances, raised the price to 9,000 gold coins, only to be fiercely slapped by Chu Chen. Now, facing Donna, his level of resentment was not as high. His budget for bidding on the Fallen Star Sword this time was 5,000 to 8,000 gold coins. If he spent too much, he might miss out on another more important piece of equipment. Your Highness, the minimum price for this sword is 1,000 gold coins, and it has already been bid up too much, the prince's aide took the opportunity to persuade him while he calmed down. Although the spells attached to this Fallen Star Sword are good, it is still only a silver level weapon. The price of 8,000 gold coins is a bit inflated. Normally, the selling price of a silver level weapon would be considered good if it reached 3,000 gold coins. Although this weapon was indeed good, it would be worth around 5,000 to 6,000 gold coins in the ordinary market. Your Highness, your cleverness has made Princess Catherine and the others spend a lot of money. I'm sure they are feeling frustrated now. If we continue to raise the bid now and end up buying it at a high price, it will only make them laugh at us. Understanding the prince's character well, the aide persuaded him again. The prince nodded, you're right, let her regret raising the bid. The prince chose to give up on the high price of 8,000 gold coins. Even if it was a malicious bid, he didn't dare to randomly raise the price. As Donna saw her beloved sword appear in front of her, she was so happy that she almost jumped up. She lovingly caressed the sword, wishing to leave this place immediately and go on a killing spree. The auction continued, and Catherine also had something she wanted to buy. In order to prevent a bidding war with the prince and end up getting a good deal for the auction, both sides tacitly stopped competing. In the subsequent auctions, Chu Chen not only bought a golden level magic leather armor and necklace for himself but also bought a decent bronze longbow for Betty. Black Dragon Leather Armor, Rank, Golden Effect, 1. Dragon Power LV4, plus 10 Physique, 2. Dragon's Might LV2, can dispel monsters weaker than oneself within a 20 meter range. Description, the Black Dragon Leather Armor has powerful defense, but wearing it may cause aversion from dragon-like creatures. Chu Chen spent 18,000 gold coins to buy this equipment, which was not only lightweight but also had higher defense than steel. The leather armor also had a shock-absorbing effect to prevent impact damage. Not to mention the 10-point physique boost from the dragon power, which would require him to level up 5 times to gain so many attribute points at the bronze level. As for the necklace, it was also a golden quality equipment that Chu Chen spent 15,000 gold coins on. Burning Necklace, Rank, Golden Effect, 1. Wisdom LV2, plus 5 Mental Attribute, 2. Flame Giant LV4, 
can summon a silver level flame giant to assist in battle for 4 minutes. Description, a mental attribute of 5 to 10 points can summon a black iron level flame giant, a mental attribute of 15 to 30 points can summon a bronze level flame giant, and a mental attribute of 35 points or above is required to summon a silver level flame giant. Unlike the black dragon leather armor, the burning necklace has certain requirements for the user. The different levels of mental attributes can summon different flame giants, and the amount of mental power consumed during summoning also varies. With the enhancement from the equipment, Chuchin's mental attribute had already reached 36 points, meeting the conditions to summon a silver level flame giant. However, during battle, if he wanted to save mental power, he could also summon a flame giant of the next level. After purchasing these two pieces of equipment, Chuchin's self-defense ability greatly improved. Now, he no longer cared about ordinary equipment, and he only had 9,200 gold coins left, not enough to buy any other golden level equipment. Chuchin plans to continue making money in the arena and then gather a complete set of gold level equipment. The finale of the auction, the Fountain of Life, was ultimately bought by the Duke of Tulips from the New Moon Kingdom for a high price of 100,000 gold coins. The audience began to leave, and the VIP box had a dedicated passage, so there was no need to squeeze with ordinary people. Xu Chen, you bought two pieces of gold level equipment today. I'm afraid some ill-intentioned people will target you, Princess Catherine didn't expect Xu Chen to be so rich. Donna, why don't you escort Xu Chen back? When you teach him the magic sword technique, you will also know where he lives. Okay. Xu Chen safely returned to the villa under Donna's escort. It was already late in the day. Xu Chen said to Donna, do you want to stay for dinner? Betty's cooking is very good, and she is very good at vegetarian dishes. I'm not hungry. Donna said somewhat arrogantly. However, perhaps because she was reminded, Donna's stomach protested uncontrollably. Gurgle actually, I wanted to ask you about dietary considerations during training, Xu Chen explained. Well, I'll reluctantly stay for a meal and see if there are any issues with your diet. Donna looked a bit embarrassed, but fortunately, Xu Chen gave her an out. Betty prepared dinner in the kitchen, while Xu Chen and Donna talked about the topic of the magic swordsman in the living room. The magic swordsman is a special profession that combines the abilities of a swordsman and a mage. They not only have the powerful physical output ability of a swordsman but also can cause powerful elemental damage with various magic sword techniques. Generally speaking, the magic learned by magic swordsman tends to be temporary enchantments and fast casting spells. The former is used to enhance weapons, while the latter is used to assist in combat. Xu Chen theoretically mastered intermediate level magic sword techniques at LV3 but he had almost no practical experience, which was one of the main reasons why he sought to learn from Donna. Donna lived in the Forest of Elves. Although the Forest of Elves sounds elegant, it is actually full of monsters. With her level as a silver level magic swordsman, she must have experienced many battles. The two continued their conversation, and when Betty finished preparing the food, Donna still seemed unsatisfied. Like Catherine, her mother is an elf and her father is a human. Her father taught her the magic sword technique. There are very few elves in the forest of elves who use magic sword techniques, so she couldn't communicate with others on a regular basis. Although she was teaching Chu Chen now, Chu Chen seemed to catch on quickly, and communication between them was very smooth. Betty's food also suited her taste, and this time Chu Chen didn't choose to get her drunk. He only prepared some low-alcohol fruit wine purchased from the Star Tavern. After the meal, Donna's liking for Chu Chen increased by several percentage points. I will go to the front line with Catherine in a while. Before leaving, let's have a few more lessons. When are you usually free? Donna wiped her cherry mouth with a napkin and said, No problem, I'm free every day. Xu Chen was a jobless wanderer and always had free time. Then I'll come to your place for lunch in the future. After eating, we'll have a lesson, and then I'll leave after dinner. Donna didn't like staying in the crowded palace. During her time in the capital, Catherine didn't need her help either. Okay. Donna rested for a while after finishing her meal. After Xu Chen saw her off, he tried to practice the magic sword technique in the yard, but he quickly gave up. The magic sword technique he learned was a basic ability, just like basic swordsmanship. Without corresponding skills, it couldn't be effective. The next day at noon, Donna came to Chu Chen's house again. After enjoying lunch, Chu Chen finally started learning the magic sword technique. Chu Chen already had a grasp of the basic knowledge, and he didn't want to waste time. He wanted to directly start learning the skills and engage in practical combat. Donna, actually, I have also learned the basic theoretical knowledge of the magic sword technique before. Let's skip this step. Xu Chen looked at the thick book in Donna's hand and shook his head. Donna was a little angry. Why didn't you say so earlier? Donna worked overtime last night and stayed up late until dawn for today's class, but the other party said they had already learned it. 
No wonder the communication went so smoothly yesterday, it's really annoying. Donna looked at Chu Chun angrily. Chu Chen also realized his mistake and said generously, then let's skip one class and pretend you helped me with it? That's about right. Donna actually didn't like giving theoretical classes to others, although she was a little unhappy, she was still somewhat happy to skip the most troublesome part. Let's start with offensive magic. Which magic or divine art can you use? Donna asked. Chu Chen thought for a moment and said, for spells, I can use fireball, and for divine arts, I can use divine fire. Are they all fire-based? Then let's start with flame enchantment, Donna introduced, flame enchantment can temporarily add a flame effect to weapons, which has a good effect on most magical creatures. As she spoke, Donna's fingers drew a magic circle in the air above the falling star sword, like drawing a spell. As the magic circle took shape, she used her mental power to adjust it, and then compressed and fixed the magic circle on the long sword. The magic circle needs to be fine-tuned according to the weapon situation in order to achieve the strongest effect, Donna's falling star sword showed red flame patterns. It is currently in standby mode, which can greatly save consumption. In the process of drawing the magic circle and casting the magic sword technique, it consumes mental power, but after it takes shape, it consumes physical strength during use, Donna explained. The flame patterns on the sword burst open, and the raging flames covered the long sword. At the same time, the energy inside Donna's body was continuously absorbed and transformed into flame energy. Of course, you can also directly use mental power to activate the magic circle and convert ether particles to release flames, but that requires distraction and is not suitable for intense close combat, Donna's sword flame changed from red to blue. This was the result of her using mental power to strengthen the enchantment again. It was relatively difficult for beginners and required raising the skill level to LV4 and having enough mental power to achieve it. After the demonstration, Donna took out a book from her empty ring and handed it to Chu Chen, saying, This is a study book for flame enchantment. Study it first, and if you have any questions, ask me. Oh, and this, Princess Catherine asked me to give you this list. She said she would offer a price that satisfies you. After speaking, Donna went to the recliner under the garden pavilion and started eating fruit, holding a manga book she didn't know where she bought it from. Chu Chen first looked at the list, then flipped through the flame enchantment skill book. But after reading a few pages, he gave up on self-study. It was indeed more convenient to cheat with a simulator. With the mastery of skills, various theoretical knowledge would appear in his mind, but to self-study flame enchantment with this knowledge, it would take at least 10 days or half a month. Simulation is about to begin. Please choose your initial exchange options, 2 points remaining, 1. Intermediate sword technique level plus 1, 10 points, 2. Flame enchantment LV1 slash 6, 10 points, 3. Lightning Enchantment LV1 slash 6, 10 points, 4. Free Simulation, 20 points, Xu Chen had already used up his points and only had 2 points left, so he started the simulation directly. You flipped through the Flame Enchantment skill book, and a day passed quickly, in the following days, you studied hard, and with Donna's guidance, you finally mastered Flame Enchantment LV1 on the 5th day, Donna thought you were a genius, but she told you that she was about to go to the front line. You decided. 1. Follow Donna to the front line, 2. Ask Donna to leave more skill books for you to self-study. 3. Persuade Donna not to go. Catherine is capable enough to handle this crisis. Is the war starting so soon? Then I'll go to the front line to see Catherine's situation. Chu Chen chose the first option. You choose to follow Donna to the front line and bring Betty along. Princess Catherine is extremely happy to see you. And on the way forward, she asks you about the rumors on the list. You choose. 1. Freely disclose all the rumors on the list to Princess Catherine 2. Freely disclose some of the rumors on the list to Princess Catherine 3. Price the rumors on the list and let Princess Catherine buy them. Chu Chen wants to see what price Princess Catherine is willing to pay for this, so she chooses the third option. You set a price for the intelligence, and Princess Catherine looks displeased with the high price you set. You assure Princess Catherine that the intelligence is definitely worth the price. Catherine tells you that she has already spent a lot of money to complete the plan and cannot offer much compensation. Now Catherine hopes that you can be paid after she completes the plan and she will give you double the amount at that time. You choose. 1. Accept Princess Catherine's proposal and give her the information she wants to. Reject Princess Catherine's proposal, which may result in not getting a single penny. 3. Tell Catherine that you can give her all the information on the list and even more. In exchange for her spending a night with you the risk of payment afterwards is too great, but it won't be a loss for Chu Chen. However, Chu Chen needs to make sure that Catherine can ultimately win in order to choose the first option. For now, it's just a simulation, so Chu Chen hesitates and chooses the third one. 
You politely refuse Princess Catherine's proposal and suggest that she can obtain more information in other ways. Princess Catherine becomes furious and orders her men to capture you. You choose. 1. Apologize to the princess, saying that you were joking, and then give her the information too. Draw your magic sword and fight your way out. 3. Let the princess capture you, there may still be a chance. Chu Chen scratched her head. It seems that Catherine is not the kind of person who would make such sacrifices to achieve her goals. The magic sword was mostly a last resort in the previous simulations, and it can only be truly useful when her spiritual power reaches 50 points in the future. You apologize to the princess and assure her that she has passed your test, and you will fully assist her you give all the noble secrets to the princess, and although she thinks your joke went too far, she forgives you with the help of this information, Princess Catherine constantly coerces and manipulates the generals in the army who have dark secrets, greatly increasing her control over the army a few days later, the troops arrived at the front line, where the prince of the kingdom of Rhine had already stationed his army. He demanded that the kingdom of Crescent Moon fulfill the previous marriage agreement with Princess Catherine upon learning of Catherine's arrival, the two armies clashed, resulting in heavy casualties as the defending side, the kingdom of Crescent Moon fared slightly better, but Princess Catherine did not want these soldiers she had subjugated to suffer more injuries Catherine decided to end the war with the prince of the kingdom of Rhine through a duel. The prince of Rhine gladly agreed, but requested that neither side use magical items only the bronze level princess Catherine revealed her hidden strength on the surface and successfully defeated the prince of Rhine the prince of Rhine kept his promise to withdraw his troops and return to his country he stated that he would pursue princess Catherine through normal means and strive to defeat her through training after waiting for a few days for the Rhine soldiers to retreat princess Catherine is ready to return to the capital she plans to take the border army with her to strengthen her power and complete the usurpation in one fell swoop she seeks your opinion what do you think? 1. The plan is feasible, fully support it too. It's too hasty, should consider it carefully. 3. Only bring the elite troops back to prevent traitors from leaking information. Xu Chen doesn't think the plan will be so easy to achieve, but if she simulates it several more times to address all the oversights and risks, perhaps it can really succeed? You think the plan is feasible, Princess Catherine leaves a small number of troops to guard the border, and the rest of the soldiers accompany her back to the capital. On the way back to the capital, you avoid various cities. When you arrive outside the capital, the city gate guards, who have already been bribed, let all 30,000 soldiers into the city. After Princess Catherine enters the city, she first brings the elite troops to the outside of the palace. Using her princess status, she orders the soldiers to open the palace gates and launches an attack. The surrounding soldiers also attack with full force. The king is shocked, and the palace guards engage in a fierce battle with the rebels. The city guards also rush from all directions to support. The king requests the major nobles and the Church of the Holy Light to send people to rescue him. Not many nobles respond to the call, but many join the rebels. Under the control of the Archbishop and Nebes, the Church of the Holy Light does not participate in the battle. The situation is developing in a favorable direction. However, at a critical moment, the queen's family takes out the family treasure and summons a powerful dragon with the dragon's horn. Princess Catherine's army is defeated and you and the others are all captured. Catherine is imprisoned, and you and the other trusted aides of Catherine are taken to the city square for public execution as a deterrent. Simulation ends. In the face of absolute strength, numbers are useless. Overall score, 22 points. Earn 22 points of simulation experience and 22 plus 4 simulation points. Please choose the reward to be exchanged in the real world, remaining 28 points. 1. Intermediate Sword Magic Level plus 1, 10 points. 2. Flame Enchantment LV1-6, 10 points. 3. Lightning Enchantment LV1-6, 10 points. The roar of the dragon still echoed in Chu Chen's mind, and in front of that huge figure, humans seemed so small. The queen's family actually has treasures of this level, no wonder they can make the king so obedient. Chu Chen was glad that he had conducted the simulation in advance. If he couldn't solve this problem, all other efforts would be in vain. The noble secrets were only information that could be exchanged for one point mainly consisting of various scandals and gossip. Information about the dragon's horn was not included. Chu Chen exchanged a flame enchantment and a lightning enchantment. He wanted to see how fast he could improve through self-training after getting started. Back in the real world, Chu Chen began to practice the flame enchantment. He didn't rush to cast the complete spell, but practiced each step over and over again. Whenever he didn't understand something, he would ask Donna. By the time the sun set and it was time for dinner, Xu Chen finally cast the flame enchantment in its entirety for the first time. Looking at the flames on Xu Chen's sword, Donna's mouth dropped open, unable to say a word. This guy, did he already know this spell? Donna was somewhat suspicious. 
It was unbelievable that he could learn the flame enchantment in just one afternoon.